explain something about our, your money that you have paid on this tour. Uh, it is, we don't. Mosquitoes, people are complaining to me about mosquitoes. Uh, some people want uh, mosquito repellent. These mosquitoes cannot be repelled. <laughs> <laughs> They've been here before you, they know all the tricks. They are Egyptians. And an Egyptian mosquito has to be treated with delicacy. You, when he come, you say, hello, mosquito. And then you let them have his portion of blood. That's all he wants, some blood. Some of you blood is so bad, it will kill the doctor anyhow. Let him have the blood. Because if his wife comes, she'll kill you. So let them have the blood, carry home and shake with the family. <laughs> Stay indoors and you don't want to be bitten <laughs> with, the sh with the shades closed and a mosquito wouldn't eat you too much. Uh, so the dinner really repellent. You put it on, what I'm trying to say is people buy those things. It may work with uh, uh, one of those timid American mosquito, but they go work with the African mosquito. He's not really thrown off with this stupid amount of repellent. <laughs> He got ways to deal with that. Okay. We have journeyed from the United States. That's <laughs> 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 the Japanese day was. Everyone ran. <laughs> and did that we, as far as I heard, and one still journey from America. <laughs> and myself <laughs> being here. <laughs> And what we have come really to do is sojourn in time and history. Every one of us here is connected to this place one way or another. We are either connected to this place by our heritage through religion, our heritage through birth, our heritage through uh, descendancy or something. But one way or the other, we are connected to this land. And what we are going to find out is to what extent that heritage was. Why are we so hopped up on the Nile Valley and Egypt in particular? What does it hold for us? <clears throat> what does it mean for me, uh, a man in Harlem, or for you, a woman in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, or uh, Kingston, Jamaica, or I'm going to Puerto Rico, so what will want me to bring me back here? Is it just a Tutankhamun exhibit that came through a few years ago, a few cities in North America, or the Ramses exhibit that just was there in uh, Tennessee and, and Nashville, or, or in, or in uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, or so? It's that, all of that, and more. So let us explore what we have done thus far and what we intend to do uh, in another two days. We arrived at the Heliopolis Airport, otherwise known as the Cairo International Airport, and we started our tour there. Unfortunately, there's only two, there were two buses and there only one of me, and so I couldn't tell both buses, uh, give them a little trip from the airport into the hotel and point out some of the sites. Most, most of this that I told you in that bus was covered by the two guides we had. And we will have two guides consistently because we'll have two buses. But just so that I'm going to deal with the ancient part of Egypt and not the modern part of Egypt. Why did I revise they tour from the southern, starting in the south and coming to the north, or southern and north and going to the south. I once did this, as I'm doing now. There are a lot of reasons of, of, of which we can't take, uh, put the time in, but using that for what it is, you were at, yesterday, you were at the beginning of the United Egypt, a place called Mem Nefer sometimes interpreted to mean the white wall or the white house. 
It is here that the America use to name many things. When we think of the White House, we in the United States think of white people naming it White House because the white has none at all to do with that as many other things in the United States. What had happened in the United States is some men who were basically English came or were brought to that area of land. But the phenomena of these men who had overthrown the old English system was that all of them were members of an organization called the Masonic system, except one member of the cabinet, and that was Benjamin Franklin because he was a Quaker. Those men belonging to this, that organization adopted a number of things to England, their mother country, and their mother lodge. Within that large system were two different ones, one called York Rites and one called Scottish Rite. And within those two rituals which they had adopted from a basic slab coming from Egypt, 22 rules of which they adopted, having no more, they added some political effables which they call effable rights. So thus from the 22nd degree to the 33rd degree, Y11, in honor of Jesus' 33 years and, uh, of life, according to them. Thus, what is happening here, you would see in, reflected in the early America because they adopted it through the Masonic Rite. For example, the symbol of justice, which you have seen already and will see again, Goddess Ma'at with her scales, they left off, of course, her feather of truth. I don't think they had planned truth in the whole thing. Since the scales are not balanced, one scale is up and one is down. It is not justice, but just this. They adopted, again, the pyramid that you see out there, that exact one, the tallest one. And equally, which you're going to see, the eye of Horus, which comes from a story dealing with Horace's uh, father being killed by his uncle. Horace revenging the death of his father, kills his father but in the process has his left eye knocked out. Thus on your American dollar bill, this too was adopted. The eye of Horace, which you call the evil eye, the pyramid, the, you see it there, and the sun bursts which you call symbol of God, Ra, was equally adopted. So what you're seeing in this, what I'm getting to speak about, you are dealing with Egypt every day of your life. From the first day you put the first dollar bill of somebody in your hand, you are dealing with Egypt without knowing it. You're dealing with the Nile Valley, your Nile Valley, yet you are made to feel estranged from anything dealing with that. If somebody dealt with American dollar at a long before 1966, you have said that is irrelevant. No, I don't want to hear about it. Not knowing your own history. So uh, that's one of the reasons for this because it is here. Egypt did not start here. United Egypt. Re, as a matter of fact, we should say reunited rather than united. Egypt was reuniting 4,100 years before the common era or before Jesus the Christ as said from the Roman style. Egypt went through a reunification. We are accustomed to fight in this family. We are fighting now. But the one thing common about this family, we, ge we generally reunite. Don't care how we fight each other, this extended family got a, a way of coming back. And like a friend of mine, Professor John Clark said, the reason it happened that when the boats came, they didn't bring Jamaican, they didn't bring uh, Western Virginian, they didn't bring niggas, niggabo, jigabo, colored Negroes and whatnot. They, bring all, they brought all African. So at times we get 
African feeling, you know, want to come back together, and we do come back together, remembering, especially when the crackers start giving us blows. Uh, uh, can you ask the young gentleman when he finished to uh, uh, give us some service? Ah, some service for uh, soft drinks and things. You've got to pay for your own, of course. Uh, so we can ease our palate while we have the lecture and question answer period. Now, what that has done, though, is to make us associate with our history and yet not knowing it. Uh, how would you have felt in first grade or second grade if you know that Dollar had a part of you locked into it? Uh, uh, how would you have felt if you know Benjamin uh, ben Banneker had anything to do with the layout of Washington, D.C., especially if you were going to school? Just so. How would you have felt when you took up a Christian New Testament or a Jewish Old Testament and knowing that basically it was copied from you. You're going to see it. And that's what it means. What it means is when we talk about starting here at Memnefer, there where you saw the, the statue of Ramesses, one of the many statues of Ramesses, because you're going to see all kinds of statues of Ramesses. One, it don't look like the other. Because I know a lot of you say, God, what a nose he must be not been, you know. But that's one of the statues. There's no accident why that was picked out to enshrine. <laughs> uh, we'll get that understanding as we go along. The, some of you probably missed the little thing that I run up the room to the photo. So the little thing written by my sparrow. I'm sorry if you didn't, but we are coming back. I am not the type to say, well, I finish, and you're free day. If you want me to go back to the museum with you, I'll be glad to go back to the museum and discuss with you. As long as you're here, I work with you. Okay, now. What we are talking about, we are a, we are a spiritual people. Forget about religion. I don't deal with religion. It's a waste of time, a waste of money. But I deal with spirituality. It doesn't matter to me if you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Holy Roller, no rolling. It doesn't matter. You're spiritual. You are a spiritual people. Okay. What we're dealing with is what uni unified Egypt. We talk about the, reuni re the united Egypt. But everybody here talk about reuniting the people, the land. They never talk about re reuniting the spiritual force of the people. To me, that's the most important. What happened there at Memnefa, where we just came from, which a big city was a big complex. All of these things that you're saying are not, they're not a pyramid or three pyramids. It is a complex. When you went on the second floor, I'm sure that you saw the little model. You should have seen it of a pyramid and the causeway and everything that goes with it. What you see at Memnefa or Memphis as it's called, again, uh, the Greeks adopted the name and the Americans who traced themselves back to Greece and so forth adopted the name Memphis or Memnefa, is a story that started and that was culminated in the concept of a deity. It seems that Egypt had become prosperous and Egyptians started to fight. Africans of this land called Egypt started to fight themselves. They split up in two, two groups, one northerners and one the southerners. And after a number of years, from about 10,000 before the common era to about for the 100 years before the current era, a period of a little better than 5,000 years, one of the leaders of the southern group, a man called Mena, also known as Nama, the Greeks later call him Menes, M-E-N-E-S. So the first spelling is Mena, M-E-N-A, the second spelling is Nama, N-A-R-M-E-R, -E which is mostly called, and the third or foreign spelling is Menes, M-E-N-E-S. Leading a group of 
are lords, as you would refer to it in the English language, came in contact with a fellow who led an equivalent group of people from the northern area. His name is Scorpion, spelled like the little insect or animal that will bite you and hurt you sometimes. The two of them could not agree with each other to come back and reunite this common land, what was called the two lands, and decide to fight it out. Winner takes all. The fort, Nama killed Scorpion, and you know in those days you skill the leader, caused the reunification of these Tola and Kimit. But there was something unique happened at that particular time. You would think that Nama, who won, would say, well, all right, I won. My concept of the deity of God is the one that's going to dominate here. He could have done that easily. He won. But obviously, he was a psychologist because what Nama did, Nama's God, the God Ra, Worship in the south. And Scorpion, the dead man, now his god, the god Amen, which was worshipped in the north. And by the way, right there, we have something to think about. You still worship your northern god. At the end of every prayer and the end of every hymn, you say, Amen. And then you want to tell me, so, so be it. No, 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 it means Amen. One of the gods. But Nama said, no, I am going to make the god of the north and the god of the south one. But I'm not going to put my god, the god of the south, first. I will put the god of the north. The people will understand that I appreciate all of them. So he, he called it Amin Ra. But he knows I'm the boss anyhow. I am, I won, I got the control. I don't have to, such an ego, my name got to be first. I put, his, now what the people will not think, he's a good man. He's not bad, he fought, he beat our, kill our man, but by him, God, he means well. Look at that, he put our God name first and his name second. Won the people. And united Egypt under one king. That's why they stopped using the word king to him and said Pharaoh of all Egypt. At the time Egypt had 40 different states, 40 different uh, independent little governments. He brought them all together. So Egypt then had 40 states, 40 laws like uh, what they call the admonitions to goddess matters or uh, negative confession which you're going to see in put this down. You're going to see when you go excuse me, in the tomb of Ramesses the sixth. Uh, as the important thing, I will tell you what tomb or what temple you're going to find it, so that when you go there, you know to, if I'm not right yet, I said you could ask the guide, where is such and such a thing, if they didn't show you. I hope to be at all places with you, however, but one never know. Uh, to thank and may pay me a visit uh, sometime also. Uh, The Egypt was reunited. The soldiers were placed into one army, and here start what we call dynastic Egypt. You must make a distinction between dynastic Egypt and Egypt, because if you say Egypt began, you're wrong in 4100. Dynastic Egypt was always here from the time man set the place and call it Tameri or uh, 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 later um, size or, or Paul of the Nile or any such name before a lot of the different names that follow since that. And it is dynastic Egypt most of us mean when we speak it. So we are talking about dynastic. What is a dynasty? A period of reign, of rule by a particular person or a family. Or persons, for instance, a dynasty could be a day. A king could overthrow a fellow could overthrow the king, set up, and somebody overthrow him tomorrow. 
that's a dynasty gone right there. Or it could be 20 years. Or it could be torn from just natural birth. The Yankees had a dynasty in baseball that was overthrown, let's say, by the Orioles, who had two days, and then by the Detroit Tigers, who may have been just one year or two years. See, dynasty, a period of rule. Egypt was said to have had 31 dynasties. That is providing you're going to add the Greeks and the Romans as being part of the dynasty. I don't need to ask you. You've been in the museum. You've seen Greeks. And you've seen Romans. They don't fit, do they? When you look at the others, they don't fit. I mean, you don't have to be prejudiced, bias of any sort. They don't fit. When you look, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, so I don't need to go through that uh, thing for you because uh, if you got any eyesight, you see they didn't fit. But there was a man in Egypt who decided, as a matter of fact, he was forced, because we're talking about late, by the Greeks to tell them what Egypt was like historically. That man was called High Priest Maneto. M-A-N-E-T-H-O. High priest Manetho lived during the time of the Greek invasion of Egypt and was forced by Alexander, the son of Philip of Macedonia, which you like to call Alexander the Great, and I don't know why Egyptian guide continue to call that man great. There was nothing great about Alexander, the little punk, Huh? He wanted to speak to the uh, come. He wanted to speak to the the, the uh, what do you call it the uh, the great man the the um huh? the, the, great man, um, oh, oh. the great um well I I'll go on but it's it's like the great seer uh, of. Oh, but I'll, I'll come back to it. But anyhow, the greatest thinker of the city at the time. And I... Huh? No, no, no. Aristotle, Aristotle is nowhere. No, not the, it's the title rather than the man's name. But I'll, I'll get it. But he wanted to speak to this man. And the man refused, this Egyptian refused to speak to him, calling him an uh, insolent boy. So Alexander decided that he had to know the history of this great land. So he called on the 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 Amen the, 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 the I, I almost had but I'll go on. Uh, but hell and he, he, this wise man and uh, he wanted to speak to him and my wise man refused. So he called upon the high priest they had slaughtered all of the priestdom except the, the high priest, Manetho. And asked Manetho, told Manetho to write down a history of Egypt. Manetho started by, from the 4400 uh, 40, BC and said this would be the first dynasty. And for each dynasty, he said, there's so many kings as for so many years. Adding up all the kings and the years, that's why we can say BC such and such a date and such a date. Because we can count the amount of kings. Since Manetho did not use BC because there was no Jesus Christ yet. So he couldn't use BC. He used uh, so many kings, what we call Nile years. Do you understand? For instance, uh, when we speak of the ancient Egyptians in terms of AD and BC, that is late. That is the way that the Romans presented the history because you can't have before Christ when there's no Christ. See, Jesus is a journey come later, just yesterday. It, it, we never thought of it in our perspective we think that there was always a Jesus therefore we say before Christ and after Christ there was always a Christ to talk about before or after 
No, the one thing there was no Christ. He just came up the other day. Now, that thing is bothering. But oracle, the oracle of Anon. He wanted to consult the oracle, O R A C L E, of Amun, which was the like saying the greatest intellectual of Egypt, and that intellectual thought he was a stupid little boy to come and nobody of his consequence spoke to the oracle. Only great men came and consult with the oracle. And Alexander felt because he won a few wars in Persia that he gave him the right to come there and speak with this great brain. Well, Alexander soon after died. Is that an argument as how he died? Uh, that uh, when he killed his own uh, brother, and that says that his mother's uh, uh, child, uh, uh, that that caused him to break heart. Some said somebody threw a javelin in his back. It doesn't matter. But uh, that's when he killed Cletus Negra. The, it's said to be his mother, the servant. Yet Alexander, when Cletus was dying in Alexander's lap, and they said in law, a dying declaration is the best uh, evidence. Cletus says, Stu how stupid you are, Alexander. You have killed your own mother's son. Be that as it may, that is when Manetto divided Egyptian history into various dynasties. He could not put 31 dynasties because he could not include anything beyond the Greeks. That's when he lived. So when they say that Egypt has 31 dynasties and included Rome, that had to be wrong. It, they added that because Manetho died during the time of Rome, Greek rule, not during the time of Roman rule. So there again is a distortion of the fact. Be that as it may, Egypt then started her first dynasty at 4100. If you use the museum, the present museum, they use 3100. Some people used 3200, and some use as early as 50, 5000 ad. And if you look at the list of these Egyptologists and archaeologists, it run from 5000 ad to 3000 as the first dynasty. I use 4100 because Manetho used 4100 and he's the one that started. I like to deal with the person that started the thing, deal with him. And thus begins the modern, I call it modern, uh, listing of the Egyptian dynasties. What are we talking about? What is Egypt from the first dynasty to the third dynasty? That's the first major transition, the first major change in Egypt is going to take for you from the first dynasty and the third dynasty. What's going to be the, the dramatic change? What is it that we have in Egypt that is so similar to the other uh, states on the Nile, but on the third dynasty is going to change drastically from all the other countries? And the third dynasty there comes a man by the name of Imhotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, he who comes in peace, Imhotep, that's what the word, the name means, he who comes in peace. But Imhotep is a man, ordinary man. What about him is so important? We had Nama, we had Aha, the second king, and Nama had unified the place, and Aha had started to beautify the place and everything like that. Everything was going good. We had from the first to the third dynasty. What is going to be so unique about this man? In Hotep, yes, he was a man, but he was not an ordinary man. Because this man is a physician. He is a poet. He's a historian, he's a, 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 a prime minister, he is an architect, he's a builder, he's an engineer. He even gave us the little quip that people quote so often in the Caribbean, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. 
that's from Inhotep. So when you sing your Calypso, you remember Inhotep. All right, he's all of this. So what? What is going to be most important is that up to now, everybody building houses out, out of wood. Everybody, uh, anything, even the king's house is built out of wood. But what happened? The rains, regardless of how infrequent they came, they rotted the house. Different uh, parasites, not like loving wood to keep, but to eat it, destroy the houses. In order for his God, his deity, and the body of his Pharaoh decided, my Pharaoh cannot be buried like any other Pharaoh. I got to have something more permanent. Something that wouldn't ever be destroyed. And he said, I got to answer, it's stone. And so he built, before that people used to be buried in Mastaba, a rectangular thing since a human being is longer than the human being is short or wide. Uh, some of us try to violate that rule. But he said, I won't do it that way. I will, it isn't nice to see because one angle, so he said, I'll make it square. So he built this square tomb for his pharaoh and dig a deep hole 92 feet deep. Can you imagine 92 feet deep in those years? And put his pharaoh down there that nobody could go and mess up, steal the things out, the coffin and so forth. But then he said, this is too ordinary. Everybody's buried in something like this. I will add another box on it, another smaller box. And then he says, this is this too. It's too simple. I'll put one box for each year. So you have seen a, a, a wedding cake, right? So there is a seven tier wedding cake, seven tier box. And thus he said, one would represent the day of each year. And since, and one would represent the season of agriculture. Seven years shall the land lay farrow, and seven years, right, shall it rest and so forth. And thus, the first stone building in the entire world. The first time man built in stone. Stone then was to survive everything else. And thus, because Egypt went toward stone, Egypt history survived. Those who created Egypt, Egypt's mother, Nubia, Egypt's mother, uh, Ethiopia, Egypt, mother, Penwet, and so forth, did slowly vanish from history while she was blooming because of a stone structure that others follow. And then from that stone structure, he built uh, some of the things that you see, the mortuary temple. Both, some of them was false because only at that time people were stealing. So they built some false ones and some actual ones. Then he built, he said, he built a center of intellectual knowledge. <clears throat> the Grand Lodge. The thing you pass through that looks so modern in the front with these columns, with the fluted columns, that was the Grand Lodge. And there they set up the first man, first known education system, a school, a lodge. That is, was the Grand Lodge of Saqqara. Each state or province had a grand lodge. So of 40 uh, uh, states or province, they had a grand lodge. But the greatest of the grand lodge was the one in Saqqara. At the time, the pharaoh was Juza, D-J-O-S-E-R, or Sir, he was known also S-E-R, the Greeks call him Zuza, Z-O-Z-E-R. We are now on the threshold of what became the most powerful, the most intellectual, and definitely the most high cultured society in human history in terms of the impact it had on the world. 
these Africans, these Egyptians, follow suit when Imhotep, they develop a priestly system, but the people who, listen down, the people who work stone became known as the Mason and established a society called the craft, the sacred craft of Amun Ra. They didn't wear top hats, uh, cut away tails, <coughs> flip, color, and stiff bow tie, looking like a damn penguin. Can you see a black man looking like a penguin in the heat of the Caribbean, the heat of uh, Georgia, heat of New York? Talking about secret society marching down the street. How are you going to secret and you marching in the damn street? <laughs> but uh, you know, they were not St. John yet. That's going couldn't have St. John Day. They were not Jesus yet. He didn't come yet. Mary wasn't born yet. This is a soul brother thing. With soul brothers only. No, you all feel bad because no European was there. You're all in bad shape. This is one time you were doing things without Europeans in Barbara. I didn't beg for to have them. I wish we could go back to those days after all. Now, Egypt was on her way. I understand. No, sorry. You understand. If you... I understand it. Because when I first came here in 39, I didn't cry outside. I, I wish I'd cry outside. I cry inside. When you have your life locked up and people tell you all kind of lie and make you suffer all your life, and then you come and the load is lifted, you react any kind of way. You act any. We went through a lot. And when you could come in and, and that burden is unloaded, uh, many of you may do it. Many of you who are mothers, especially you who are mothers and didn't have a piece of paper because before you come to mother, wait till you reach to Abu Simbel, I mean to uh, uh, Abydos. And then you're going to say, I had to pay a penalty of shame for no reason. And Abydos can lift it off your shoulder. I remember a, a woman bishop who burst out the same way at Abydos when she saw the Immaculate Conception and everything and the painting and so forth and heard her child call a bastard for 20 odd years talk about her child being illegitimate because she had a piece of paper. Then she found, you know, all of you realize Jesus is illeg illegitimate. Jesus, mother, mother, father was never married. Well, let's go on. You see, when you look at from this here, this organization, every organization you know, those of you with your Greek fraternity and Greek sorority, copied from this here. There was no Delphi, no Grand Lodge of Delphi to come up with Alpha, Gamma, Lapa, Bapa, Theta, all kind of junk. We didn't call them that. There were no such Greek language yet. There were no Greeks yet. But we had a language. We dealt with Medu nature. M-E-D-U, one word, nature. N-E-T-C-H-R-E-C-H-R, -E -E the next word. Medu, language or words. Nature. Language of the words of the deity or the gods or the goddesses. One thing that the Africans had done at that time for every god, there was a goddess. One thing that did not become a masculinized society bias, and that's why I said uh, when people speak of the domination of men, you talk about European stuff. Because every god here had a goddess. And every god and goddess here have a, had a virgin birth child. 
because his goddess didn't run around and get no umpteen man and she knew who the daddy was. Every goddess, every quality of God, for every uh, for a goddess of love, there's a God of love. For a goddess of truth, there's a God of truth. You, you understand what I'm talking about? For every quality, there's a God, there's the equivalent God. So the, Egypt, the Africans of Egypt came up with what they call the law of opposites. For in, there's out, for up, there's down. For man, there's woman. Anything you name, there is an opposite. And the ancients at that early stage with Inhotep and others not only came up with the concept but draw, drew a diagram of the law of opposites which Plato tried to plagiarize. Talking about film, <laughs> P-H-E-L-G-N and other such nonsense and blood and so forth. Poor fellow. He had come and spent 15 years, but since a student wasn't allowed to write down anything of the books that were there, they had to memorize it. And somebody asked me, why is it, why you could remember so many things? I, I, I grew up in the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. One thing the teachers used to do was make you get up and memorize a book. And tore your, your knuckles up when you, when you miss a sentence. Tell you, give you this, give me the story back. What? That's a joke. It would need the one, but they said so that you will know to retain what happened when you're in a place and they know book. They started, and from that they developed first thing a concept of moral laws. The admonitions to Goddess Maat. And what they did was to establish the superiority of death over life. We got it, life over death. But don't get me wrong, they're not saying we're going to try to die for dying's sake. They said we're going to try to die as a way, but we consider death the highest experience of life. Because the ancients said that to live you must have died. And to die, you must have lived. That there is no beginning and no end. It's a continuum. That's where the European tried to change, and they change the concept. Thus, we are forever begging for forgiveness for a thing our grandfather did 10,000 years ago. We are going to church begging, Lord, please forget me. When is he going to forget me and forgive me? Then we got to beg him for the same thing. Every, every weekend? No, the ancient Egyptians said, you don't got to go and ask him for this. For the same thing, don't ask for it last week. What kind of God that is going not uh, accept? You come in honesty and you say, forgive me for the thing and say, come next week, say it again. So they said, no, you do a ritual. You prove. You take your big lamb. You only got one lamb. You give that to God. So the people are wrong. Slaughter the lamb and say, people come and eat. I was bad. God is going to, I want God to forgive me. I'm slaughtering the land for the community. You pay. Next week, 10 weeks, a million years from now, you don't ask for forgiveness for that same thing. You don't pay. That's why it was not necessary for sacrificial human rights. Unlike the pyramids of South America, these were not used. No sacrifice whatsoever. There was no record of a sacrifice of Egyptian sacrificing another human being. There were no sacrifice. There were gifts to the Lord, to God, fruits, vegetables for the people, the poor to eat. And you will see all of that and the walls and the temples and freezes as we go to travel in the different temples starting in Loxa. What they did, for example, was to established the ancient Africans of Nile of Egypt established the woman we had a discussion on the bus today I was coming from a whole different ball game that than the Western ball game and sisters couldn't understand me because we were, we were trained in Western thing and I'm coming from an African position we established the woman as the symbol of justice peace and love you could get no justice, no peace, no love, unless you come by way of the female. Goddess, what is the symbol of justice and love? 
goddess Ma'at. You have to come with your heart as light as the feather of truth, the ostrich feather. There's no way that your heart can weigh less than an ostrich feather. But the symbolism of it is what we're talking about. And what is she holding? Two scales, scales of justice. <coughs> and for love, not the failure of love, who did or what did we establish goddess Hathor with the two cow horns? And why did we pick out a, why did the ancient Egyptian pick out a cow to represent love and not the bull? What we could do with the bull? Okay. We get his skin. We could get from him, of course, he mates. Uh, we get glue, his, his hoof, and so forth. But we get all those things from the cow. Can we get milk from the bull? At least not that kind. Can we get cream from the milk from the bull? Not that kind. We could go on. The, bill, the, 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 the cow is going to give us cheese. All those things we can get from the cow and we can't get from the bull. So the ancient Egyptians and other people along the Nile said, we must establish the cow as the seat of justice, but we don't remove the, the thing we make him associate of. And then the other animals where you can get from the male and let us balance it out. Thus, the ancient Egyptians said, we will put symbolism and we will use the fowl, the be we use the beast, we use the reptile, all of that to explain attributes of God. Ministers get there and tell us the ancient Egyptian worship uh, chicken, they worship bird, they worship dogs. and No, they did not. And they people saying it no better, but they're talking about the plate, the money in the plate. That's why they sell them lies. And it got to be such a big lie that now those liars don't even know they're lying. The ancient Egyptian used the snake because of the quality of the snake. A snake venom will kill you, but the same venom will save you. You say, well, the, 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 the falcon which is most used, the falcon goes high as it can where other birds can't go where even bullets don't go. But the falcon comes down and deliver message, bring back message. It's a cunning bird, it's an intelligent bird. And so if we're gonna talk about God, why not use the falcon as the symbol of qualities of God? And so we use the lion and the man's body, the, 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 the lion and the man's head, wisdom of the human being, but the strength of a lion. And so the African said, these attributes of God still is in one God, and what symbol can we use greater than the sun? And so the Africans comes up with the sun symbolic of God, and the Pharaoh was the son of the sun, S-O-S. The S-O-N of the S-U-N. Well, let us see. What you can have without the sun? Name it. Every living thing you see depend on the sun. Even the moon depend on the sun to shine. To shine. If the sun doesn't give light to the moon, there'll be no shine, light from the moon. Moon, moon would, be, would be a dud as it is without the sun. Chlorophyll come. You got no grass. Nothing turn green. The cow can't eat. The it would be no milk, no meat, no nothing. Uh, the grass wouldn't grow. Well, what better symbol can we demonstrate? Who is God? Where is God? The sun. What do you mean? Name me what you could do without the sun. That's God. That's the quality of God. What better thing could we use? What did they put behind Jesus' head? <coughs> Besides the halo, a sunburst, isn't it? They put the halo around Mary behind her head and the sunburst are behind Jesus. Uh, that, you, you, that's what we're talking about. Now, 
There's no way that a man who has been properly trained, that a, a priest, a Jesuit priest, don't know. He knows. The Jesuit knows all I'm saying to you, just that he ain't going to tell you. It's not his job to put himself out of business. But it's my job to tell you. To make you independently knowledgeable. To start you. This ain't going to be all. This is just a start. You got to do rest. In this, it was necessary that they started to make instrumentations. But the Africans had already refined even a calendar. A calendar which had started in 10,000 BC called this a stellar calendar based upon the stars, the distance of the stars to the, to the earth. Everything centered from the earth. Everything centered from that complex of pyramid at Giza that you went to. Based upon that pyramid that some of you went upstairs, got frustrated because there was nothing in the room. And then your knees paid a price. <laughs> Not going up, but coming down. When you got there, and those tendons start to pull back. <laughs> My son said, I'm a strong young man, but ooh, <laughs> I feel so wobbly. <laughs> you see, it gives you a chance to marvel. But then you find out that all that work for 20 years to build that was not just for fun or decoration, that it had astrophysical proportion and meaning. Thus, they were able to measure from the earth to the sun to the other planets, the stars, the moons, and therefore come up with a system we're going to see, which you will later call the zodiac, which is really Greek nonsense. They didn't call it that nonsense. They didn't make it up when they make it rectangular, the Greeks. After the French stole the original, they put back a fake one. And you all can't come out the house until you consult your zodiac. <laughs> hmm? That's what the sisters. That's what the sister cry out. All the mess that she had to suffer wrongly and make her feel guilty, and when in fact it's the other way, it's hers. I know I felt bad. We we gonna as we deal. And we're going now where the, most of the symbols that we're going to see is in the Luxor area. And areas around Luxor where we're going to be dealing with. What we've seen in Saqqara and what we've seen here at Giza is man's attempt to establish himself with his maker, creator, male, female, whatever. Man's billing for a permanent place to remember he is going to be long dead and short lived. When you consider how long you're going to live and how long you're going to be dead, you're going to live no time. You're going to see grave been here 10,000, 12, 20,000 years ago. Some human being so long they're petrified like stone. So you see why the ancient Egyptian, you can't find the king's palace, but you find where the king used to pray. Because what the ancient is saying, I will build monuments to death. Because death is more permanent than life. There's no permanency in life. And he said, since I can't believe that the creator will make a man just to perish and it's finished, I will develop a concept of life after death. I will theorize what the Lord must have meant and I will make the obligation, thus the negative confession, hail Ma'at, I have not killed man nor woman. Hail Ma'at, I have not spoken with a forked tongue. Hail Ma'at, I have not made light thy bushel. Hail Ma'at, I have not taken any man's woman 
O men, hail ma'at, I have not defiled any woman's body. I have not defiled her. I have not lied to her just to get into her body, then walk off, and then expect her to be a good woman after that. I have not set her on a, on a course of wrath, of angry. A anger. I tell her, oh baby, I love you, I'll marry you, and then when I get it, I go off. And then I said, why is she mad? Why is she did my Ali that went with her? You forget that he lied to her. It's not the going with her. That's not what bothering her. Because somebody's going to do it anyhow. But it's the lie, the deceit, in which she had to give up her body. Huh? So that start the ball rolling. So why did she hate men so? Well, the first man figure up, and she hated because she can't trust the next man. You understand? Of course, that is on the female side. I know you brothers are saying, but man, see, I am talking about balance. I'm just talking about what the thing is. Of course, I'm guilty of some of that too, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling you on a better rose, but I know why I'm not, not going to pass it off. I know why it didn't mean nothing to the, the education system which I came under. Prepare me for that. The Adam and Eve story. The Adam and Eve story will tell me that I could believe that a woman came from my rib cage. Now, if I, I got a reason to lie. The lies in the Bible, the first lie I read, that a woman come from my rib cage, eh, here, a woman got, got everything for baby, gonna come to a rib cage. Hmm? Then God gonna for, forget the formula of making people from dirt, and God will steal a rib from me to make her. And I come to her ribs the same as mine. Somebody make, make up for the last rib. But we get tight, uptight if I say this, but we, do, we could go back to the original story. And the original story, man, came and woman came from abysmal deep and doesn't explain it they don't know but they know you know mama know and you should know let us see who's right after that seed slipped down the fallopian too got fertilized slip in to that ovary and then settle in what you call the placenta. Isn't it deep, dark, and abysmal pit? Isn't it? Is there light in there? Isn't it water in there? Is it liquid in there? Isn't it abysmal deep that can take 10, 28 days to come out in a normal span? Not nine months, 20, 10, 28 days. And when it comes out, isn't it heaven? You're looking for heaven, but what the book of the day tell you, heaven is at the end of a woman's legs. You read it. Peppy one is the one that said it in the book of the dead. Where is your mother's room? Where is your mother's, um, what do you call it, lane? The, 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 Mm. Placenta isn't at the end of her leg by her crutch, isn't it in there? No, but you looking for heaven in the air when you've been in there, you came out of there. Some of you trying to get back there quite often at that. I mean, it is no, there's a heaven in the physical human sense, and there's a heaven in the mental sense. I love both of them, of course, but we can't deal with it. Because the West tell us there's something nasty, something bad about a human vagina. That's the way we've been trained. And therefore, we call it all kind of name. Women tell the daughter, it's your dollar. Go wash your dollar. Associate a fee with it. You know, go wash your money. All other things, you know. We call it pussy. All kind of ugly name because we have no value of it. So my mother said to me, I, come here boy, as I big enough, she'll kneel down. 
And he long. She said, put your face where you came from. I put my face direct to my mother's vagina, pressed my head, she said, no. Every 31st of December, you come to me and take the same position because it's my birthday. When my sister was born 18 and a half years later and my sister grew up, she said, come to me on August the 13th. Every August the 13th. Until I relieve you of the responsibility because it's my birthday. She had two birthdays that year. She had more, but they died. She said, you ain't got no damn birthday. Don't mind you hear those children saying, it is my birthday. You, I push you out. All you did was come out. It's my birthday. And then I found my grandmother, Ethiopia, tell me, all of them tell me, it's my birthday. You got 15 children, 15 birthdays. So what you did to have a birthday? You just come out of there. But if you understand the meaning of it, then we wouldn't rape our grandmother. All the rapes you've been hearing about young 17 old brothers raping sisters, 89, 90 years old, he had a man in 30 years, throw them off the roof, take the little pocketbook, because they had the birthday. Their mother didn't have the birthday. So they had none to honor. It wasn't heaven they're honoring. They don't think of their mother's womb as heaven. You could talk about bitch and put your foot in her uh, ten, two, uh, eight and size eight and a half deep into her go behind. What do you care? She's in heaven. But if she was heaven, as the as the uh, the book of the dead said, then you will handle heaven with delicate care. So that's where the ancients started. So not only did they started the physical thing. To me, Egypt isn't so much its physical phenomena and which is magnificent but what done to Egypt is set the moral principle that others had copied and then later find to be not working in terms of dollars and cents it is too righteous for us to keep because it doesn't back our exploits in dollars and cents it puts us too much it says we don't say thou shall not I order you, don't do it. No, we said, we ain't going to talk about that. I have not. Heal my heart. I have not. Made light. The bushel. I haven't sell you short change. I put them put a piece of washer in the way to make the pound of corn heavier than it is. I have not spoken a lie. You see, they said, don't do it, but nobody said. You see, when the minister said, don't do what I do, do what I say. Why? Why should I do what you say and not what you do? Why should you be allowed to screw all the girls in the choir, but I can't have one? Hmm? No, I can watch what you say. If you say, if you say this is so good to do and you're not doing it, I'm not coming to your damn church no more. You stay in there by your damn self and support yourself. But you can't do that because you're scared you're going to do the same thing. So you can't tell a sucker, I'm not going to support you no more. So I'm going to wind down this aspect of it and just tell you that what we are about to see is not only the physical aspect. We're going to deal with the spiritual aspect that made your ancestors that great. Because it's the spiritual aspect that make them do the material things that they did. The spiritual aspect that makes them build these great buildings. Produce science, mathematics, a language, uh, for you to be able to talk and write and communicate with each other to count spiritual needs uh, that they were trying to do. When you see the different hats, the different crowns they used to represent each different qualities and the temple of goddess Hathor and both sides of the temple you're going to see the 28 different hats and crowns. It is the spiritual aspect that make them show, you see the pictures of Nut, show God uh, uh, Ra coming out of heaven, coming out of a woman's vagina in the morning, in a, in a little chapel, in the morning, where the sun, uh, the rays of the sun, while goddess 
uh, Hathor, the goddess of love, staying there, smiling as she watched the tree of life. Ain't got nothing to do with no forbidden nothing. The Jews took it and distorted it and called it forbidden tree. The tree of life, you can see the tree of life with no forbidden, forgiven principles and things at all mentioned where they, where they got. And took in the sun in the night, loose it in the morning of her vagina, take it in the night in her mouth, and then you see the suns in different parts of her body showing the woman as the producer of life. But you see, they weren't worried about masculine, they didn't need to be macho and all that kind of thing. They didn't need uh, John Wayne or anybody else. You see, they didn't suffer to be big macho. That don't mean she didn't ask the wife to bring the food. But they didn't put their foot in her behind and then say, bitch, come over here. And that's where we lost something, is that when we start to become so economically superior of each other, and then we make the woman a statue of beauty in the house rather than a helpmate. I think we could stop here. We had a lot of time and question answer period and uh, uh, this will hold you till we get in the south for the next lecture. Uh, it was I know a long double lecture but it, you had it coming and I wanted you to get in a frame of mind where we could understand each other. So I open to questions and answer. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I didn't, I don't know of any. You think that that means that there was a kind of corresponding one to the other and that the intended family in that case was mother, father, being one, and not more children? I can't say so because it was just theory. And I can't put back my theory based upon my living now and the environment now to what the ancients might have been thinking because it's so long I would have had the conditions under which they lived to come up with the answer but based upon my understanding of things now uh, you could ask me the question more direct do I believe in polygamy as against monogamy do you think polygamy is, is apparently African and yes and I see nothing wrong with it no more than I see something wrong with monogamy or polyandry. Uh, people make a system that suffices their needs. Uh, I have been in one poly, uh, polyandrous society. By the way, uh, don't feel bad. That's where a woman has more than one husband. Uh, I've been in India where there's a population of tremendous... It's one a rare thing where they're about... 30 men to each woman. So, otherwise that men go kill themselves, you had to find some way in which they could mate. So, the one woman had to be the wife of 10 or 15 men. Now, it, it sounds funny, somebody, Western miners jump up immediately, sexual intercourse, automatically we think of man and woman, we think of uh, screen each other till we die. Uh, no, the, those men, they stipulated times in which they were mate with her. As a matter of fact, there, there were times that nobody, none of the men were having any sex because she had just had a baby and she couldn't be touched by a man for two years. I know in among the community where the so-called Falasha, where I came from, uh, when a woman gave birth, you couldn't touch her for two years, not for herself alone, which was also, but for the child. The child needed two years to develop personality and do everything. Plus, she needed two years to heal her back. Western society with all the modern things, they're coming around to that now. And so that the sex played its part, but it played just as much another part as food would play, or clothing. Uh, when we think of polygamy, monogamy, and polyandry, we immediately think of promiscuity. And, it, and they have nothing to do with each other. 
So uh, though they did not have uh, a monogamous behavior, uh, a polygamous behavior, uh, to me it doesn't say anything about the social life of our uh, things. Because since the king had a polygamous uh, marriage. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Ben, we, we all respect you and the work that you've done and with Evan uh, by our presence here at this tour. You, I, I've heard you mention a number of times as to your respect and the importance of the African American, or the African woman. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, I've heard you make various comments, which in a sense kind of sends mixed signals. And if you mention in terms of during your presentation this evening, in terms of the spirituality and again the significance of the African woman, um, does that, do you see any type of inconsistency there or is there, am I missing something or in other words, should this be carried out? The, the if you if you really believe in the African woman, should this be something that's carried out in one's everyday actions and comments as far as from the African woman? Uh, I am the by, to the best of my knowledge, I'm the biological father of eight daughters. all of whom are married and mothers. Some are grandmothers, because I'm a great-grandfather. Does it mean because I respect them and owe them an honor for being just women that I don't chastise her for being wrong? Or at least let her know I think she's wrong and then let us respond to me to show where she isn't and we have a discussion. I didn't say to love her without reason. I said, and I repeat, I glorify the African woman. I don't love the African woman. I glorify, that's a higher stage. And not only that, that is not a high stage. The highest stage of a relationship is respect. It's higher than love. Love, you have no control. It's an emotion that you can't say nothing about. I could fall in love with a prostitute in the morning and can't get, get her out my system, but don't respect her. <laughs> can't respect her. So when I respect her, that's the highest stage. Because I'm going to try for her not to be hurt by things I do. Now, in that statement equally, there are forces in which I interplay and interplay on me. And in such, interplay on her, and we get mixed signals. She may feel the respect for me as I do her, but in trying to make a living, trying to do everything within the society in which we live, we get off the keel and we clash with each other, and so often we gotta get back and say, well, wait now, wait now, I love you and I respect you. What are we doing here to each other? So it go because that human element in me. Yes, I got that moment when uh, I got that moment when I act peaceful. I, I can't understand my child vengeance. My words fail me, and I whoop! I hit a bit, then hell out my child. I don't hit my woman. I never make that mistake because if I respect her, I ain't gonna beat her. Because any woman that's stupid that I need to beat, I don't want. I'm going to do it for you at the temple of, I tell you just where I'm going to do this. You at the temple of uh, Isis, otherwise called the island of Philae in Aswan. 
Uh, I wouldn't do it to, the, to you before then, because I forget we're traveling this way. I'm going to do it for you at Abydos and Dendera. The, Abydos is the temple of Setaiwan. Dendera is the temple of uh, goddess Hathor. I'm going to show you the immaculate conception and the virgin birth that you could put your hand on it. As a matter of fact, I'll let you put your hand on it and see where the concept of Jesus, Mary, and the Immaculate Conception of Virgin Birth came from. You're going to touch it. You're going to touch the resurrection. You're going to take pictures of it. And you're going to be right there. That's when the sister, it, it going to release in you. You may not respond. respond. It's going to release in you the same emotions. You're going to actually touch it and see where it came from, the concept. 4,100 years before Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. They came here and got it. There are 16 crucified saviors, 16. Jesus is the last. Okay, I mean, in between that, I mean, Christianity during the Roman occupation. No, it changed, Paul. Changed, well, that's what I want to say. Yes, I, okay, feel it. Okay. Not only going to say that, but going to show you how they dig in cross. Quote, unquote, the hidden temple are going to carry you to the temple of uh, Thutmosis III in Karnak and show you the triad, the trinity, how they chop off the Christ early Christian, chop off the head of goddess Mut, chop off the head of her son, God Chums, and leave her husband head, uh, Petar, to make it look like a crucifix. Yeah, I'm going to carry you to show you that and let you touch it. So that when you go back, you, the touch, you got your eye to remember, you got a feeling, you know, you feel and touch to remember when you, when it come to that, you could say, well, wait now, wait now. I saw the original and it's me. You're a sister. You say, I know, I know what Mary had to feel. It is me it come from. I taught her to feel as a virgin woman. And it has nothing to do with the hymen. That's another thing. The Nicene Conference, which you refer to, changed the concept from the virgin birth, a clean birth, to a hymen extravaganza, that Mary still had her hymen. That is a new thing. How the hell is she going to be pregnant and still get her hymen? But you see, they willfully mix up the word hymen and virgin to be one. You can't be have your hymen and still be pregnant. Unless that guy had a less than a fly or mosquito penis. <laughs> yes. Colors to demonstrate things. For instance, in the circumcision sheen, the 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 one circumcising is always brown. The one being circum circumcised is always yellow. It, it the, the color demonstrated different things, and the ancient Egyptians had no color system or races as the Western society. They had people who look in, look in different shades, brown, yellow, and in South they deal with it, but it had no significance more than they were brown or they were yellow, but not they were inferior because they were brown or the yellow or the green. If, uh, for instance, at a funeral was always going to be white. Always. You would ne never see ancient Egyptian funeral unless the deceased is in white, the mourners is in white. Every funeral. Oh yeah, that's birth. Green represent birth, new life. Even in in, in our side, the fresh grass is green. The, you know, green is normally in most societies a representation of new life. Yes, ma'am. That's these modern Egyptian. Not we're not talking about the ancient Egyptian. <coughs> ancient Egyptian bury when they get time to bury them. No, ancient, put in the dirt. No, 
cannot meet and you cannot meet uh, an Egyptian because they want to want to be here with God for them. That's Christian, Muslim and Jews. Don't accept cremation. They don't accept cremation unless there's a terrible disease and they got a boy in the body, otherwise everybody will die. Uh, like a certain type of fever or something like that. They don't cremate. And, and after the wash, the, the body is washed. A woman, of course, wash a woman, a man wash the woman. You never have the sexes mixing and washing the body and prepare the body, oil it so that they really carry it to the mosque if it's, if, if it's um, a, 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 a Muslim, the certain rituals are sell. And the men carry the, the body on a trough like. And the body is just wrapped. It's wrapped and wrapped in a canvas, cover the head and everything. And then it's lowered into the grave like that. They don't make a coffin or something. When you see coffin and those big things like the state funeral, like the president died and they make it a big show. It, not the prominent people, but certain prominent people. Because you could be prominent and don't get no state funeral and, and that they're gonna put you in the same wrapping. You got to be a, to a certain, like this president, a, a president, people coming from all over to see the president and so forth. And it's, in, in Saudi Arabia, they're going to they're gonna bury him anyhow. The president will know and just have a ritual up when he's gone. So it depends on which Muslim state. But that's modern. That's, that's not, but they still have the, uh, the old practice of going to the cemetery and eating and giving food. I forget what that the, 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 the day when everybody go to the cemetery to eat and they bring food for the dead and so forth. But that, that's come that comes through Islam from ancient Egyptian rituals. Yes, sir. This the scarab. The scarab is the symbol of one of the symbols of resurrection because you know as a scarab every twenty eight days would go into the dung. Uh, of the, the horse or the uh, any bovine or any animal that chew its cud about t uh, three or four times uh, that dung and don't come up for uh, for, uh, for a period of time and the ancient believe it died and resurrected so it's one of the symbols of a resurrection it also used to guide Ra in his travel to the nether world so the common dung beetle is, is considered God Kepra K-H-E-P-R-A it's not spoken anywhere along the Nile or anywhere that I know because no one knows the vowel songs and where they were placed. There's many a type attempt by people to say that they speak in ancient Egyptian. It's poppycock. Uh, because since the ancient Egyptian didn't write with vowels, vowels are applied based upon how the individual feel. We don't, we don't, unless we could find some writing with the vowel song, and there are none of the writings with vowel song. Not only am I, I, I can speak about some in this case, I may refer to some, I think, in working in some of the direction. Uh, just like now you saw my son with a big book. It is a new manuscript, a 500 paid manuscript, and I got to cut the museum and the temples and do check, back check, because it got to be accurate, and therefore it has to take five, six years of checking. Uh, and I've always been working on three or four manuscripts at the same time. Now, uh, the digging, I've gone back to archaeological digging with a group and so forth. Unfortunately, the production of books in this field is a slow process. And uh, from 36 to now, I've only been, been, been able to produce 32 books in, in 50 odd years. Uh, they, one of the problem is not only the production of works, is the certification of the production of that work, the very, very verification. And what we are doing constantly is using, using book primarily by Europeans in the library, copying the same lies or 
just taking a lie and, and turn around the lie and say, that's it. Uh, we need more African. We, we, we have one African archaeological team, yours truly, one in the whole of Egypt. The Japanese got a team here. All practically all European groups, the Germans, the, the Swedes, the Czechoslovakians, the, I've got a team here. Japanese got a team here. All digging for verification of what happened in our culture, and we won't do nothing sitting up in libraries. You see, because we don't want to put, we don't want to get con. The hurt, you know, and the hard. And some girls don't want to touch it with a corny hand. Uh, and we want to get it by re remote osmosis. And always looking with pretty ties and sitting back with fingernails behind the cure. And we don't want to come and do that field work. And that's the problem, sir. We need a host of brothers and sisters here. And the government will be glad to, to, to give the brothers, to certify them to do diggings and so forth. But they don't want to do that. Everybody wants to sit down and discuss slavery. I mean, hell, everybody. I mean, we know about slavery, shit. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we were not the only slaves in the world. Uh, but everything you look at the book is down for something about slavery. Uh, we need to be positive. No, don't get me wrong, though. We've got to talk about slavery. We're not going to forget it. But we need a, the positive side of what we contributed and did. I, I need my little great-grandson. I got the, the youngest one is about, about four or five weeks. I saw the Virgin Islands about a week ago, two weeks ago. I want him to know what his ancestors did in building the world. More so than because he got caught, somebody came and beat him in a war and took him over. That's a negative thing. Anybody could be a slave. Just get beaten and caught. <laughs> No, but anybody couldn't have built the pyramids. Anybody couldn't have given the world mathematics. Anybody couldn't have given a sign. When we go to the place, I'll show you this, the mathematics just right there on the wall, the number system, everything. That I want him to know that so that he know that the number man ain't got a damn thing. Or the, or the, the, forget the number man, he's just like minor. But the drug man ain't got nothing to get to, to that he need. That he could make, he could become a scientist. Maybe not got the money as fast, but at least the young man will get killed for the money he got. But whereas he wouldn't be killed for a scientist, the little money he got, he'd be having it to use. I got to build an image in that little great grand, whatever it is, and my children, that they gonna, that money is important, but it is not important as the scientist who just created or do whatever it is for to stop the quote-unquote common coal. Huh? To stop the common coal is more important than a billion dollars and a Mercedes-Benz. Without all of the hullabaloo. And of course, if you stop the common coal, you're going to have all kind of hullabaloo. Yes, Mama Daniel, sir. Since many of us have been so uh, educated, um, it would probably be necessary for us to at least get some kind of background before we decide we're going to come over here and dig. And oh, yes. Be able to find some oh, no, I don't to mean just go and dig. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> so, what kind of academic preparation do you think best in order to prepare to come here and actually do some serious work? Architecture, engineering, uh, any of the sciences. What they call the hard sciences. Uh, even, even, even theosophy. I didn't say religion. Theosophy. Uh, but you must have something besides theosophy. Mostly, the, the best combination with that would be languages. Uh, you must develop a skill in languages, and that's one thing America is bad for. Most Americans is monolingual. They only speak one language, and that's English. Uh, because of the arrogance at one time that the world needed them and they didn't have to know but nobody is English but Japan has put a stop to that uh, <laughs> so uh, you should have but you could come here without knowing Arabic uh, 
even to teach as an English teacher right now they're begging for English speaking teachers to speak in, to, to teach in Nubia you don't have to know Arabic because you're teaching advanced uh, students who advance in English no problem on carry right to the man if you're interested <laughs> I carry right to the note to the Aswan uh, culture center and they're gonna sign you up then you will tell them what day you could come in English if you teach English if you yeah yeah, yeah. no you got to be an English teacher teaching math English you got to show some certificate that you teach in America English or wherever it is you teach English yeah certified in your state at least two years three years I, I think enough to teach a junior high school uh, English and I Anybody who interested, I, I carry, I serve, get to ask when, uh, because it's bigger for me, I delivered. <laughs> I promise that that will be when I delivered. Yeah, and you don't have to know, they figure, the students are available to take your teaching in English. So they don't need your help in that, in that. and then you will pick up uh, Arabic yourself, and a Nubian language. <laughs> uh, I think I promised one here, and. And this, you, she, her hand, and then I'm going to come and I just would like to say something in respect to what the brother asked. How can he help? Because it's not I think I think in the process Beryl Banfield okay, you know I tried to remember that name just a few weeks when I was in the United States at a very important <coughs> lecture to tell some people to contact for children book and I couldn't remember her name for nothing and right now I, you just said that I said Beryl Banfield <laughs> How the human mind? How the human mind? But we first we have to get the material to teach them, and unfortunately, the material which our researchers uh, put up and one of the, the thing I try to purposely do is to write at a level no higher than the seventh grade education because some of the books brothers and sisters write I can't read they're too high for me they, ca they can't read it because they write it with a big lexicon at the side and put words that they get trouble with 15 syllables and so forth now to get the material there's no, no shortage of the material there is shortage of the material at a level in which the child could understand. Uh, oral tradition is fine, but the child is going to be every place with the teacher. It needs something written down she <coughs> could go with. Now what the child needs is teachers who are going to, writers, who are going to translate or take that writing from this heavy English into a literary state where the child could feel comfortable with, feel associated to. And some of the problem, the, the major problem that I found is material where the child could read and digest without having to always run in every, every second word into a lexicon or, or a di dictionary. So that's the, the problem. Yes, I agree with you that uh, the mothers or the guardian or whosoever have to pass on to the child. I know that one of the things I did well, I'm I crazy about something. I believe that a child in the mother's womb is listening to me. A bit of strong. So, so I will get there and... I, I like playing with the baby in the mother's uh, womb because I feel connected to the child that way. And I talk to my child. I, I teach my child uh, the, the, the lessons in, in the womb. And some people think I'm crazy, but I, I believe that somehow the child here... I, I may be off there. I know I got some of my, That's one of my idiosyncrasy. But I believe strongly that children in there learn because I know something I see, I say certain things. Uh, I got one of my grandson that is very close, live very close to me. And he comes back to the, to the house, he's now four. And fantastic. 
But sometimes I spoke, spoke, I said something and something, and he's around and nothing. Then one day he would come up to me and said, Granddaddy, uh, so and so and so and so. I said, where you get that from? He said, you said, you see? So I, I believe, just like they, they paid me no attention at the time, heard it, digested, still playing what he was doing, I feel little babies. That, that's why I never said to him, a little baby, do 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 da 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 da. Nonsense. I said to the baby, what are you going to do now? You know, not do 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 da 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 da. <laughs> when I say teach your children, I mean that every day. Yes, all right. Every day atmosphere. My great grand came home and she's singing this junk food jingle about the very king and came all the pizza hut and i said you learned that in school also realize that is a job food jingle yeah i said you don't have to start an argument with your teacher but realize and she she says oh no Brandon, no 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 and when i told her again it is a junk food jingle think about it I, I, I agree. She came back and she said that that and other parents not my my great friend. I don't want you running and interfering here and everywhere. But teach her yeah. every day. And you will be surprised she has a better memory than me. Do not undo. You saw those children. I mean, doing work in that factory that you couldn't do. Why? Because they were taught. And these children have a great amount of sense until we start bogging down. <coughs> One thing you take in where you're at, what you're saying is true, but you take those same children know nothing about their Egyptian heritage, but they know about their Arabic heritage. Well, and that's what that. Children can learn. I also intend to teach my. Yeah, but what do you teach? Well, is a, is a, the quality. Greater potential that we have given them in our minds, they have much more. I'm, I'm trying to see, just like these kids can do their job, if you taught them a language, they would learn that too. Yeah, but what I'm saying, what we're saying now, you got an available, even the child has an available amount of time to learn a certain amount of things. What are you going to teach them are the most important to the life? Because I, I'm taking the, the best examples, those youngsters, five to nine, on that uh, um, machine, that contraption. You take those children and they know absolute, they know they had the basics in Quran. They had basics in Arabic literature. But they had no, unless it's an exceptional child, no basic training in ancient Egypt whatsoever and most of it is considered still taboo in Egypt. We got a big fight, I'm in, involved with a big fight, as what is to be included in the elementary school in Egypt, a, a material content for the Egyptian child. And, and Egypt, the, the, for instance, the pyramid is still a taboo. And the Sphinx is still Abu El Hull. They some, the old uh, faithful man. <coughs> No, we don't deal with it. We know that. We, we know, I said, uh, given that, I accept that. Them every day. That's I, why I said, you don't have to wait to go. My great grand, all my grandchildren, I can talk to the great grand when we were younger. My children will listen. They will know about my experience like they've been here. But you can't teach them if you don't know the, so, the material, right? <coughs> the question was, what can we start? I mean, the point is, I'm saying that we can teach our children what we've learned. We cannot wait, not that books shouldn't be made, but we cannot wait for the system to change for us to start dealing with it. You deal with it now. I'm saying children have a great potential, all children. I don't think anybody here is waiting to until a certain book or books come out. Uh, we, but we can't transfer to the child what we're not knowledgeable of. So we must start by educating the parents, the guardians or whatever it is, the adults, so that they could pass it on to the children. We normally, I, 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 the pecking order is generally the parents 
to the children, to the grandchildren, to the great grandchildren. That's the normal pecking order. But what we can't deal with the pecking order if the person to pass on the first information knows not even the source of the information, much less the information. That's what I'm saying. I'm not uh, uh, at all disagreeing with you that children, children are the one to teach. That's why they're the one to learn. And they're susceptible to learn because they are not built up their mind that this is bad and, and that is good. Sure, no question. Yeah. Uh oh, over here. I saw when I was at the museum uh, that most of the the artists' uh, carvings of uh, most of the artists' carvings of uh, most of the pharaohs and queens that I saw always had their left uh, leg extended forward. Like that means like that pharaoh. Said about that pharaoh or queen is said about that person while they were living that the story is about him in life if the two feet are together and the arms are this way they are speaking about him in terms of death it's called the osirians this is the osirian stance god osiris osirian stance and there was a flail in this hand and a crook in this hand uh, this is equal osirian stand but left Right, left, like the army marching, you always start off left. Why left? The hard side. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, oh this, this lady and then you. Oh. Okay. This brother's been waiting. Yes, uh, Dr. Spain, my question goes to uh, I've heard that you mentioned that the Egyptians had the Nile River and the Nile River and the Nile what role does fire have in the religious and spiritual ceremonies, if any? The ancient Egyptians were not fire worshippers. They took recognition of the fire Correct. and its potentials and so forth. So they did pay honor and reverence to fire. Pay honor and reverence to water. They, they worshipped the Nile because, as it said, were it not for the Nile, there'd be no Egypt. Egypt is the gift of the Nile. They, the God, they have the goddess of uh, the Nile. The god goddess uh, is hermaphrodite. Uh, ha it has breasts. Uh, as a matter of fact, happy have one. Happy have two breasts and one penis. Uh, happy took off from Bess. Bess has about eight breasts and one penis. Uh, so the god goddess of the Nile was hermaphrodite, both male and female. And uh, uh, the god of Nile was considered the greatest of the gods, one of the great of the god concept. So uh, there's a god of fire. There's a god of of electricity, thunderbolt. Neat, neat is the god of electricity, thunderbolt. He's shown throwing thunderbolts. That's where the Greeks get it from. In the ceremony, there was fire present. In in the Yes, they have, there were fire rituals in which they burn a fire and so forth because they had to. Look at what fire did. Fire gave them to able to cook food, to smoke iron, to... Uh, uh, in other words, they pay reverence to that which uh, molded their life, which impacted on their life. Uh, for instance, the ancient Egyptians would not cook a bird that they killed without saying some, some reverence over the bird's body because they know if they didn't have the bird, they wouldn't eat. So it's like me, I, 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 I in, in um, Northwest Ethiopia, there is a group called Tri. The Tri people pray at almost anything. And I, when I go among the Tri, I pray to trees. Some, some people say, man, you pray to a tree? I say, yeah, it's good, try. Because the Tri says, they have to cut down a tree for firewood or they're going to make a canoe or what it is, or a boat. They would do make, just accident a statement. And they said to the tree, I am so sorry, I have to cut you down. Last week when I passed here and it was raining, your branches covered me. The other day I came to get a bird and I found it here in your tree. 
and now I must cut you down. And they go through the whole thing and they start to cry. They feel it deeply. And then they cut the tree and the trees start to cry, they weep. And then they, they suck the tears. They go through a whole ritual, they suck the tears of the tree. And then they cut a little more until the tree fall dead. And then they will not let the tree to die a slow death. They go and dig all the roots out. So the tree will have a quick, and then they bury the rest of the tree to a funeral. And Westerners can't understand that, but they don't have a problem of ecology because they live an ecological life. Yeah. yeah yes. Uh, That's the problem, there was never a Joseph here. Huh? That's the problem, there was never a Joseph here. That okay. is, that's Jewish mythology. I want to find out the pharaohs at this time, during these, these years, transitioning years, 471 BC, 471 years before. before. Yeah. Uh, and I'll give you them right there. That's the Persians. They wouldn't be Egyptians. Is long before then. That's 1298 to 1232. Seti is Ramses' father. That would be uh, uh, 1370 to 1298. Seti's father would be Ramses the first. Ramses' father would be Haranhem. Haranhem's father would be uh, Ment uh, Mentuhotep the third. And then you go into the um, the Tutmoseses. Yeah. And it's because I, I just have <laughs> the disappointment is going to be that nobody mm -hmm. living can show you a connection with a single pharaoh and a Joseph because there's no relationship at all except Jewish mythology. Even a rabbi that the Jews that started cannot tie you up with a pharaoh name that we couldn't even go to. The, worse yet, there's no Moses in Egyptian history record. None. There's no record of Abraham here. No record at all. And when you talk about the Jews and the pyramids, the pyramids were all built before the first Jew Abraham was born. That's Jewish mythology. No record at all. No guide you can talk to can show you, carry you any place and show you the information you need. No, no papyri in a museum, no nothing can give you the information. That's what's sad, that's what I'm talking about. Is the sadness is that Jewish propaganda that we were tied to in our birth don't exist. You know, this uh, Pharaoh I asked you about, uh, there, there has to be, what I want to do is relate some scriptures with some Egyptian history. Oh yes, I could, I'll do that, yes, Tihaka. Yeah, Tihaka, for example, Tihaka would be the 27th dynasty, 24th dynasty, 714. Look at the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, where Isaiah is asking the Jewish uh, army to send uh, uh, to, to Ethiopia for help from the Ethiopians. And that would be when the, Persian, the Assyrians with Ashurban Napinal was uh, trying to destroy uh, uh, Israel. But that's modern history, that's just yesterday. You want, you, well that's the Pharaoh, Tehaka is a Pharaoh. Tehaka is at the time when Ethiopia ruled Egypt. 
See, the pharaohs are different time. You got fair, different pharaohs. Uh, we, we have to be sharp. There was a time when foreign people came and conquered Europe and, I mean, Egypt and decided they're going to be the pharaoh. For instance, the Hyksos. Then a time when the, the Assyrians came, conquered, and they said they're the pharaohs. A time when the Persians conquered, they said they're the pharaohs. The Greek conquered in, in that order, and they said the pharaohs. And then the Romans being the last, conquered, and they said they're the pharaohs. So I'm saying to you is that the time that you're relating your biblical chronology is a myth in some cases. It is a bunch of lies in some cases. Don't exist. It's Hebrew mythology. And then there's a lot of truth. What we, what we get caught up in is every T, every dot, every I is the word of God. No. It's the word of man. Man wrote it. Uh, when you say King James Version, it is Sir Francis Bacon and all those other men who wrote for James wrote it. And you can't cut it. If you take the Hebrew fellows that they are, they are Sanhedrin writing in 700 BC, they're the ones that write a story with the beginning. What did the Jews? Uh, good evening, and what I uh, should like to speak to you about is entitled The African Origin of Civilization. I know the subject title may be somewhat new to you, uh, to most of you at least, to speak of the African Origin of Civilization almost sound impossible based upon the type of education we have had thus far in the public school system or the type of information we gather at uh, our churches, uh, at our various places where we communicate with each other and definitely in the news media. Nevertheless, I still will keep the title of my lecture to you. And it will be in two parts. First is my delivery, and the second question and answer period. I like to deal, number one, with the subject of civilization. In the first place, I detest the term civilization because it presupposes that there are people who are civilized and people who are uncivilized, and there is no such thing. There are people whose culture differ to others, but as far as being civilized and uncivilized, there is no such thing. If I came from a place, and I'm being ridiculous with this, and in my culture we eat each other, as some say, there's nothing wrong with that. We eat each other. That's what we like to do. That's our culture. Because you don't eat. You're in a culture that don't eat each other. Doesn't make you civilized and make me uncivilized. It just means that you don't like to eat each other. So I, I was ridiculous there just to show you that one person's culture doesn't invalidate another's. However, when I say the African origin of civilization, I was not being silly. I mean that, and let's prove it. Most of you come from a background where you were taught and believe in Adam and Eve. Long, thousands of years before the concept of Adam and Eve was enunciated by the Hebrews, what you call the Jews, thousands of years, the Africans along the Nile had concepts of God when there was no Abraham, no Allah, no Jesus, no Jehovah mentioned anywhere. We can go back to the beginning of the first established concept of a God. The Africans along the Nile taught of a God by the name of Ptah. P-T-A-H. Also, the concept of God Osiris. Well, Osiris really 
is a Greek word. The name the Africans used was Asaru or Asar. They also spoke of a one and only God long before Abraham. This God was spoken about his name called Aten, A-T-E-N, the one and only true God. It was much later that Moses is equally an African, born in Egypt. And let us check back a little. If you can recall your map of the world mentally, you would find that Egypt is in Africa. At least it was two weeks ago when I left it. Uh, it, it you never could tell. It must have gone to this place called the Middle East these days. But it, nevertheless, Egypt is the northeasternmost part of the continent of Africa. The Africans along the Nile, not only in Egypt, from Uganda all the way down to Egypt, began their concept of civilization thousands of years before there was a place called Greece, or Pyrrhus, as it was originally called, and thousands more before a place called Etrusca, which later became Rome. Thus, I know it would make it difficult for you to conceive of this by virtue of your own training and background. Well, let us examine the facts, and these facts are available in artifacts as well as historical documents. If you go with me, travel with me along the Nile, you will have an excursion that will bring you into the facts. First of all, in order for you to read a book, you must understand writing and primarily coming from an alphabet. When the Africans along the Nile were writing in what you call in Western terms hieroglyph, in the correct term, medunecha. Medunecha is what the Greek call hieroglyphs. And remind you again, there is no Greece until 833 when Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Africans along the Nile had already in 10,000 BC, 10, I'm, I refresh your mind about that, in 10,000 BC, the Africans made a calendar called the stellar calendar based upon the movement of the stars and moons around this planet, the planet Earth. There was no Adam and Eve yet mentioned because there was no Jew to start a book called the Old Testament or Holy Torah. Thus, no Genesis yet. The Africans at a place, if you went to Egypt in, tonight or tomorrow with me, you will arrive, arrive the next day, and I can take you to a place called Esna, the temple of Kunum at Esna. And in that temple on the wall, you would see God Kunum making man on his potter's wheel out of clay. The Jews copied that and presented it, and you believe that that was the first time man ever conceived of the concept of making man from clay. And you believe that the Jews had something to it. Not at all. The Jews copied it from the Africans when they allegedly were in Egypt. Let's go farther. Those same Africans revised their calendar in 10,000 B.C. In 4100 B.C., instead of the stellar calendar, they started another calendar called the solar calendar, based upon the earth in relationship to the sun. That calendar set the basis of the present calendar you use. It had 400, 365 and one quarter day, corrected each seventh year, there were 13 months to the year, 30 days for each for 12 months, and one month of five days. The Ethiopian government still have the, th the 12 months of 30 and the one mo uh, month of five days. 
In Egypt, the farmers use the same 13-month calendar. Again, I must remind you, there isn't a single Jew in the world yet. Abraham the first isn't born. He isn't going to be born until the 13th dynastic period. And I know it's hard for you to conceive of a time when people had religions and there were no Christianity, there was no Judaism, and there was no Islam yet. They came way later, copied from the Africans. These Africans that I'm talking about established the basis of their religion and certain moral principles. The moral principles are called the 42 admonitions of Goddess Ma'at. The Hebrews adopted this, 10 out of these 42, and called them the Ten Commandments and attributed them to an Egyptian, an African of Egypt, of Egypt they called Moses. But stop and think, where did the Jews get the information? You do not have a single Jew in the world who wrote anything up and this period, until this period of time. But all along the Nile, you have what is called the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Papyrus of Ani, the Papyrus of Hunefa, and various papyrus, the word papyrus meaning paper. Along the Nile, you also have the Africans who had produced not only these moral concepts, and let me repeat one or two for you, Hail Ma'at. Ma'at was the goddess of justice. The Supreme Court of the United States copied, during the time of Washington and others, they copied the symbol of the Africans of Egypt and Ethiopia, the symbol of justice, the lady holding a scale on each level. Not like your Supreme Court, however. Your Supreme Court have one scale up and one scale down. That's not justice. That is just this. <laughs> justice is when both scales are level. They have placed in the woman's hand a sword. The Africans did not place a hand. Now, this woman is called Hathor. In your Judeo-Christian Bible, Islamic Bible, she is mentioned at the golden calf. The writers in your Bible willfully distorted the fact and failed to say it is not the golden calf she was called. It was a symbol of the golden calf, but she was called Ma uh, Hathor. If you go to Egypt, you will go to a place called Dendera, and you will see the temple of goddess Hathor there. Furthermore, you have been taught in your educational system that the Greeks, or a particular Greek by the name of Hippocrates, gave to the world medicine, and he's called the father of medicine. That shouldn't surprise you, because Betty Goldman is called the father of swing, although he went to Lionel Hampton, Conk Basie, and others to learn swing. He became the father of swing. Now, if you control the printing press, you could make yourself the father of anything. You could call yourself the father of the moon. You could write anything you want. Point is, let us prove it. We don't have Hippocrates until 333 before the common era. You, you may call it before the Christian era, or BC as you may say. Hippocrates is shown coming to Egypt to receive his education in medicine and other things, and that was in 33. B.C. Inhotep, an African by the name of Imhotep, whom the Greeks call Escalapius, died 258, uh, 2058 years before the birth of Hippocrates. He was such a great physician that Hippocrates himself and other Greeks call him the god of medicine. Now, if an Inhotep was not only a physician, but he was the Grand Vizier. He was the, build, the man who built the first stone building in human history. The man who built the step pyramid, designed it, of course, and built it. He was the, 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 a multi-genius. 
He is the man that also give you the little quip, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Yet in your education, you are taught that Michelangelo was the first multi-genius. Michelangelo is only the 16th century of the common era. In Hotep lived more than 3,000 years before Michelangelo. It just goes to show you the type of education. The other day I was reading where um, Martin Luther King went to speak with Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi in India to study nonviolence. And that G Gandhi was the first to project nonviolence. That's nonsense. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, living in South Africa, yes, he worked for the British Kong. He represented the British Kong while he lived in South Africa, left South Africa because he was forced to ride on a train with Africans. And he left and then went to India and suddenly became a nationalist. He was a racist. Now, like, we can get the facts or we don't deal with it. Because King himself did not know. But Akhenaten had not only teach nonviolence more than 1,700 years before um, Gandhi was born, but Akhenaten took the throne of Egypt. He brought his cousin Simenkari to rule on the throne with him. This is the 18th dynasty. He got rid of the army to practice nonviolence. Akhenaten, the same Akhenaten, taught about a one and only true God thousands of years before Gandhi and hundreds before Moses. We got to go back again to the records. I know this is startling a number of you because you haven't heard any of this, or at least you must have just started to hear some of this. That is why this furor now that they're having about whether or not uh, Jesse Jackson started to call people African-American. That's another piece of nonsense. Long, hundreds of years before the birth of Jesse Jackson, the, the name African-Americans were used, not only African-Americans, but the Africans who came here called themselves Africans. You got as the best memory a church within your midst called the African Methodist Episcopal Church. The first Baptist church was called the African Baptist Church. African people refer to themselves as Africans. Africans who educated Europeans, such as the Moors in Spain. Uh, uh, well, you may know it as Los Moros de España. The Moors in Spain built Europe's first university, taught the Europeans the concept of a university, the University of uh, Granada and the University of Alhada. All of them preceded any other university in all of Europe. The Moors went into Spain in 711 and did not lose power in Spain until 1485, that was a period of uh, 774 years that Africans ruled that section of uh, Europe. The Africans went into what was called Pyrrhus, now today Greece, and built Pyrrhus' first center of learning called Delphi, the lodge at Delphi. From Plato, I'm sorry, go earlier, from Homer, down to Aristotle, including Thales, to Socrates. All of them came to Egypt, Egypt and Nubia, or Egypt, Nubia, and Ethiopia to receive their education. Pythagoras, for example, said that when he came to receive his education on the Nile, he had to follow the custom of giving a silver gob goblet before he was circumcised and allowed to, pr to, to study. Not one of them completed the story. For those of you who are Christians and born again or not, 
you may think that it is something exceedingly uh, new. But you don't forget that long before this concept of the Virgin Mary, the African, and you may go to the temple of uh, Setaiwan at a place called Abydos, in, again in Egypt, and you will see in the wall cut into the stone, not only the story in writing, but the pictures of the Immaculate Conception of Isis. The Roman Catholic has a, a prayer that is a copy from this. Holy Isis, Mother of Horus, blessed is the fruit of your womb. The Catholic adopted it as Holy Mary, Mother of God Jesus, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You got to remember that this came from Egypt to Greece and from Greece to Rome as the Herculaneum worship of Isis. You may go into the same temple and see the resurrection scene. In those resurrection scene, and it had nothing to do with a woman having her hymen and getting pregnant. That's ridiculous. You are now studying biology and you know that is impossible. The Africans along the Nile stated that a woman who became pregnant and by her last menstrual period she had not cohabit but with but one man she definitely knew for whom she was pregnant had an immaculate conception. That was the way it was said until the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 332. It is then that the Greeks and others introduced the concept of having a hymen and being pregnant, and that is the Immaculate Conception. It was not said until 332. I know these things are difficult, and probably you're even angry, but your anger doesn't change facts. You must do the research. You must learn, you must read other books, such as I know that you have read the Torah, or the Old Testament and the New Testament, they aren't the first religious books. Man, there's the Bagida, the Hindus have. There is the Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie and the Pyramid text, the Coffin text, the Osiron drama, and all such works. Thousands of years older than your Old Testament or New Testament or Koran. Thousands of years older. By Africans, not only your Christian Bible taught that Jesus was born in a cave in Ethiopia long before they changed that at the Nicene Conference to a manger in Bethlehem. And for many of you who are going to have the problem when you go to heaven and find that Jesus is black, I know you're going to have a lot of problem because in your church you see your white Jesus and I know if you went to your church in the morning and saw a, 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 a black Jesus, you're going to faint, more than faint. Some of you are going to die because you're not going to the heaven with no black God up there. You, you know that. You, you're accustomed to saying nigga and shit. And you know you, you say it all the time. So I, I, not, I don't use the term. It's con the word is contemptible. I can't stand people who use the term. I'm just repeating what you say. But then you have to ask the Pope in Rome, why is it that he goes back to Poland to worship at the feet of the black Madonna and child? Why is the black Madonna and child all over the Spanish-speaking countries? Why is it so? Why is it that the black Madonna icons are all over Russia? Because what you have gotten is Christianity of modern times. Don't forget that Christianity started in Egypt with Pantheus and Boethius, then went to Greece, and from Greece to Rome. I think many of us can quote Bible scripture, but we don't know Bible history. The African that I am talking about now gave you mathematics. You can't name me one figure, one number was developed or given to the world in Europe. You can't name one. The one to the nine came out of the Nile Valley, and the zero or the O came from the Arabs and the Indians. 
None of these came from Europe. You can't name me one alphabet in which Europe produced. Yet hieroglyph and writing came from the Nile Valley Africans. And these are the things that we have to understand. If we understand these things, and it's going to be difficult or some of you can't deal with it, because it is difficult for us to understand ourselves. And some people get to dislike the fact to hear that they did something good. You know, I could train you to hate yourself. Yeah? That when you look in the mirror, you're mad. You're mad that you look like your mama. Yeah. Or you're mad that you look like your father. Because what you have been told by your father and Tarzan and Jane and all that have sunk into your psyche. And anything that you hear good about yourself, that's why the nigga in shit come from. You should, I hear the young people on the subway. Man, you saw the game last night, that white boy, he threw the ball and the nigga, he catch the ball and the nigga throw back the ball and the white boy. So one is a white man and the other one is a nigga. I want to know what is a nigga. Maybe you can tell me because I'm trying to find one. And two things I'm trying to find, a nigga and a negro. I haven't met one yet. If I did, please help me. We have to be careful then of what we are talking about in terms of ourselves. Today, when we are arguing the point of African-American, and some of you are still holding to colored, what color should I color you colored? Huh? Rainbow? <laughs> Jesse said it's a rainbow coalition. I don't see the black in the rainbow spectrum. And some of you complaining every night there was a blackout. There have never been a blackout. Black have always been black. If you turn off the light, it's black. Don't put no light. It's going to be black tomorrow. It's going to be black for the next 10,000 years. You have to put a light so it's never black out. It's light out. <laughs> Another thing you said, it's a bad day. It's a black day. The president issued a white paper. That's a good paper. You understand? Uh, it, don't put a black mark on my record. His child is the black sheep of the family. If you black, your mama black, and your father black, what kind of sheep you are but a black sheep? Huh? But to you, anything that's bad is black. And anything, I was listening to a song the other day, and they were singing it in a Baptist church. The AME has the same song, so don't feel good about it. Lord, make me whiter than snow. Wash me in the blood. Of, no, is this no nonsense? You're jet black. Wash you in the blood, in red stuff. <laughs> and you'll be whiter than snow. No, you know, you're sad. you got a sad case. Huh? But it's all men. No time you said, wash me and I'll be blacker than charcoal. You can't say that. And that's what I'm trying to say. It is our, they have already damaged us so badly that we cannot see ourselves as being positive. We have, and uh, the other day, there's another one, the lady was saying that when she go to heaven, she's going to be wrong, the white altar of the Lord. I said, why white altar? But it has to be white to be good. And all of us, to be sure that we can't, I remember when I was a youngster, the ladies used to lie down with two tons of pun, tons, uh, pumps cold cream and all kind of whitener and lightener, and they had a headrest, and they lay like that and got a crunk neck, neck in the morning trying to get lighter, skin lightening cream. And I suggested that we get some skin blackening cream. I almost got killed for, for suggesting that. But one has, why is it? Why is it the problem? They're calling up now and uh, contesting the question of being called African-American. Some people want to go back to be called colored. And when Frederick Douglass started that concept of being colored, it was because Lincoln had given him a beat-up woman in Washington who was already played out to be his new wife. 
And Douglas took this wife, this white, white woman, his black wife had died. And then he came to uh, Philadelphia to protest at the colonization meeting that he doesn't want to be called black anymore. He doesn't want to be called an African. He said, call me colored. I have a white mother and a, bl I'm, uh, and a black father. Thus, I am colored. Henry Highland Garnett asked him, Mr. Douglas, do you realize that the mule never brag about his father? You know why? Because his father is a jackass. And you are a jackass, sir. It, you're trying to tell me that in this culture in which you are, that that matters. And Douglas was the one that started the use of the term colored. The Portuguese was the one that started the use of the word Negro in the 16th century. They even took a part of what was ancient Ghana and called it Negro land. So you could look at some of the ancient map and see Negro land. But the Portuguese knew there was no such place because the Africans had gone into Portugal, the Moors, and established Portugal's uh, educational system before the Moors went into to, uh, Spain and Portugal. They had gone in there with an, another title. They went in there as Carthaginians. During the time of Hamilcar Barker, his son Hasdrubal Barker, and Hannibal Barker. Hannibal Barker is the man that is still studying at West Point. They were the first man to begin what was called mechanized army uh, um, warfare, not using uh, uh, cars and trucks, but using the elephant as a ramrod with his troop that's been, that's been studied, as I said, at West Point to this date. We have to understand again that in architecture, go to Egypt. You saw, they show you arches that are called Gothic arch, Roman arch. There is no such thing. Long before there was a building anywhere in Greece and Rome, and I suggest that you go to Rome and see the Colosseum, Go to uh, Greece, outside of Athens, and see the Pantheon, and then go to the to, to the, to the the Temple of Hatshepsut at Deir uh, el Bari at the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, and see where they copy it. Go to the to the, the Temple of uh, Setaiwan at Abydos and see where they copied this, and then go to Karnak and see where the Romans copied the, 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 the design for the Colosseum. And then you can go to Washington, D.C. and see how they copy that. Not only that, the National Memorial, Washington Memorial in, in Washington, D.C. is nothing but a major penis. Yes? When you go to Egypt, you will find that that is a copy of the obelisk. And the obelisk is based upon a, myth, a, a part of the myth, mythological story of the murder of the murder of Osiris by his brother Setiphon. See, don't even know that. You tell me that Adam and Cain killed Abel the first time a man ever killed another one killed his brother. Nonsense. Thousands of years before that story, the African had a story of Osiris being killed by his brother Setiphon. His nephew Heru revenged the killing of his uncle and ki uh, his father and killed his uncle, said Typhon. That is the reason that you see and your dollar bill, the ever seen eye of Horus, in the war against his father, he lost his left eye. You call it the evil eye. It had nothing to do with evil eye. And you see it on the, uh, embossed on the pyramid. With the sun bus, God Ra, the symbol of God Ra around it. But you never ask. You see an American dollar. America has no pyramids. Huh? But you never ask, where did this come from? George Washington and others who were Masons adopted these symbols from Egypt. The only one in the cabinet who was not a Mason in Washington cabinet was Benjamin Franklin because he was a Quaker. And there was an African in the cabinet, don't forget, a man born 
in a place called Nevis. His mother was an African as far as the Englishman. I know you, you wasn't in. You go to go, go up on the hill at 151st Street. But just below Convent Avenue, it's, uh, it's called um, Hamilton, uh, Hamilton Grace. That's the answer. Alexander Hamilton was born in Nevis in the West Indies of an African mother and an English father. Grew up in St. Croix in the children home, the home where the white fathers used to send, uh, the rich white plantation owners used to send their children with black women to be educated because they didn't want to keep them with their wives, their white wives. They were called Bokras, the Bokra. So we have to know our history and know it well in order to regain our dignity. One of the things that we are doing, we are asking European America to teach us African history. You're crazy. You got to do that yourself. American education has never failed. It has never been better. It is the best education in America. It was designed by Europeans when it started and is still designed by Europeans. This school, Cornell University where I retired, Harvard, is designed for Europeans, not for Africans, in spite of the fact that each and every institution in Europe is based upon an African university. It was the University of Genet, D-J-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, in ancient Ghana, that was the model for the University of Salamanca, the first university in all of Europe built by the Moors. It was the Moors under Tariq, who went in to Spain, took over a place called Monscal. His men changed the name to Gibraltariq, which they now call Gibraltar, and carry the post Renaissance into Europe. Even today, the patron saint of Germany is still Maurice Aragon, a Nigerian, originally from Nigeria. Cletus Bactria and all of them gave Greece the concept of sword fighting. But all of this, we nothing of it, uh, take your history 101. Take your textbooks that you're studying. Have you seen any of this there? Take your textbooks and ask in there. You're going to the moon you, 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 with all the apparatus. Could you go to the moon without the basic mathematics? No, you can't. Most of you are women and involved with the struggle that's going on now about birth control and, and uh, uh, right to life and all this kind of stuff. Of course, uh, people who want right to life, they don't want a baby to die now, that the mother to abort the child. But all those people who have a right to life, they also, for capital punishment, they said, let the child born now, and we kill him later. <laughs> See, I, I, I like to tell it, I don't care where I am, and the truth is the truth. But then, we as a people never had to worry about it, because the Ebers Papyrus talks about Planned Parenthood, that the African woman, even during the time of Hatshepsut, that's 1550 BC, queen, the only woman who ruled as a king and a queen simultaneously. Don't get her wrong, she was not a lesbian. She had two children and enjoyed the sex act. She had her scientists to make a suppository to stop pregnancy. It's called Ebers Papyrus. It calls for the shrub of Acacia with honey, which break down into lactic acid that trap the sperms. Park Davis, Monsanto, and a number of Western pharmaceutical companies, they go around the world, found this formula, check it out, and that's how you got autogynal jelly, which is used in diaphragm today to trap the sperms. But are they blasting it on the radio saying where they got it from? Huh? You hear about Jonas Sack, what he did, but you, do you hear anything about Charles Drew? 
You hear about uh, a heart, heart transplant, but do, do you hear anything about the brother there uh, that performed the, the first open heart surgery in his office? Uh, a doctor, um, excuse me for this one, uh, from Chicago, but I will come back and I, I'll get the name for you. None of it, none of it. You got the electric light. And when you come in and you pull a switch, it was years and years and years that they dealt with the truth of who created the filament. The man that made the bulb, that's nothing. It is the filament that makes the light. Latimer, they didn't give any credit to Latimer who worked in the office for Thomas Edison. No more than they give credit to Grand Granville T. But General Motors Company existed for over 20 years using the patents of Granville T. Woods. Never given a dime to his estate. They had to go to the federal court before General Motors start paying the proper dividend for pilfering, stealing the pattern of Granville T. Woods and, so, and, and using them. We could go on with Says and Roebuck. And many of you have bought many shoes and different things from Says and Roebuck and National Bella Hess and so forth and had no concept that one of the partner was an African that started Says and uh, Roebuck. Now, there's a new thing. I just laughed like hell the other day. And they said that Ben Ward, for the second time, is going to make an apology to the Latin community. Why? Why did Ben Ward have to make an apology? Because, because Ben Ward doesn't know. He make an apology to me? My mother's a Puerto Rican. My mother's Cari uh, from Fajalo. So Caridor or something like Huh? Then is he making, you see, that's another thing, because you call yourself so many crazy names that you don't know what. I, uh, that, uh, the other day I was saying, I, uh, I saw a Latino and a Puerto Rican and a black man and an African American going down the street. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> You're mixing up the color, you see. You, if you said, I saw an African-American, a Puerto Rican, a Jamaican, that's right, because you're talking about people identified by land. But if you say, I saw a Latino, that's a linguistic term. Latin, a person with Latin background, linguistic term. And then and one was black. You, you, you were using color one place, language the next place, and land. People are identified by land. An African is from Africa. You know, uh, if, if I said, when, when the first, you, if you see a rabbit, female rabbit, of course, climb into an oven, cool oven. The next day you see the rabbit come out, the little ones look like the rabbit. You don't have a mama, the rabbit got biscuit because it's coming out of the oven. She got rabbits. When you see an African woman come to the United States and she get young ones, she don't get Negroes and Jigaboos and Chigaboos, <laughs> she get Africans. And these are the things that we, some of you are scared, some of, if you're from Puerto Rico, you're scared to wear loud colors because Europeans don't wear loud colors. You don't want to eat cuchifrito and rice and beans because the, because the Europeans don't eat rice and beans. And you don't want to play loud music because the Europeans don't, they don't play loud because they don't sound right. They, 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 so, and if you're from the state, you don't eat hagma and colored green and chitlin. You don't do that. Because the European don't eat. You don't cook your food with grease and all those things because the European don't. That's why the food tastes like nothing. You, 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 got to, you got to qualify everything that somebody else do and destroy what is your culture. Because you're ashamed of your identity. And the reason you're ashamed of it is because you don't know it. But when you know it, you walk 10 feet tall. Like Ossie Davis said about Malcolm, the shining prince, you see, who walked 10 feet tall. They got to remind you that you were this and yesterday, 
But don't forget, the scum of Europe came here. Huh? The good Europeans didn't come to America. The whole state of Georgia was a penal colony. Here is where the British and the French and all sent their scums. And the scums became the gentlemen. Paul Revere was a rum runner. He used to run from the revenue officers, the British officers. All of them were scums. George Washington was a dog. And don't ever hurt you. That's the father of your country. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. You say, what is this man talking about? If Hitler was bad, what did Washington do that Hitler didn't do? You know, Jabez Jefferson, do you call him a gentleman? Thomas Jefferson said, all men are created equally. The day he died, he had slaves. He left slaves. As a matter of fact, he went down the yard and made some slaves with some African women. Are you going to say that Jefferson was a good man? I remember when the NWC used to, used to have a dressed up young people with starch and iron, white clothes, going to the Jefferson Memorial and the Lincoln Memorial. And I said, why don't we get sense enough and carry some bombs? <laughs> and blow the damn things out the, out the world. But no, you mad with me. How could you be mad with me? How could you like these slave masters but conde condemn Hitler? How? Is it when you treat an African bad as a slave, it is good? But when anybody else are treating it the same way, it's bad. When the Gaul, when the Gaul was running all the way from the Germans, he's going to come back with all the Africans helping him to get back to France. How come as soon as he got back to France, he didn't let the colonies go? Isn't it true? Are you saying that Mussolini was bad, was good when he killed Ethiopians, gassed them? That Hitler was, was good when he killed the Senegalese over there, but he was bad when he did it to Europeans? Then we have to get a, a re-examination of things. And it all goes back. It all goes back to of the value of how we see ourselves. It goes back to when we look in the mirror. I, I always make sure I, I carry a little mirror with me in my pocket because I want to look at the best thing in the world. Uh, no, no, and again, yeah, that's the way I feel. You see, when I, when I saw, see a picture of me, I see a picture of my mother and father simultaneously. And I, and I know, heaven knows that woman was something. I, I talk to my moms. Uh, so that's why daddy went after her. I don't blame the, 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 the boy. The brother had very good reason to run after the sister. But that's the way I look. The, I, I look at myself as what's happening. I am the first and last thing that ever happened. You understand? That's why you'll never see me with drugs, because I am too cool to use drugs. I mean, I can't, I can't disturb. You see, I can't disturb this precious golden body. See, it, it, Mama and Daddy took too much patience to make me. I'm not, I wasn't one of those flash at the moment. <laughs> They took time to create, they had to take time to create a precious item like me. You got to see, why? I know my history. I know where I came from. I know what I did in this world. Today, you see me. You know, you see a man in the, or a woman in the street and you say, hey. You see me today, you might not know what I was yesterday. So instead of calling me by my name or asking me, you call me, hey, you. But hey, you have a background. I have a background. And then people say, well, don't tell me what, what I was. Tell me what I am. Then I ask you, then don't celebrate your birthday. Huh? Why celebrate your birthday every year if you don't want to hear what happened way back there? Don't carry a birth certificate. Don't celebrate the 4th of July, because you ain't got nothing to celebrate on the 4th of July. If you know your history, you would moan and pray and beg the heavens to not to remember the 4th of July. Because when the Europeans here got freed from England, they did not free you. 
1776, and yet you are there celebrating the bicentennial. Yeah. Hey. hey, you were running up and down. We got a bicentennial, 200 years of freedom. What the hell are you talking about? You're not free now. 1865, a guy named Lincoln, one of the biggest liars that ever lived, promised you 50 acres and a mule. You haven't got the mule's tail and an acre. And you're talking. That's why they're afraid. The New York Times writing all kind of articles about the African American. Why they want to call themselves that? You know why? When you call yourself African American, the next step is to call yourself African alone. And when you do that, you're going to say, I want reparations. That's why they're fighting again, because the Japanese got reparations for being locked up in World War II. The Jews got reparations from Germany. Everybody got reparations. We ain't got a penny yet. All because our so-called intellectuals feel we are too good to ask, to, to demand, not ask to demand reparations. But I'm going to see that the Langner bill will be rec uh, revived, that La Senator Langner and Adam Powell had presented to the Congress for reparations for every African living in these United States. Because we don't forget, and I'm winding down, See how not knowing history, what it does for us. A few years ago, there was some people dying off the coast of Florida in boats. There were some people dying in the Pacific. You were crying for those dying in the Pacific. You call them the boat people. But you didn't shed a tear of one Haitian dying because you don't know that the first Africans brought to the Western Hemisphere were brought from Spain to Haiti. Your ancestors are Haitian. You didn't come straight from Africa here. You came from Africa to Spain. And when the Africans lost power in 1485 in Spain, 4,000 of them were brought from Haiti from Spain to the Caribbean, called to Haiti, then to Cuba, then to Jamaica, because Jamaica was still under Spanish rule. And then to the Puerto Rico and the other islands. It was in uh, uh, 1501 that they were brought to the Caribbean. It was not until 1619 that the first were brought from an island of Barbados to Virginia. The one intended it when they were going to, 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 to England, but bad weather forced them into Virginia. And that was the first. And they didn't come as slaves. They came as indent, they were made indented workers. One was a doctor, two were architects. It was 13 years later that they imposed slavery and the Africans who came here. And there were Africans who came here long before the Europeans. Look at Estebanico, little Esteban that came with Cortez. Esteban was in New Mexico before, long before any uh, European arrived there with going west and the covered wagon to the point that the Aztec and others made him one of the great chiefs or oh, great head of state is nonsense but chief, that's a European name. It was right here. The war against the Seminoles was fight because an American white captain wanted to mess with the daughter of the chief of the, 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 the head of the Seminole Nation, who had married to an African, because an African ran away from the European. Many of them were given protection by the indigenous people that called Indians. Hmm? You go out to Long Island and, and look at the Indians there. You can't tell the difference to the people in here. That you all went so much with the Indian that the Indian looked at like you now. <laughs> so when they, you said, well, I got Cherokee background. Big deal. Everybody got some of the Indian. Someone said you run away from the Indian. Everybody, they no big deal to say, I got Cherokee. Okay, so do what? You don't see my mother that. Big deal. But we got to get it together. 
Garvey came and tried to get you to get it together. Malcolm tried to get you. King tried to get you together. Du Bois tried to get you together. Uh, Harriet Tubman tried to get you together. So Jonah Truth, uh, Denmark Vesey, Natona, everybody tried to get you together. But you won't get together for nothing. Hmm? We stay here and arguing. Who come from Little Island? Who come from Big Island? Who come from the right uh, state? Who come from the wrong state? Who eat agma? Who don't eat agma? Who eat vegetables? Who eat crab meat? All kind of junk. Hey, well, who pray to the right, to the left, to the Who pray to Jesus? Who pray to Muhammad? The crackers don't care which one of them you pray to. Right. They don't care what you eat. You're still on the list. A and C. They don't care if you speak Spanish. Portuguese, Dutch, French, doesn't matter. He got a spot for you. And it sure ain't pretty. He don't care if you got PhD or no D at all. When he hanging black folks, he hanging the D's too. And we hang them first because you know the D's supposed to be helping those who don't have the D's to free themselves. And that's why I told my woman, I, I, yeah, I got a wife. It's, <laughs> it's, it's my, my woman. See, I ain't going to talk no nonsense about Ms. and uh, a, a cheap person. What you talking about, cheap person? A cheap woman and a cheap man. Nobody's going to tell me the, uh, to, to talk stupid. Because Gloria Steiner can't find a man, she's going to tell me that I got to talk. <laughs> Hell, the way she look, I wouldn't bother with her either. <laughs> no, all these kind of... Then I, you, you, you lock up in all this nonsense. Somebody tell me, you're a senior citizen. How the hell are going to be a senior citizen? I was never a junior one. <laughs> I am an old man. <laughs> a 72-year old man. And I'm going to get older. And if you don't like the fact that I all later for you, I don't care about you. You think I'm going to scared to tell you I'm 70, 70 going at 90? You think I'm afraid that you don't like the fact that I am that? I like the fact because if I wasn't, I'd be dead. Huh? And I'm in no hurry to go see no God. The devil and God will have to come and take me because I ain't going voluntarily. And I'm not going voluntarily. That's it. I'm not foolish. I don't know nothing more than heaven, heaven or the hell. I know here, and I don't want to leave none of you women. You tell me, I'm ready to go. If you're so ready, drink some arsenic. You're ready to go. I am not ready. I'm not preparing to leave this world. Your sisters look too good for me to be going off. Just deal with it. I mean, let's be rational. Uh, let's deal with life, and then uh, brothers wouldn't be good. If we know and recognize ourselves, then sisters could tell the brother, right now sister said to the brother, I ain't seen my period. 22 years later, she waiting to hear the brother respond. <laughs> From the time she said that, he disappeared like the invisible man. Yeah. <laughs> Then one day, 22 years, years later, he said, we're our child. <laughs> huh? Sister can't even uh, 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 walk in the street with clothes, much less short dress. The brother's raping her and eyeballs. I, you rape her with his eyeballs and when you catch her, you know what happened. Uh -huh. Instead of the sisters running to the brother when she see him glad, she knows she's protected, she got to run the hell from him. Because... <laughs> He, hasn't, he doesn't know his history. He doesn't know the quality of the culture that he came from. There was a time when the sister ran to the brother. Huh? She knew that when, when, when the lion was coming, she could run to the brother. When anything come in danger, she could run to the brother. Now she see him. He's speaking Spanish, he's scared. He's speaking English, he's scared. He come from Puerto Rico, Cuba. He come from Harlem, he come from Jersey. She's scared. Because the reputation, he will re re rape a flea if it's female. Why? Because he has lost his consciousness. 
he telling his sister, bitch, get your black ass here. <laughs> yeah, he hollers in the street, I put my foot in you. Hmm? That's his behavior. He's lost that faith, that man who drew pictures, go to the temple, draw pictures of the, of the woman, the African woman and steal it. He showed her giving birth to the son. Go in the temples at uh, Dendera, and you see how that man drew when he, when he had his mind together, when he respected his woman. And that's what happened. You, that's, what, that's what happened by the loss of history. We lost our culture. We lost our respect. Huh? Brothers walking around with brand new Mercedes Benz. Got five children out there, don't know if the child is. Huh? You tell me? You ask me, how are you going to do it? You put the young sisters up in parade. Little sisters, 14, 15, you got them on top of the TV, walking across the stage. You ain't got one brother. Line up walking across the stage. They get it with a finger? Huh? You mothers haven't tell your son. You haven't one day sat down and said to your son, this is your sister. I too am a woman. You don't want a man to do this to your sister or your mama. Huh? You didn't tell your son. When you hear he got three girls knocked up pregnant, you say, my son is strong. <laughs> but your daughter get knocked up and you say, bitch, yeah. poor, slut. Yeah. Right. You never call your son any kind of name like that because you don't teach him. You don't teach him his responsibility to the sister. You don't have to worry about the teenage pregnancy. If you teach that young boy, you mothers, teach your son. You fathers, talk to your daughters. And let them know the responsibility. Brothers go and get the sisters pregnant on campus and think that he has a right to continue education, but she doesn't. Uh-uh. No, no, no child of mine, no my male child of mine get a girl pregnant. I told them, don't sleep with what you can't walk with. If you can't, if you can't marry her, don't sleep with her. Huh? Our culture, these are the ways. Brothers are talking now about polygamy, having three wives. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with polygamy if you're going to follow the rules of polygamy. Three wives, three houses. And each house, if one house got a Cadillac, all houses got Cadillac. If, if one house, if one house got a license, and then marriage is not a jive. Every wife must have a license. Each wife must be a wife, not a wife and a girlfriend. Huh? Not one that you take out two o'clock in the night, get her back before five, before the, before the, the rooster crow. No, a wife is a wife. That, uh, in, in Africa, when you got three wives or four wives, each of them are wives. And the community accept them. And no nonsense but you on the corner selling candle and incense and perfume. And she walking and bringing welfare check? And you talking about you got a wife? No, you're not a polygamist. That isn't, that isn't polygamy. That's promiscuity. And you jive in the sister telling her, but we married. We got our own spiritual way. You're a damn liar. <laughs> you just getting a piece free. I'm going to stop now because... The reason, then you could see, the reason for knowing yourself, the reason for knowing your culture is not just to say, I know it, but it must change you. It must make a better you. When you know what you have done, how you have suffered, how you have lived, what you have done for the world, it should make you live a better life. Like I said, this is my third wife. I, I, I killed two already. I, 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 I was so sweet they, they decided this is heaven, I gotta go. And, and they were, I'm working at this one for the last 40 years. This one won't go yet. She's trying to kill me. And, uh, uh, but, but you see, if this wife die in the morning, I am going to get married in 30 days. What I want to be living in a house with no sister. Me? No, it's too beautiful. Sisters, like the brother said, I can't find a good wife. I said, were you looking at the whole house? <laughs> you must be looking at the whole house. 
You mean tell me all these beautiful good sisters, you can't find one? What happened to your eyes? All your senses. He can't find one because he haven't found himself. He doesn't have trust because he doesn't know the quality of the one. And last, I'm going to finish with this. He, didn't, he doesn't know that it is that sister that take the guts from a pig with all, let me use it, with all the shit in it. I got to use it the way it's said down home. It said Jesus spoke the language of the people. I'm speaking the language of the people. And take a stick, push all that shit out of it. Hot water and lemon. Clean it. Tenderize it. Give it taste to give that man protein. You understand? That's what the sister did. And he letting somebody tell him because the sister make more. But look at this class. Why not? Look at the class. 99% women. It's not your fault. The brother could have been here. But the brother will drive you to the door, sit down there with the heater going. You come upstairs and study and come back. When you get the diploma, he wants you to stay. What are you going to stay for with a dummy? <laughs> go get your man, go get, get your man with some sense. A man who knows what he's going to do. A man who wants to do something. You don't want to bug down yourself as an ignoramus. He came here with you. And then, that's what I said. So this, this, this lecture is dedicated to the struggling black woman because, yes, let us say, were it not for her carrying the ball these days, huh? when you go to graduation, look at the brothers who, in, who, in, who come into school and flunk out. Brothers believe in by offing each other in school while sisters try to get something going. We get to recognize the fact. We can't listen to the stupid social, sociologists tell us uh, that black women want to rule. What's wrong with it? A black woman give birth to me? I ain't got no hang up about that. I came out of a black woman. I didn't come out of a black father. My father sent the sperms out. Not the child, the sperms. For you brothers who think that you make, that you got a baby come out of you, you're a damn fool. A sperm come out of you. And meet the ovum, but the child is made in her, not you. And some of you jealous because of that. <laughs> jealous with the sister because you can't give birth. It ain't no problem. It's a compliment. It's a thing between two people. And I'm happy. That's why I say yes, polygamy. Because the African man say, okay, you have the child. Two years you don't have to work. Two years you don't have to have no sex with me. Stay there. Nurse the child, you, want it, you get healed, the child gets big enough for two years. Then the other wife will take care of things. See, polygamy got rules. It ain't just quick, quick, and it ain't got very little sex. Because, in, I got to read it. And because polygamy says, and for all of you who take the sex, the average woman in polygamy is only good to her husband 12 days a month. Because she has a period of cleanliness. Before the period, she must refrain. You got to keep metallic reserve. Then the period, the, the, the menstrual period, she must refrain. Then she got three days of the menstrual period for, for waiting for the drain. Then she got a ritual bath. Only 12 days in the month she may have any sexual intercourse with the man. So the, what you're thinking about sex is the base, sex is the least of the base. Least of the base of a polygamous marriage. And most of the time, most cultures in Africa, the first woman select the second, the two select the third, the three select the fourth, etc., etc. And then their marriages arranged by families. And I say, we came from a beautiful past. We came from a rich past. Obviously, we we're a rich people. And I say, it, take the, it took the man and the woman, but today, let us give the sister the credit as it's due.
I know you must have some questions that may have kept you too long, but I got steamed up. <laughs> this history gets me sometimes very involved. Any questions? I can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really don't know what to ask. The only thing I can say is um, when you said about Barbados and Virginia, my mother was born in Barbados. Oh. And when she retired, um, she lived in Virginia for about seven years. She just moved back to New York. What a coincidence. <laughs> she, didn't, she, did, she reversed the, uh, uh, the, tr the tour. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it's, yes, ma'am. Uh, We are together. You see, when you are at the bottom of the heap, it seems as if you're doing nothing. But always remember this. Where you are, nobody give it to you. You died. You're, you see, every generation, you give something for the next step. And every generation, there are people who want to put you back wherever you were. Uh, we didn't get this way by praying. We got this way by dying, giving our body. You see, uh, there's a woman the other day, I said the other day, relatively speaking, who got on a bus and said, I'm tired going in the back. I am not going any damn place. I'm sitting here. They said, go in the back where you belong. She said, make me go in the back. Nobody expected that one day that nice lady who used to walk in and go in the back finally said, I'm not going. You gotta kill me. That woman made king. Not king made her. Huh? That woman, when Shuttleworth came and took up the flight, you know, you don't hear about Shuttleworth and all of them. As a matter of fact, King was a been nothing as Mama King, his mother. Is the one that tell him get in the fight. When they ask him to come, he refused. It is Mama King that tell him she didn't send him to Boston to come back and live funk. He must go and in the fight, not get him in the ivory tower. Yes, Mama King that got shot at the at the piano. Yeah, that's the one. So the sister is always behind her man, side her man, in front her man, with her man, pushing her man. You see? So, no, we, we've been fighting. We, we, look, Malcolm X, Garvey, Du Bois, Natona, we have never failed to fight. Never. We, from the day they took the first one of us and put on a boat to bring across that Atlantic, we fought. We Sisters throw their children to the shark rather than let their children come to slavery. That's the heroic, the heroic deeds that sisters did. You should read the story of, uh, of Sojourner Truth. Rape, four children, four rape. First by her master, the master's son. Then they put the footman, the black footman, to, to rape her. And the time when she decided to get some fun out of this thing by herself, the ministers condemned her for being a loose woman. That's why for a long time, the church didn't allow you to talk about Sojourner Truth. They said she was loose, that she had four children for four different men. But nobody talked, you know. You, well, you, you saw the, the average woman out here that got three children with three different surnames. Food is the reason. Hunger. None of these brothers going to give her a dime. So she, the first guy hit her child. He tell her, oh, I love you. You know I love you. I like you like hug love molasses. And then she surrenders, give up the virginity, and he said, well, I ain't going to marry you. She said, why? He says, I want a woman who's a virgin. But he just took it. <laughs> then the next one come, next one come and say, I am not like him. So she get careless, no birth control, and she get pregnant. So she said, I am not bothering men again. Rent is due, no food in the cupboard, and everything like that. And a brother comes by, what's she gonna do? Boom, another baby. It isn't promiscuous, it's hunger. You understand? And we better get it clear. We, we better stop letting those fellows like uh, 
what is name to, uh, to, to write the book, uh, Billingsley, uh, Black Family in White America, using standards and talking about promiscuous and, uh, uh, behavior and so forth, basing it on middle America, and mi middle, you ain't got nobody more promiscuous than middle America. And using those standards for, to judge our women. Mm, we got to have our own standard. I think that the, the African woman in the United States is a miracle worker. She takes a $100 and buys $300 worth of grocery. <laughs> Like for instance, on my job, um, they have divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. okay? It happens that like blacks and Hispanics. Mm -hmm. So it's a divide and conquer thing. They're giving a few blacks promotions, and therefore they're kissing. Okay, some Hispanics they give them promotions. Um, you know the same old thing. But the, I have a lot of but that's the that's kissing. the problem. And it's divide and suppose conquer. Suppose that suppose I was at the job. How did I get my promotion? Hispanic or black? My mother's a Puerto Rican. Well, you're a combination. You okay, know? that's the you wouldn't get it. but that's the but that's the mistake. We allow them to categorize us yeah. as Hispanics and as blacks. If we tell them, you know, you go to Puerto Rico. What is the combination? They are Caribs, the indigenous people. They're Africans and they're Europeans that make up. You name me one Puerto Rican family that been in Puerto Rico 50 years, and I bet you I will show him black, yellow, brown in that family. And he, he, he could come here look as white as snow or as black as star, and I show him the family. So this nonsense that they put us like, uh, uh, just a Latino, just a, <laughs> that's still junk. They're going to tell you all these classifications and rule all of you with all the classifications. If we would say we are a people in, that develop our own integrity in the Western world, and you don't categorize us. You don't tell me I'm this, that, or others. I decide my. When my little daughter was born here in, in Sidenham, there used to be a Sidenham hospital then. Yes, I worked there. The nurse put down. The most put down on my child's birth certificate, race Negro. <laughs> when they bring the birth certificate, I said, this don't belong to us. So the nurse said, yes, isn't that Colette Johannan? I said, it's a Colette, but I'm a child. <laughs> they said, why? I said, I don't have a Negro child. They said, well, your wife is a Negro and you are Negro. I said, no, you ain't looking right. My wife is an African, and I am an African. My wife is black, and I am black. No, if you put any of those categories, it is my child. But if it, she said, no, you are that. I said, well, I'll tell you what. You keep it, because I don't want it. We went to the court. Judge Leibowitz was then the judge. And Leibowitz asked, what is on your marriage certificate? We got the Africans. He says, Please, he's an African. He got an Israeli certificate, African. The application say African. They can only have an African child. You see, it's what you allow people. You determine and go to court if necessary. You determine what you are, and have the guts to fight it. If they, if you, if you, you must have something worth dying for. Otherwise, life means nothing. You must have something that you're not going to move on. And that de you decide what people are going to call you. Don't let them call you what they want. And, 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 and it will change. People want to see you stand up and don't take no, no, no kicking around. I mean, I've been fired from about 49 schools. Not for incompetency, but for standing up. And I'm going to stand up all the time. I'll stand up to the devil himself. And, and don't, but devil in bad. Don't knock the devil. He must be good. Most people following him. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Good, good point. 
uh, re the, that means the African centric uh, uh, aspect of history. You see, when I read history, I can't read it as the conqueror because I was conquered. Uh, therefore, I have to read history as it affects me. I have to put myself as the centroid figure. And how does that history affect me? Therefore, my solution must come up in my perspective, not in the conqueror's perspective. Like Malcolm said, when the slave got to the bed of the dying master, and he said, are we sick, boss? The slave could not distinguish between himself and the master the role. So he felt that he and the master were one. So he said, are we sick? We sick, boss. The slave should have said, oh, Lord God, you help me to get this fellow sick. Then get a hammer and bust him in his head and get a saw and saw him to make sure and get a night cell hose and douse him with doo-doo. You see, that would have been a wise slave. But to, to think that he is the boss, he was sick, mentally ill. And many of us are like that slave today. Huh? We, so we go and tell the master what the other slave has done. You see the crab, you ever see some crabs in a barrel? The crab, it, one is pulling one, the other one, while the guy who caught them is just looking like that, deciding which one I'm going to eat now. <laughs> well, it was very nice having come and speak to you. It is our on unfortunate circumstances that he's leaving for Egypt and will not be here for a while. But may we extend to you an invitation to, to please when you're here. Will everyone once again join me in according Dr. Ben, our hero, our living hero? Because Dr. Ben has brought over 22,000 tourists to Egypt. Because Dr. Ben taught for two years at the Al-Azhar University in Cairo, free, and because of the experiment that he was a part of in the Daboud village, Dr. Ben will receive the State of Egypt Award from the President of Egypt next month. To you, Sister Gertrude M. England, Ben Yekinan. We, the people of the African community, in appreciation and honor of you, we recognize your over 44 years of dedication, sacrifice, contributions, struggles, and love for your African people. We thank you for standing beside your man, Dr. Joseph Antonio Alfredo Ben Yakinan, and helping him to continue the work and the struggle for freedom of all African people. We know without your support, love, personal sacrifices, and understanding, he could not have become the great man we know him to be. You are the mother of the African community and truly the highest example of the African woman. We ask that all our African gods and goddesses guide and protect you in our struggle for the freedom of African people. May you continue to be a force and a shining example in the African community. With love and respect, we thank you, the African community, this seventh day of February, 1992. Our next presentation will be from Sister Irma Alain of the ASCAC Council of Elders. Hotep, everybody. Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark, may I speak, please? Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Deus guests, sisters and brothers in the audience. 
It is an honor for me to be here, and many thanks also go to the committee for inviting me. I would like to preface my remarks with your quote from the back cover of your book, Dr. Ben, Africa, Mother of Western Civilization, which states, So long as African black peoples anywhere allow false interpretations about their history and cultural heritage by other ethnic peoples to remain unchallenged and not put these in their true and proper perspective, African, African studies will also remain the meaningless and futile exercise it is in most of the United States of America. Major institutions of higher learning, secular and religious, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. The true history of any peoples can only be written and taught, but by their own knowledgeable scribes and teachers, signed, Dr. Joseph Ben Yakinen, June 6, 1971. Now, obviously, the most logical place for early knowledge to be unearthed and disseminated would be in our homes. From birth, parents, parents must be where our liberation starts from. May I just share an example of this with you? At this time, may we be graced with the presence of two young brothers from our Saturday morning Institute for Youth who will come forward to read. And I understand they're not gonna read it, they have memorized it. an amended poem from Haki Manabuti's collection entitled, Killing Memories, Seeking Ancestors. Please welcome Sanjiata Dominiques and Gregory Taylor. Question, what is, Question. The, greatest, what is the greatest challenge I face as an African human being? Answer. My continued quest is to be a responsible, loving, and effective black man, husband, father, writer, educator, and publisher in this ocean of white world supremacy, and not to allow white racism to alter or destroy my, my, my memory, spirit, drive, integrity, worldview, convictions, and values that are the result of 25 years work, excruciating pain, serious study, and, and, and organized struggle. to pass on to our children positive African values which demand the building and development of our family, extended family, community, and people, pushing progressive ideas such, such as histor historical examples of Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner, Marcus R. Delaney, Marcus Garvey, Mary McLeod Bethune, Fanny Lou Hamer and Doc, Dr. Joseph Ben Yahan. <laughs> and Dr. John. 
Henry Clark to name a couple. Our, Our fight is to be an inspired example of a caring, healthy, intelligent, and hardworking people who understand this war uh, and work and, and work daily for development of our people people into into multi talented family conscientious Africans who will not settle for for anything less than self determination and beauty for all of our people. Our children are our major salvation. Therefore, it behooves us to accept the fact that they are so much more than we give them credit for. They just have to be steered in the productive direction. We know they can be taught and they can learn if approached with love, understanding, consistency, and sincerity in order for them to truly manifest what they innately are, African queens and kings. We adults must continue to sit at the feet of our revered elders as we listen, hear, read, absorb, communicate, and productively perform in order to share the knowledge with whomever else wants to learn it. Dr. Ben, we love you. And we thank you for being and always sharing your love with us and with all those humans who want to honestly think, speak, and then truthfully perform with integrity. Hotep. Question. What is What's the greatest what is the greatest challenge I face as an African human being? Answer, my continued quest is to be a responsible, loving, and effective black man, husband, father, writer, educator, and publisher in this ocean of white world supremacy and not to allow white racism to alter or destroy my my, sp my memory, spirit, drive, integrity, worldview, convictions, and values that are the result of 25 years work, excruciating pain, serious study, and, and, and organized struggle. to pass on to our children positive African values which demand the building and development of our family, extended family, community, and people, pushing progressive ideas such, such as histor historical examples of Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner, Marcus R. Delaney, Marcus Garvey, Mary McLeod Bethune, Fanny Lou Hamer and Doc, Dr. Joseph Ben Yohan. <laughs> Henry Clark to name a couple. 
Our fight is to be an inspired example of a caring, healthy, intelligent, and hardworking people who understand this war uh, and work and, and work daily for development of our people. People. Into, into into multi talented family conscientious Africans who will not settle for anything less than self determination and beauty for all of our people. I think that I would be speaking for myself and all others when I say my appreciation to our sister who's been honored here tonight by those of us who are saying what we have to about the African people she represents the epitome, in my opinion, of what we Africans are about, African womanhood. As usual, I like to deal with the things I am not to deal with and I'm going to keep the tradition. <laughs> One thing that bothers us most of anything in this world, which we refuse to challenge, because we're afraid to deal with it, we have been trained in slavery that a book written by some crackers and some Arabs that those two books have words from a deity. And we have started out by condemning ourselves and our women in particular with a nonsense called Adam and Eve. In that book, we have been taught to hate our mother, to discredit our mother's physical development and the biological facts about her, deny her the rights of production, and even claim it for a man. Thus, it's necessary to change Adam and Eve to Adam and Steve. With all of these things listed here tonight, and I don't give a damn who don't like it. With all of what we said tonight about Europe, America, and what not, let us stand up. If we are from Haiti, the first place we were brought in slavery, by order of the Pope in Rome, our religion is Roman Catholicism. If we are from Jamaica, our religion is the Church of England. If we are in Guadeloupe, it's again Rome. If we are in the United States Virgin Islands, it's, Denmark, Dane, it's Lutheran or Moravian, and so on and so on. Wherever we were, enslaved 
we can tell by the slave master's religion. If we are at home in the motherland, on the east coast, it's Islam by the Arabs. If we are in the northern tip of Africa, it is Islam again. If we're the central part of East Africa, it's Islam again. If we are in West Africa, it is one form of Christianity or the other, Roman Catholicism or Protestantism coming from Martin Luther. And so on and so on and so on. If we are in the South Pacific, it's one or the other of these monsters bringing to us a racist God called Jesus Christ. Or another racist God called Allah. Or the master of racism called Jehovah, who's supposed to curse us because of our thick lips, our broad nose, and said it is the curse and symbol of him. But we are scared to deal with it. Right now you're shaking your boots. And you're scared that the ceiling will fall on your black ass. And so it is that we can't challenge the most damaging thing to us. Let us go back and look at the facts. What do we do? What caused Mandela to be the sucker he is? Here you got a man with a black face in a black high place in control of nothing. All of you jumping up, and you're going to jump, he's going to be back here soon. And you're going to look at Harry Belafonte, no different than O.J. Simpson. Right now you're crying at the TV. After all, O.J. is a black man. O.J. is no goddamn black man. He stopped being black long ago. There's no difference between O.J. Simpson and Michael Jackson. At least Michael had the courage to turn white. The prosecutor should have been a black woman. And all the Jews should have been black women. And at least put him under the, under the jail or hang him. Hang him for having the indecency to insult black womanhood and, married, and marry a white slut. Let us look back at Rome. When Rome, along with Isabella and Ferdinand, commissioned Cristobal Colón with the concept of the Torridor Agreement, giving the western half of the world to Spain and the eastern half of the world to Portugal, who the hell give that prostitute with a beanie in the head, a faggot in Rome? Who gave him the authority to give to the world himself and to divide the world and its people? Let's deal with it now. Let's come down the pike. Unless you are willing to get the religious monkey off your back, you can forget the rest. When you could sing songs 
Make me whiter than snow, O oh Lord. Wash me in the blood, red blood, of the lamb in your black behind, and then you're going to be whiter than snow. It's time we either stop coming to these things or do what we got to do. There is no way that I am going to read things that insult me. Talking about spaceship one mile in diameter. And the people in the spaceship don't look like me. And going to carry me away. We have to deal with the honesty. It was in Haiti that Pope Martin V, along with Bartolomeo Diaz, I mean, I'm sorry, La Las Casas, Bartolomeo Las Casas, decided to destroy the indigenous people for their land. It was Haiti that the first 4,000 Africans was sent to be slaves, not from the continent of Africa. We were already in the southern tip or the southwestern tip of Europe. Southern France, today what is called Portugal and Spain, or Hispaniola. Uh, Hispania. There in Hispaniola, which was later called Hispaniola, Little Spain, our people were carried, 4,000 of them, to be enslaved in the name of Jesus. Even one of the slave boats was named Jesus the Lubbock. We sing the song, constantly, especially at funerals, and say that it has, though it was written by a slave master, it has the quality of God in it. What kind of a God going to have slaves? What kind of a God going to say, render unto Caesar? that which is of Caesar, and to, unto the Lord, that which is of the Lord. And I must pray to that God. You can't even say to your God in honesty, words from your mouth, you recite. Things written by Germans, Welshmen, Englishmen, and then you get, you, when you can't, Quote those bastards, you speak in tongues. <laughs> tongues that you don't know a damn thing what you're saying. You left your concept of the deity, which your ancestors so proudly brought, paying honor and respect to childbirth. You have your God Min and your Goddess Nut in the righteousness of childbirth. When you took observation of the fact of the mother giving forth her child, her male child, and her female child in honor and respect. The concept of childbirth the concept of the first child didn't have a damn thing to do with Jehovah. At the Mamizi of every temple in Egypt, and I pointed out one in one of the presentations by Brother Noble, the story of Kunum making man and woman out of clay and his potter's wheel preceded Jehovah by thousands of years. Some of you went to Egypt and saw it for yourself and come back and still reciting the same damn nonsense. 
Some of you went to Egypt and saw the Immaculate Conception Virgin accept becoming pregnant for Asaru and giving birth to Heru. 4,000 years before Mary turned the same trick. The concept of one and only true God by Akhenaten. And there was no Moses yet. No way around the world. Akhenaten preached one God long before the birth of Moses. And he died long before Moses. For Moses to come and then be the first to get it again. There wasn't a single Jew. Call yourself Hebrew Israelite, call yourself Jews, call yourself whatever you want, Hebrew. Let's deal with the reality. It's time to stop chucking and jiving and deal with the basic issue. How come you go to church with the crackers? How come you go to church with the Arabs or the mosque? And you tell me all of us are equal in there. But when you come outside, what difference does it make if you could sing a song of sixpence <laughs> in a mox with pocket full of gold and you don't come with a damn penny? Mandela is singing a song of sixpence. And he and many personally got some pence. But how many are the prisoners? Political prisoners did he release, and he was one. He carried the people, so damn nonsense said they were voting. And what did they get? Did the Beers go to jail? Did any white man that murdered innocent African people in South Africa go to jail? Is there any indictment on any of them? Does Mandela control the army, the navy, the air force? Does he control mining? Does he control the treasury? What the hell does he control? You got a jackass over there called Bishop somebody. Tutu. Always kneeling down be behind the, the Pope's ass. Always back in England. Every time the royal family fought in England, he's there to interpret it. <laughs> no, it's about time that we deal with what killing us. Foreign concept of religion. Concepts that copy from us and distorted what we were saying. If someone in this audience could name me one thing, any religion that came into Africa, brought to Africa for the first time in concept of principles and dignity for my people, let me know. I will relinquish my time for you to tell us. No, you're not going to deal with it. And we're going to be in the same position tomorrow and 10,000 more tomorrow until you're ready to set your own theosophical principles, to put back your African woman at the center of your religion. When you are ready to worship your African woman again, I said again, not the first time. When you are ready to look at African childbirth, and your woman and pay reverence to her. Like goddess Nut, when you said that Nut even gave birth to the sun, symbolic of God Ra, when you were saying that, you were ruling yourself. And anybody came up again, you whip ass. But no, you couldn't be happy with that because you like O.J. Simpson. And you are like O.J. Simpson. He had money to buy it. You don't have, but you're praying for it. 
And so you are there sorry, wishing that he could get free. And I won't give a damn what happened to him. When he disrespected the African woman, when he disrespected my mother, my daughter, my sister, my aunt, my woman, he disrespected all of us if you have enough intelligence to understand it. What good is it if you can read Brother Scobie's books, Dr. Clark's books, Dr. Jeffrey's books, my books, and you can quote me dates and events, but it hasn't made you yet understand that what I am saying is the honor and respect of the African woman. I'm speaking to you brothers, and I hope this young man who could bat 500 and add, when he get his first contract, he would remember the black girl he'd been fingering every day. That he remember that she's as precious as the white slut he may see in the contract figures. Let us be honest with ourselves. We are not going to change anything until when we pray, our God look like my mother and my daddy. The current Pope signed an agreement with the Jews that it was a mistake to say that they killed Jesus and everything else. The current Pope went to Zaire and said nothing that it was a mistake and wrote nothing that the church with the Knights of Malta and the Knights of Genoa enslaved African people. Julius Neri, a prostitute, went and kneeled down at the Pope and kissed his hand. He's a member of the Knights of Malta. Fourteen different pre uh, presidents in Africa are members of the church and belong to the Knights of Malta or the Knights of Genoa. The Knights of Malta and Genoa were the ones in charge of the slave trade. How are you going to join an organization that were in charge of the slavery of your ancestors. So I could understand when Secretary Neri barred me. Neri barred me from the six pack and Tory barred me from coming into Guinea. I feel honored. By be I've been barred by better people than them. But that ain't going to stop me from speaking as I speak. And as you know, I don't get invitation from black scholars to come to anything. I haven't been invited by a black scholar in I don't know when. I guess the, Brother Jeffrey's probably no scholar because he has invited me a few times. <laughs> I, taught, I taught at a school for 18 years, the only Men to retire from the blacks, the African Studies Department. The only one, there are people who left, some who died. The only one retired. And in 1987, when I retired, they promised they're going to have me back. Good lie. <laughs> I haven't been back yet. They had the 20th anniversary of the department. And they didn't invite me. They gave, listen to this, they put up a plaque in my honor and a room, but didn't invite me. <laughs> they had John Clark read my acceptance for me. 
The 25th anniversary just went last year. They didn't invite me. Somebody called and asked me if I was going. I said, going where? <laughs> and so I protested that they don't want me. A sister called me the same night. The thing is, the, the next day, I said, Dr. Ben, we had lost your address. I mean, <laughs> you address it, Dr. Ben Harlem. I get it. No, I got to say this because ladies Lee have felt what it is. It's okay to come and praise her. Yes, we need it. Jeffrey's know it. Know it. I sat down there with his lawyer. I guess he was surprised the night when Brother Fleming said to everyone, when I was in first entered college, him and his associate, a man told me in a class, he said, you studying law? If you think the law is just to, to get, make some money, you get out the damn thing right now. You've got to be a lawyer for your people. <laughs> it was his lawyer. You see, I was a member of the National Lawyers Guild the black lawyers guild and all kind of guild. And one day I tell Libo which way to go, and we couldn't fit back in his mother very easily. But I suggested that he go back there for a visit. Not from the forward, but go from the back. And of course, Many people disassociate themselves with me. They said my language was profane. Well, since I didn't make the English language, and have, I never knew it one way or the other, I don't feel responsible for it. Because fain and profane, the fain was those with money, I mean, and the profane was those without money. It's just like some of you. You got to change. I the day heard some of you saying, my uncles, my parents, my family were kings and queens in Africa. That's yours. <laughs> my family were poor peons. My family was simple country folk. They were not a king, a duke, an earl, a queen in my family. They were the ass whippers. My family were one that whipped the king's ass when the king didn't behave. And the descendant is doing the same thing. My family didn't care about the fineries. I live in a building with Charlie Lap Wrangle. Just before the election, they were running there and they've been to our church right in 132nd Street, our AME church. I forget the name of that church. Uh, you bet, thank you, Bethel. And Charlie was in the lobby and he was going to be late. He's a big time congressman. When he found that he was going to be late, and the FBI said, Charlie, run out of that lobby, cross the lot over the fence, <laughs> over the fence, to get there to meet God Clinton. The same Charlie Wrangley doesn't speak much to me no more. They live upstairs. I live on the second floor. But when Charlie came back, that's Charlie McCarty came back with Mortimer Snow. That's Dickens. I had to say, good morning, Mr. Rangelberg. And he got rather angry with me. And he said, Ben, why you said that? I said, aren't you back from Israel? 
that you beat this scud missile? When the election, when they got a party in my building, look at the people who are present at the party. 98 people, two black. Charlie Half, one of them. You know, don't tell me. You see, I don't have friends. I don't have many friends. Uh, and it's nothing new. Uh, if I have friends, I'm going to feel uncomfortable. I would not feel, because I'm not accustomed to, to have them. My daddy told me a long time ago, son, if you expect to be popular, you got to give up the direction you're going. <laughs> because nobody going to like you. Sometimes not even your wife. Because your wife don't want to go to the altar. And I drive women to church. I, I, like, I believe in all of that. I got my own funny ways, you know. But you got to understand. When that guy from Texas, the multi-oil millionaire, I think they call him Bush, he give you the cue. He was designing one world power. He called it what? The New World Order. But there's no New World Order. The Berlin Conference is still going on. The Brussels Conference that superseded it still goes on. The League of Nations is still going on. And the United Nations is the same thing that started with the Berlin Conference in 1864. The cracker and the Arab. But unfortunately, the Arab isn't going to get his. Because the cracker is going to eat up everybody. That's his intent. What the European is timing for, and you, you make a distinction between a white Jew and a white Christian. There is no distinction. The only thing a white Jew hasn't become in the United States is president and vice president, and he makes them. He's not only that, he's president of your mind. You still keep the spinging Awards dinner. Joel and Arthur Spingham. The Ford Foundation tell you, I'm taking over the, the NWCP now. I'm going to turn it over to Price Waterhouse. <laughs> Which one are you complaining? And they're going to be a Negro, a colored man, a zebra. <laughs> going to take the job when everybody knows he'll be a little puppet. At least at the other time, many of you didn't know that you were a puppet. But now there's going to be no doubt. There will be no doubt. But you all don't condemn them. You condemn Roy Innes. Roy is an out and out puppet. He don't deny. He doesn't deny being a puppet. Roy is a proud puppet. He's a puppet with a capital P. But you got puppets equally. You got a puppet at Columbia University near Manny Marlboro. You got a puppet in, in, uh, up there at uh, Harvard, Skip Gates. I could understand poor Skip problem. Anytime you marry a white woman who just divorced a black man, you get in secondhand porridge. And you're supposed to be angry. <laughs> supposed to be angry. Poor Skip. Skip got a battery of ignorance. It's a collection of misfits. You got Cornel West. And these brothers and sisters are telling me, but the brother is a scholar, man. You shouldn't talk to him in that manner. You should use scholarly terms. Have you ever heard 
a scholarly skunk? <laughs> when a conch stinks, is there scholarly stink and an unscholarly funk? Are you saying that a skunk who could read classics is different than a skunk who can't read classics? No. No. You can't say that the memory of Amos Wilson is just now. And if you're going to say that I should treat Amos scholarship the same as I should uh, treat Skip Gates, Everything Gates wrote is about some white man or some white woman. Whereas what Amos wrote was about himself and his people. Are you saying that I'm, I, I should call both scholars? You mean to tell me I shouldn't make a distinction between Amos and Gates? I must just say they're both scholars because a white man, a white man, decided to give him a piece of sheepskin, goat skin, or any kind of skin? No. My father remind me, I got to go back to that old man quite often. He says, son, I was arguing with daddy. Tell me one time, brother. I was arguing with daddy. Not arguing, I was debating. Not even debating, we had a conversation. Because you didn't debate with my daddy. Because my daddy had to let you know in a minute who was paying your food. But I, I was arguing an engineering term with daddy. I just came out of the University of Puerto Rico and I felt good, big, big engineer. Cracker gave me a piece of paper saying, you're an engineer, big time engineer. But daddy had paid the money. And daddy had some natural experience about a bridge. And daddy was telling me about how this bridge is going to fail. And I said, no, it can't fail because. And then I said, I know. I got a degree in this. <laughs> and daddy calmly watched his foolish son. And he says, son, can I talk to you? I know that was sarcasm because he knew he could talk to me. I had to listen. And he says, son, I'm going to ask you one little question. The man that did you the degree, and the man that gave out the first degree, did he have any of his own? Oh, let me repeat it, because you ain't hearing. <laughs> let me cut down the first part so it don't confuse you. Daddy asked me if the man that gave out the first degree had any of his own. He couldn't have it. The first degree, the man made up what he considered degree, right? So the first man never had a degree, but he made a degree. He made up what he constitutes to be a degree. How many of us you don't know went out and built buildings? You know, Tap had a degree, but you didn't hear anybody brag about it like the Empire State Building. In Hotep, did the engineering, the architecture, the survey and everything that was necessary.
Okay, I'm about to bring on my co-host, who was very uh, instrumental and uh, very much uh, enlightened me about a lot of things. He's become a close friend to me and like a brother. Brother Tariq P. Alexander. What's up, sisters and brothers? We have a very informative lecture for you this evening with our guest speaker, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen. Dr. Ben will be lecturing on Africa and Western civilization. For those of you who are familiar with Dr. Ben, you won't be surprised at what he has to say. For those of you who are not familiar with Dr. Ben, I ask that you listen very closely and critique his message and not the messenger. After Dr. Ben lectures, we're going to have about a 35-minute question and answer period. During this question and answer period, I'll ask that you line up behind a microphone here in a single file and that you limit yourself to one question per person. We don't want to wear out our elder. Before I give you the bio on Dr. Ben, I must take this time to introduce some people who've been very instrumental to me and helped me put this program together. They're not members of the police department, but they were very inspiring nonetheless. So when I call your name, please stand and would you please help me by acknowledging them. Mr. Vance Hinton. <laughs> Mr. Hampton Ricard. And this sister, I have to mention her name. Uh, she, this wouldn't be going on if it wasn't for her. Uh, the sister's name is Lorraine Corelli. And also, Sister Pat Stevens. I have one more person that I want to acknowledge, and I'm going to ask her to stand. See, I'm using, saving up for last, but she, by no means is she the least. She's inspired me all through my life. Follow her everything, for she bared me life. Would you please help me acknowledge my mother, Miss Amy Alexander? <laughs> Joseph Ben Yakinen, the son of Julia and Christian Yakinen, the father of 12 biological and six adopted children, husband of Gertrude M. England, was educated in the public schools of Brazil, the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Cro Croix, and Puerto Rico. He received a Ph.D. in cultural anthropology in Cuba and a Ph.D. in Moorish history in Spain. He has also received his LLB law degree. Dr. Ben is also an architect. Dr. Ben, as he's so affectionately known, has practiced law in the ancient excuse me, an assistant, as assistant prosecutor in Puerto Rico and has also worked as a civil engineer for both Puerto Rico and the United States. From 1945 to 1970, Dr. Ben was the chief of the African desks of the United Nations Education Scientific Cultural Organization called UNESCO, dealing with the cultural anthropology, historical, and archaeological information. He's also served as a civilian advisor to the permanent African mission of the United Nations from 1957 to 1964. Dr. Ben has taught us, Dr. Ben has taught at numerous universities in Africa, the Caribbean, North America, and also South America. Dr. Ben is presently a professor at Al Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt, recently retired from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Dr. Ben is the chairman of the Akabulin Foundation, Akabulin Books and Educational Materials. He is an author of 28 published books, 16 unpublished books, and a six-volume encyclopedia on Africa. Dr. Ben is presently conducting an educational tours to Egypt and the Nile Valley, which I and is presently, digging, is presently directing the archaeological dig in Aswan, Egypt. Dr. Ben recently celebrated his Jubilee year in Egypt, March 1939 to March 1989. Dr. Ben is a special advisor for the festival in Aswan, Egypt, 1991. 
the first African Nubian festival ever in Egypt. We are most fortunate to be in the same space as this multi-genius. Our elder, our brother, I give you Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I probably should have started with an African greeting, however, which one should I pick out when we are all Africans and we may have different languages? So to make my lecture all inclusive and conclusive, let me start by expressing my appreciation for the guardians having brought me here to speak to them and them they will speak in turn to me. Let me start out since the guardian would protect me and this is one time when no one will mug me when I, this is the time they should try. <laughs> I know I will have ample protection. But let us start out with law itself. I wonder why it is that we have to struggle so often in every area of life that we find ourselves. As we go up, and that's a question mark, the harder it becomes. And many people say it's because we are black. Quite to the contrary, it's because they are white. I remember someone told me, they, as a matter of fact, they asked me, where was I during the blackout? And I said, no place. And he says, how do you mean? I said, there have never been a blackout. And then they tried to tell me what time in New York they had a blackout. And I said, no, they had a light out. If you, take off, if you take off the lights in here, it'd be black, because it was always black. They put light. Black is never out. Black is always in. And so we start to talk about law. Well, let's talk about law. This is the best place to start with the guardians. From whom do we got, get the law? Did we get it from someone named Moses? Not at all. That is a Jewish uh, story, allegory. Has nothing at all to do with truth. Now that caused a lot of you problems. Because when we're talking about Moses and the Ten Commandments, where is he getting these Ten Commandments? In a place called Egypt, and the last time I look at Egypt, and that was last Friday, it was still in Africa. But look, Moses is living in a society where there is law. In Egypt, there was a system of law when Moses allegedly was born around the 18th dynasty. He was born after Akhenaten had already died. There is a set of laws they call the admonitions to goddess Ma'at or the negative confessions out of which Moses adopted 30, uh, 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 10 out of 42, leaving 32 more. There is a law that Moses himself is charged with killing murder, killing the soldier of the Pharaoh. Of course, they don't give us the name of the Pharaoh, but based upon the time period that they're talking, it must have been Ramesses II or his father, Setai I, or at worst, his son, Asakana. He had over uh, 42 sons. Nevertheless, the laws that he's supposed to get, those 10, were already taught for umpteen years. They were taught in the Grand Lodge 
of Luxor that he went, um, Luxor, uh, by the way, is Waset. They were taught at the Grand Lodge at Saqqara, where even Abraham wasn't born. Even the, the, the name Jehovah didn't exist yet. There was no God named Jehovah, no God named Jesus, no God named Allah yet. When the Africans along the Nile, and in particular at the Grand Lodge of Saqqara, was teaching the concept of law and order. If you doubt me, then they said, the proof of the pudding is not in the smelling, but the eating. You then go and get a copy of the Book of the Coming Forth by day and by night. And that precede, there was no Genesis yet. I am talking about the book that started before even the dynastic period. That will carry us back to 6,000 before the Christian era. And you will find it there in a section called Osirian Drama. I know that you all are using this book since it's a black book, and I'm just trying to refresh your memory. I, I, I know that you prefer another book called uh, the Old Testament or the book of Genesis. But before God made the world, I'm talking about when we were making the world. Uh, see, since the God that you're dealing with is Michelangelo's cousin, I, I don't want any of you to get angry because I was coming through the hall and I saw this blonde man, uh, blue eye, golden hair. Uh, not an Italian, and uh, I wanted to know who it was, and somebody said that Jesus. And I said, boy, he suddenly changed. <laughs> From the time you said that he came down with Mary into Egypt to hide, from uh, some king up there was planning to kill him, and he's going to hide among all these black folks in Egypt. Now, uh, I don't need to go far because if he's looking like he look and hiding among all these black folks and the king sent his soldiers to find him and can't find him any place, <laughs> either he's a chameleon that changes with the uh, decor or he's a brother. <laughs> now, I know that you all can't accept him as a brother. Michael Jackson can't. Or and Jesse Jackson can't either. But nevertheless, let's keep going. Law and order, you read them at least every Sunday, Saturday, or Friday, depending if you're Jews, Christians, or Muslims, and other religion. And you are all of these things. Let us go back to even the concept of the only true God that you constantly speak of and fight each other about. You attribute the only true God to either Allah, depending if you're Muslim, or Jehovah if you're uh, uh, Jewish or Hebrew, and Jesus the Christ if you are Christian. If that is so, what happened to Akhenaten's one and only true God, Aten, that was practiced before Moses was born before there was a Jesus or before the, uh, there was anybody called Allah by a person by the name of Muhammad, or Muhammad uh, 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 of, of Arabia. Law and order again, let us go. They're natural laws as well as their laws developed by man to deal with the phenomena of life around him, material and otherwise. We tend to call it science then they call it mathematics and so forth. But nevertheless, the, our ancient brothers of the Nile, not only in Egypt, Egypt is the last of the major civilizations along the Nile. It's where the Africans reach their zenith. But the Africans along the Nile call that the law of opposites. That nothing exists without an opposite. So many of you who are talking about if it were not for the devil, I would be a good person. I would. But I don't want the devil ever to go away. Because I would have nothing to 
check whether or not I'm good or bad. Since you talk about the devil being so bad. And it's strange that I have never seen a white devil. Yet I caught hell by the white people from the day one. My first contact with my first contact with the Greek is trying to bring him out of his cave. And I paid for it ever since. As Professor Clark said, I invited him to dinner and became the meal. <laughs> well, let's go on law and order. If I tell my story academically, using all the different highfalutin words, to satisfy the other side, it would be appreciated if I tell it in the language of my people. Then it's another thing. But since I don't have a habit of eating down tongue, I eat up tongue. I'm Harlem boy. Uh, <laughs> I would have eaten at McDonald's or One Step Down or something if I was a Brooklyn boy. Uh, when I when it come to Brooklyn, you understand. <laughs> I know you all don't understand where the places I eat because the management and ownership happen to be African, and you people don't eat that kind of way. Now, as we are talking about law and order, it was law and order in the highest degree that makers came come up with a language called Meduneta. We came up with mathematical science, the figures you could see, not only at the Grand Lodge of Saqqara, which is basically gone now, but the remains of the Grand Lodge in Luxor. Something bothered me seriously. Those of you who call yourself Masons and Elks and odd fellows and all that. You can be found constantly all over Israel, Jerusalem, and other places. But it's strange that in your rituals you say the Grand Lodge of Luxor is the Mother Lodge, but you're never in Luxor. You go to Israel where they say, We believe there was a Grand Lodge here. But I'm carrying you to Egypt where I don't believe it. I show you. Here's the Grand Lodge. You said that King Solomon is the father of Freemasonry. How could it be? How could it be when the Grand Lodge at Saqqara is from 3000 and odd BC and Solomon is not until 970 BC? You got problems. You have the problem, it's not me. Because you have to prove to somebody else that you who give to mankind civilization have to wait until a woman named Diane Ravitch tells you you can't listen to Jeffries. But what you have to understand with law and order, I'm still dealing with law and order, is that when you were designing the concept of interstellar space, when you were given the world symbols, and there's a man just wrote a book against symbolism, you gave to the world that which Europe cannot do without. Let us examine Europe right here in what is called America today, in terms of law and order. We will go to the Supreme Court that dispenses just this. I may need to spell it for you. J-U-S-T, that's one word. And the next is this, T-H-I-S. And you are angry because you don't get just this. You are looking for just this, J-U-S-T-I-C-E. Nobody promises you that. For when you see the scales at the United States Supreme Court building, one scale is up and the other is down. That is just this, not just this. On the other hand, when you look at the justice scene, Goddess Ma'at, 
in any of the tombs in, in, in Egypt or in Sudan or in Ethiopia, you see Goddess Ma'at holding the scale, both scale at the same level. That's just this. You see her with a symbolic feather in her hair, in her head, an ostrich feather. And you see the caption saying, the heart of the deceased must weigh the exact amount of the feather of fruit. And then they show you a symbolic animal called Amnut, the head of a crocodile and the body of a lion that is supposed to eat the heart if the heart weighs more or less than the feather of truth. The United States have copied that symbol. The United States have copied another symbol of law and order. Look on your dollar bill. On the upper side, there is the House of Fire pyramid. You see the ever seen eye of Horus, which you call the um, evil eye. I mean, the European got you believing that anything belongs to you, something wrong with it. Evil eye. It is the left eye symbolically of Horus. That's the way the story goes. It has nothing to do with evil. And then you see the sun burst, symbolic of God Ra. Like the ancient Africans used everything around him to describe his situation in terms of law and order. It, because of law and order of the stellar space, the movement of the moon, the sun, the stars, and other planets, the African was able to plot their courses, plan their movement, and thus create the first system of marking the movement of these elements, otherwise called a calendar. And I go back to 10,000 BC. That's more than 7,000 years before Adam or Eve or Steve. Now, with all of this, and these, these aren't uh, prophetic statements by myself from any special work. You can come with me, as others have come, there are many in here who have come with me, to Egypt and to Ethiopia and Sudan. And I have shown you where it is. And it's open to the public at large. But then you come back. You come back and forgot that not only did the Africans start at the 10,000 year or stellar calendar, but they revised that and refined it to 365 and a quarter day each year. And thus made what is called the solar calendar, one based upon the sun in relationship to the earth and the moon and else. And that was 4100 before the common era, which is stated as the first beginning of the dynastic period. Don't get it wrong that Egypt started with the di dynastic period. No, Egypt was reunited during what is called the dynastic period as stated by high priest Manetho. Again, I refer you to these documents. These are written, they were written before there was a book called Genesis. Written before the first Jew, Abraham, was born around the 13th dynasty, 1700 before the common era. Yet we fight each other over being Jewish, being Christian, being Muslim, as if that's important. Here you are, started man's kind civilization. I'm not trying to oppress you. But Frankly, if I, I want to speak really like homeboy, uh, most, of you, most of you are going to leave. Because you, if you get in the bar on a, on a Saturday night, that's my language. But um, of course, I got to make it good. The chief is here. I got to show him respect. <laughs> but I am wondering, we got a black mayor. Somebody told me that. And uh, somebody said was uh, 
I, I, you know, Rangel live in a building. I stay when I'm in the state. I stay in a building in, in a rich black people ville. It's called Lennox Terrace, and uh, Rangel live upstairs, and and uh, I think the mayor live a little way down the street from us. And when the boat came back the day from Israel, I saw Mr. Rangelstein, and I <laughs> and. Uh, So I said, I said to Mr. Rangelstein, how old is Mr. Deckenberg? And, uh, well, it must be because I found that each of them had a yarmulke for each week. Uh, but, all right. Now, don't say that I'm anti-Jewish. I was born in the Jewish religion as a falasha. And there were no white Jews yet. Well, you don't want to hear that, I know. Uh, but then I wonder, how come we don't have a black police chief? Uh, I don't think you're against being chief. Uh, chief uh, you, you won't be against being commissioner. If you're going that far up, why not the next step? We always got to balance it out. Huh? How come? Why we got to balance it out? Everybody comes in, appoint their people to everything. How come the first... In other words, between her last period and this one, when she noticed she doesn't have a period and she know she was only going with one man. Let's call him Joe. <laughs> if I want to be a little black, I would have called him Mo. <laughs> because most black folks name men name Mo anyhow. And she become cognizant of the fact that she ha doesn't have a period that she's pregnant. But she was only going with this one man. She had an immaculate conception because she knows she could not be pregnant for any other man because only one man she went with during that period. That was the immaculate conception and the virgin birth was because if she touched no other man but that same man, until she gave birth to a child, that was considered the virgin birth. If you go, don't go with me, go by yourself to Abydos, go into that room. You don't need me to be there. And see how the early Christians tried to chop, 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 chop out the evidence. Go out to all the temples and see how the, they tried to destroy the information that I'm talking to you about and other people will talk to you about. And because we don't know these things, our, our story, not his story. You know, his story was his story. Drop the second S, you got his story. But I'm talking about our story, which have not been told correctly since the Greeks came there as students. Let us go back to a little history again and go to dates. Why do you think they don't have dates in the Bible? They can't have dates. Because you will find the lies. I know that you don't like the word lie. But if you're not telling the truth, you're lying. I mean, I'm, I'm a simple country boy. I, I don't know the, the beauty and the highfalutin words. You understand what I mean? <laughs> I listened to a minister the other day said, oh wait, I listened to Farrakhan the other day. And he was talking about, we have little bees up here because we had to be thrown in the jungle. Our color got black because of the same thing to protect us from the sun that we originally had straight here. I said, somebody gone sick. <laughs> I mean, look, there comes a time, you know, there comes a time where we don't play around. I heard a minister said, to me, it's the time of massive ignorance. He said, he doesn't pick it and do all these things like most people. I guess like the PF, PBA doesn't pick it. No, they, they, told me, they told me the PBA pickets now, only black mayors. 
And uh, see. I guess you all must have heard that my mouth they don't have Sundays. Right? So if I talk about God, so you know I talk about you. I, I, when I say God, I mean my father. I talk about God, that's, that's mama. Because somebody asked me, who you pray to? I said, my woman. Black. I had to tell immediately black. Because I don't want nobody to get a misunderstanding. But how, how could you believe in a woman as, as God? I said, when last you see a man giving birth to anything? In spite of Steve. All right, so you understand that I'm controversial. And you all knew it was controversial. But I got documentation and proof. I could prove it. Everybody in that audience gave birth to anything. I bet you it's a woman. <laughs> now, anybody want to take the bet? Anyone wants to take the bet? I give in 20 to 5. Chief, don't know. Don't, I'm, I'm not gambling. <laughs> I'm not gambling, I'm just wagering. <laughs> All right, we continue. You see, <laughs> what we have to understand in all of this is when the Greeks came and the Persians are the one that allowed them in. We have to go back and ask the question for those of you who are doing the stupid dance at college, shuffle dance and talking, I'm a Greek, I'm a freak, I'm a Greek, I'm a freak. <laughs> Just remember. Greece, there is no Greece until 1,000 before the common era, B.C. And there isn't a single Greek writer until Homer comes to Egypt to learn to read and write. And then, in 833, wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, the first piece of writing out of Greece. There was no, at that time, Greece was called uh, Pyrrhus. There was no other state in Europe before that either because Etrusca, now called Rome, was not in existence before 1000 BC either. 1000 BC, the Africans were already in the 19th dynastic period, meaning that they had started a civil war along the Nile and had come back together, had designed and built all the pyramids that you see there. Not a single Jew was born yet. Abraham. Abraham was born according to Torah in a place called Ur in Chaldea. No better than 1700 before the common era. That would be the 13th dynasty. The first pyramid was designed and built by Enhotep in the third dynasty and the last, the 82nd pyramid was built at the end of the 12th dynasty. How can you build a pyramid and you ain't born yet? You notice it's not mentioned in Torah. It is Jewish folklore. And let us use it. Even so, your Bible, yours, because you got us one right now. Some of you walk in the pack of book so you don't get hurt. But a star may fall on your head. In your book, it says that Moses got frustrated with the Lord. And he and the Lord had a little altercation. You know who's going to win. And the Lord said, Moses, let me show you how bad I am. Now you know this got to be a bad black Lord. Because when, when Lords talk about how bad they are, you got to be a black Lord. Talking like a real Harlem boy, Bedford Stevenson boy. Said, Moses, I'm going to show you a trick. You're so damn bad, I'm going to show you how bad I am. The Lord says, stick your hand in your bosom, and I'll show you a miracle. And the book said, what? And he pulled his hand out, and it had turned white. Stop. <laughs> if it was white when he put it in there, and it had turned white, the Lord was jiving. 
It didn't say it was black, but we know it wasn't white. Now, to make sure, I'm not talking about white folks. His sister Miriam got smart, and she's going to act up. I don't want you to marry that girl from Ethiopia. Now, this is your book. It's strange I'm quoting your book, and all of you got a white Jesus in your house. Most of you, not all. And Miriam said, look, 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 Moses, you can't marry that girl. She went. He said, look, those girls up in Ethiopia are ours. And he went out and got married because Moses was a good man. He had a cup. He married nothing but holy girls, high priest daughters. He said, Miriam, I'm going to show you. The Lord walked, Lord again. And he turned a what? White with leprosy. Now, these are two members of the holy family turn white. Are we to assume that the parents was white if they turned them white? Well, we get off the Lord because you're going to get mad and I want you to go home and sleep. So, we leave the Lord for a while. But where do we get it? Where do we get the story of Moses? A copy from the stories of Horus. Horus, the young boy, who the king wanted to kill, the king of the gods, wanted to kill. And his mother, a set which you call Isis, not the blonde one from Hollywood, took him down to the same Nile River, put him in a papyrus basket. Hundreds of years, thousands of years later, the Jews copied the story and changed it. I, I, I changed it. The Haribo, because Jew is a, a member of the tribe of Judah. But you swallowed hook, line, and sinker. We got to look at how we are damaged mentally. Let's go to church tomorrow, so, Sunday, and we're going to sing, Make me whiter than snow, O Lord. Now, you may be, because you may be lighter than me, you got a chance, but how the hell am I going to get whiter than snow? But it isn't bad enough. You're going to get more ridiculous than that. Wash me in the blood of the lamb, and I'll be whiter than snow. Now I'm black like this. Then you wash me with red blood, and I become whiter than snow. You're crazy. But they can tell you that and you find nothing wrong with it because you don't know yourself. You don't know your history. And that's when, when you come and tell me that umpteen white cops start to shoot and you get a stake out with white cops and one black one. Like all the other black ones used to be shot up on 7th Avenue all the time. Every time a black a cop gets shot by mistake, it's a black cop. Yeah. The funny thing is that some of us don't see it fun, nothing wrong with it because it's a cop. And we separate ourselves from the cop. But look at yourself. You are that cop. You don't have to be in a police force because when they shoot a black cop, they will shoot a black porter, a black president, a black engineer. We have to understand what the totality of the struggle that we have is not classified by profession or by class. There's a man named Lewis just died the other day. 500 million on one transaction, but still they were doing him in. You know, when I was at Cornell teaching, professor, other professors used to say, but Ben, you never say our university. I said, because there's no our, it's the university. I work here. <laughs> and every two weeks they pay me. If they don't, I raise ass. You understand? I never got the, uh, the opinion to believe this is mine. 
because of knowing my history down to the ages of what happened. It's like celebrating Columbus Day. Cristobal Colón. I remember Columbus because I remember at the same time another Eng an Englishman, Burton, who found the source, he discovered the source of the Nile. Africans bringing his luggage up the stream, one in front guiding the group. Come, Burton, come, here it is. The indigenous people you call Indians, and the damn fool didn't even know there wasn't Indian. Columbus set out with Pietro Olanzo Nino, the admiral of the fleet of five ships, because the Moors ruled Spain from 711 to 1485, and, he, and it was his ship. He was placed in command of the ship. Columbus was only placed in command of the expedition. And we seem to forget that he even called, considered Cuba, Sipango, Japan. That dumb Italian. <laughs> they say, you shouldn't say Italian, and you shouldn't say a Jew from Texas. But they say a black, a Negro, a colored, a nigger, from so, so, and so. But why can't we say, they, we say ghetto, we live in the ghetto. Did we coin the phrase ghetto? At NYU? No, we didn't. Did all of these things. We talk about what? In the diaspora. Did we coin the fame diaspora? Who did it to us? Because again, because again, we did not know our history. If we knew that the first building built by man out of stone was an African in the Torah dynasty, Again, we come to the Pharaoh Zusa, the first, third Pharaoh of the third dynasty. Where was Europe during those days? History has no record of Europe in those days. No records of the Arabs in those days. There were no people there on that peninsula called Arabs. They were called Saracens. The Saracens were the people at the peninsula now called Arabs. People who come down from the Caucasian mountain, the Caucasus mountain, integrated, and that's an ugly word, amalgamated, another ugly word, they raped the women down there. <laughs> no talking. Every time white people rape, it is integrated, amalgamated. Every time they got TB, it, it, it is a deep cold, pneumonia. I get a little cold, TB. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> I don't worry because knowing self, I walk with my hair, head up and cloud nine. And I walk with my head up and cloud nine. You think it's because I'm looking for the rain. No, I'm looking where I left my woman. And cloud nine. You put thousand pipers on the top shelf. I put thousand black women on the top shelf. You got a problem finding a good black woman. I got a problem getting away from good black women. And, and the reason I have that problem is that I love this. My daddy was a wise man. He picked out a woman that got this so that I could come this way. When I go to the hospital, I never ask, I want to see what my child looks like. I know what a child looks like. Because if I go up there and he look like that, he ain't going home. <laughs> Why? Why is that? I know that because when I was performing medical science, Go back to the papyrus of Hunever. Go back to the Evers papyrus, dealing with Planned Parenthood. You hear um, what a guy named uh, Clinton that fell up there? 
He's supposed to be dealing with an order to tell a woman she got a right to deal with her body. I thought that was all. Any jackass knows that, that a woman's body belongs to the woman. But, but I mean, it take a president to figure that out? Maybe, maybe come to the conclusion with blowing the job in the socks. Now, now, uh, it is a good instrument. It is a good instrument to be blowing when he's considering women's uh, reproductive organs. Now, now, because there's a paper, a medical paper called, listen to this, the Rockefeller Files. When did the Rockefellers get a paper in ancient Egypt? There is another one called the Goodfellow Paper, the Edwin C. Smith Paper. When did Edwin C. Smith and Rockefeller? This is thousands of years before there's a European country. They are the thieves, like in the museums here. What would happen if the Africans take their artifacts out of the museums in Europe? in America, both Americas, North and South, and take them back to Africa, there wouldn't be nothing for you to go to see your cousins. And that is, and that is the, the crux of the matter. When you go to the museum down the street here in Brooklyn, down by Grand Army Plaza, Plaza there, I've been there. Now they're showing you the Nubian exhibit. And you're looking for one Nubian. Here's a Nubian exhibit and nobody Nubian is there. Except you're coming to visit. And they're going to tell you about you. And you're leaving. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> I was entertained. You happy? You happy? I was counting the amount of commissioners in our city government, black ones. <laughs> and I, I, I couldn't reach the, the, the five fingers. I said, one, two, six, one. Trying to get to a, a five. Oh, no, you see, we, we, are, we want the mosaic. We want, a we want a beautiful mosaic. Everybody has, don't worry about that damn mosaic. They appoint their own. When the Germans were there, the, most of the commissioners were Germans. When the Irish were there, most of the commissioners were Irish. When the Jews were there, most of the commissioners were Jews. Now, Koch was there, and his holdovers become our commissioners. I mean, I like to tell it like it is. And I know it isn't popular. But what good is history if we can't relate it to our present condition? What good is history if all we're going to do is become amused by it? History is not a thing of the past. It may have happened one millisecond before my word. However, it determines what's going to happen now and in the future. Thus, it's important. You will not go down to the street or try to go to another country without at least a passport or a birth certificate. It tells who you are. And the reason they could put Negro and your birth certificate is that when you got married, you put Negro. Aligned with all of the major mon monuments at Warit, now called Karnak, all the way down to Abyssinbal. So that last, a few months ago, when they unearthed it, when they dug up, the oldest building in human history has been dug up. 9,000 years old. Only 6,000 years before Adam and Eve. Somebody has been here before Adam and Eve and Steve and all of them. But no. Again, we're going to the Holy Land. So one of us packed going to Jerusalem. One of us packed going to Beth Bethlehem. One of us packed going to Mecca. How come none of us is packed going to Abydos? And Abydos was called a holy land. 
more than 5,000 years before you had anything in Jerusalem. You didn't even have a place called Jerusalem. And Abidus is there. I'm not telling you something that is historically got to go to a piece of paper. Again, I will carry you there. But the funny thing is you're not coming. Because you got to see your cousins in France, in England, in Ireland, Scotland, Israel, Mecca. You can't come to Africa. Because you may see yourself in your glory and get frightened and die. <laughs> because you know why? One of your famous words, a nigger ain't shit. And when you say it, the veins here stand up to attention. You need a chief and a brigade to get it, your vein down. You do like this, and you can shit. And if they want, you want. You write the nigga ain't shit, I ain't shit. I am great. <laughs> we have gotten to the point of not knowing ourselves that much that I hear young men and coming on the subway talking to young women. Bitch, come here. The sad part of it is, the young lady come back and, what you want, baby? <laughs> young women answering young men as bitch. That's the stage in which we have come. We have gone so far in the depths that we could call the mother of ourselves bitch. The potential mothers we feel comfortable of saying, bitch. Don't talk bad about that. I went to Lamoine College to give a lecture. And I was coming in from the airport. And sisters were pledging. You know how I felt when I walked, seeing that, just to see them trying to come Greeks. What the hell? Even the Greeks said, that the gods came from Ethiopia, Zeus and Apollo. Go read uh, Homer's Odyssey. And as I drove in, some fool called attention. And the girls them did this. And she said, spread. The girls did this. Drop it. And each girl shake and a red draws. Pay red jaws, oversized red jaws for. You tell me that we have reached so low that this is the way we expose our women. And nobody saw. The president of the college saw nothing wrong with it. The dean. The academic dean saw nothing wrong with it. Of course, you know, as I got up after eating the steak and everything, my first statement was to the jackasses that caused our women to be so humiliated to the point that not one of those girls was sophisticated enough to know they were being insulted. Here is the woman that is shown in Egypt, the African woman, as goddess Nut, with God of air. She's the goddess of the heaven or the sky. Under her is held Goddess Shu, God of the air. On the earth is God Geb, God of the earth. In Geb is, uh, Goddess Shu is holding Goddess Nut at the two columns of heaven. What do they show as the two columns of heaven? He has one hand on her breast and one hand and her vagina, the two columns of heaven. I know you, you can't deal with that, brothers. You can't deal with that because you put your foot in her. Bitch, get your ass clear. Come on, bring your black ass here. Let's deal with it. You know it, you are officers. You got fights you gotta go to. 
brothers and sisters fighting, stab you sometimes. Brother Belling, my friend, went to break up one of them, and the sister turned on him. The man done black up her eye, she turned on the police. We understand why. And we, we, we got to deal with that. And the only way we're going to deal with it is knowing the greatness of our women. Hmm? I said the other day in one of my pamphlets, and a sister spat in my face one day about it. I said, heaven is between a black woman's legs. I see some of you shocked. Some of you are shocked. Even some of you sisters are shocked because you know that man gone crazy now. Because you have never considered yourself anything much. So when I say heaven is between a black woman's leg and you're a black woman and you got legs and don't know that they have heaven, I ask you then, where was your baby? It's a dark, what it says, your Bible says, it's a dark pit full of brine. Isn't your placenta a dark pit full of brine? Doesn't it have to do with your child? Yes, my mama is heaven. I don't, I just had a celebration of a birthday on December 31st, not my birthday. That's when my mother pushed me out. It's her birthing day, her birthday. But we took on the European. And when the African celebrate his mother and birth and kneel down in front of his mother and put her head face forward to her womb, and then she correct the young man or the young woman, telling him all the bad things he did Give him a few cough here and there. And then she starts to give the joy. And you did this. Oh, I love you for it. And so on. But we have been taught to be egotistical. Mine. I'm doing my thing. To hell with you. Because since you can't even give credit to the woman that gave birth to you, it is your day. You forgot. All she needed was a pill or a, ha a, a hot pin. And if that didn't work, the day when you come across her leg and break your damn neck. <laughs> no, this is what we are saying. We've got to go back. I know time is a passing, uh, and God gives time for the question and answer period. But we are talking. Time doesn't permit us to go down to item after item as what we did. No, last let us go now. Let us go when we start to educate the same people that say that we are inferior. If they believe that they are superior, why is it that when one of us comes in a whole crowd, if this was none but white folks, and I walk up here and stand up, everybody get diarrhea. <laughs> one little me scared the whole hell out of all of them. Then, I mean, if you're superior, how I, how I mess you up that bad? <laughs> no, they know. They know that when the Moors came, they had no school of higher learning until the Africans came there in 711 and established the University of Salamanca in Spain. They know they had no mathematics until Guido the monk went there from Egypt. They know that there was no philosophy from Thales in 500 BC all the way down to Aristotle. Each one, you see them coming to Egypt to study. Pythagoras gave a, 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 a silver goblet and said they had to go so much, to choose so much pain. They were going at 40 and 50 years of age to get teaching until the Alexander, the son of Macedonia, they nothing great about that bastard. I don't know what you are calling him great for. He's great because he killed Asians and Africans. Nobody called Hitler the great. 
because he killed Europeans. But Alexander came, he and Aristotle sucked the Grand Lodge of all of its works, carried down to what is called Alexandria, a city that built in his name, established the Periapatic School, brought in the Greeks from all over and raided the school. And now you tell me I'm a Greek, I'm Alpha, Bapa, Dapa, Gaga, Gaba, Shapa, Sheta. Some goddamn nonsense like that. Because you don't know yourself. There is no name you can use from your neighborhood only to show your tail. You can't sit to my table. You're not a bapa. And you can't sit to my table. You're not a lapa. But he's one that taught the goddamn Greeks. His daddy, your daddy, your mama taught the Greeks that you're trying to be like. But you don't know. You don't know. You've been watching Washington, D.C. And you watch Clinton and all the other Jivas turkeys. Huh? And you feel good because he plays saxophone and ass in you. Uh, ass, ass in you. But you are proud. You are proud of him because the Rhodes Scholar. Stop. Who the hell was Rhodes? Rhodes was a wash racist made out of Hitler look like a playboy in South Africa. He killed more Africans than Adolf Hitler know they were Europeans. And black men also take Rhodes Scholar. Can you imagine, can you manage a Jew taking an Adolf Eichmann scholarship? No, but you will take any scholarship. Don't care what it symbolizes. It symbolizes your mama, your daddy. The deprivation, the death, the murder. You talk about Holocaust. What about your brothers and sisters, the Tasmanians? Not one left. What about yourself? What about your Holocaust? In the triangular trade. And you watched the celebration. But don't know if I asked you to go to see the celebration, you wouldn't know whose street you're walking in, who laid it out. You would think that George Washington laid it out. It's a pity that when Phoebe Francis had a chance of letting, uh, what is her name, Tamasiki, kill George Washington, she didn't allow it. It's a pity. Yeah, you asked him who. Phoebe Francis. But that's your first cousin. The first place you were brought to the West was Hispaniola, not all Haiti and Sacramento. I told you you're great. If you know it. They say a mine is a terrible thing to waste only if you got one. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm proud. I'm a proud black man. Call me nigger colored. Red. I'm proud. Because when you call me, don't mean a damn thing. It's what I call me. Yeah? It is Banneker. Benjamin Banneker. Who laid out Washington, D.C. Yeah. When George Washington decided to do what he had to do, and only one exception was Benjamin Franklin. Remember, it is because they had stolen 22 tablets from Egypt and started what they call Freemasonry. They, after that, they added 11, what they call effable degrees, poke, jive talking degrees. That's the political degrees where you could pay off and get rich. Got nothing to do with the worship of God, Amin Ra. And at the end of your every prayer, you still go on Egyptian, still go on Nubian, still go on Ethiopian. Amen.
When you sing in church, amen. You still worship in the God, amen. And don't know, somebody tell it means so good. My brothers and my sisters, you know I hate to have to stop. Because I get a high. I'm drugged up right now. I don't use, I don't use marijuana. I don't use any of the other things. Speed, slow down, any of them. Because I'm high. I get a high. I get a high watching black women. I get a high. Get a high talking to black men. I don't need all those stimulants. I get a high knowing me. And you got the same high as yours. My high is your high. There's nothing unique about me that isn't unique about you. There's probably only one thing. I know it. And probably you don't. But there's no reason why you can't. Like I said, I don't need any money. I would lead. I would lead a tour of guardians to Egypt. I'm going to at least expect you to pay my fare. <laughs> and I'll take two weeks treat any amount you want. And I'll take you through the entire caboodle. Some of you have been there already. Cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to know your history and mine. If I cannot do this for my people, then I'm a phony. At the Guardian, don't have to worry. Right down the street, there's a place called Alken Tours. I'm going to get, uh, uh, this is your responsibility. You work with your committee, I get you with Shifre, it's going to cost only cost, there's no profit to take a delegation of brothers and sisters of the Guardian, and we're going to see when your ancestors produced law and order, put it on the walls and the ceilings. As the man says, what, 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 uh, what the guy named used to say, oh God, I feel so unnecessary. You know, it's good. It's a good feeling to know yourself. Men, know thyself. And there it is at the temple of Karnak long before it get on the temple of Delphi in Greece. My brothers and my sisters, if I was not placed in the womb of my mother, a black woman, I would have been angry with God. I would have said, why do you want to do this to me? Why are you going to pass the greatest thing on earth and give me second place? And I told my father, man, you crazy? Didn't you see that black woman passing? <laughs> but then I, 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 I know I got I to gotta, I gotta take a little pity on the brother because I finally found out what's better than a black woman. Two black women. <laughs> So now you know where I stand. Yeah, I am a damn fool for a black woman. I walk my knees out, my elbow out, my brain out for a black woman. When we get to the point that we will worship our black women, we will not need the guardian anymore. Dr. Ben, ladies and gentlemen. Go for Dr. Ben one more time.
We're going to start the question and answer period. So I ask all of those of you who have any questions or answers, please line up here in a single file behind the microphone to get ready to present your question. One question per person, please. And don't, don't be afraid to line up and ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, a copy of this videotape, this was the segment was videotape, can be purchased from Transatlantic Productions. The address is 616 East 23rd Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11210. The telephone number is area code 718-859-4046. And the person to contact is Durrell, as D-U-R-E-L-L-E, -E, or Rainey, R-E-N-I-E. -E. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you was aware coming in, um, outside in the lobby here, we have a, a collection of books to be purchased. Um, it would be deeply appreciated if you do purchase some of these books. Um, the lecturing is fine, but you're not going to learn it all from lecturing. We're going to have to read. There's no doubt about that. There's also a suggested reading literature on the table outside that you can pick up to, to canvas over, take with you, and then possibly purchase some of these books, take them home, don't put them on your shelf, but read them. And now we'll start the question and answer period with one question per person. Um, These are still used in the Ethiopian church. It's called the Ethiopian Orthodox Church now. It used to be called Coptic Church, but because Ethiopia have more Copts than Egypt now and demand that the Abuna, the head of the church, be in Ethiopia, and Egypt refused, Ethiopia broke away and called her church now instead of the Coptic Church. They call it the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And the, all of the, uh, the um, rituals and everything is done in Gize. There is the, the, the Bible in Gize. And uh, the, the, the language called Cop, or Cop, for the people of Coptus, is used in uh, Egypt uh, by the Copts. Uh, by the way, the Copts still use the 13 month calendar. Uh, uh, 12 months of 30 days each and one month of five days. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my question to you is uh, what do you see for the future of uh, blacks in America and the world all over? Where do you go from here? I wish I could tell you, but I, I, one of the things I am not is a prophet. I, ha I haven't met one, I know a lot of people that say they are. But I, when you can prophesize, I want date, and I want the time and place. And since nobody is able to do that, I, I am not going to attempt to. I could make a, 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 because when you say African people all over the world, you got to remember that you're talking about uh, over 100 and other African nations. You got to include many nations in the South Pacific, like Vanuatu, uh, by the way, I'll give you an example to see what happening that we don't know. You know, there is an embassy, a foreign embassy in the black neighborhood in Harlem. The nation of Vanuatu have their embassy at 140, 100 and, uh, 147th Street on Convent Avenue right on the corner. They, they, they took, the people of Vanuatu took an African-American by the name of Van Lu and made him the ambassador for that country, an African country in the Pacific. They used to call it New Hebrides, now called Vanuatu. So, that, so we, we move in, uh, all over uh, African countries have African-American, African-Caribbean people working in government in different positions. Even Blyden died in a position, Du Bois died in Ghana in a position. Uh, the ambassador from uh, Uganda was married to a sister from here, and all kind of thing going on. Hello, yes, ma'am. My question to you is, how can we as African people regain our history? Because we have so deeply brainwashed. Well, like you said, you're doing it tonight, and you have done it before, I'm sure. Uh, you need just some more research, constant reading, but visit. Uh, there is nothing to beat the actual site. Visit. Go and see what your ancestors did. 
I was um, talking to a man the other day, and he says uh, that Weaver was the first black man in, a president, in the president's cabinet. I told him, my brother, sorry to disappoint you. The first black man in the cabinet of any president was in the president of, uh, cabinet of George Washington, the first cabinet, a man by the name of Alexander Hamilton, whose grandmother was an African, uh, African woman who had made slave and lived in the island of Nevis. His grandfather was an uh, uh, Englishman. When Alexander grew up, he was sent to the island of St. Croix, uh, then the Danish Virgin Islands. It's bought by the United States in 1918 for $25 million, the tree island. And he grew up there in the children's home. From there, he came to the United States and became the treasurer, first treasurer of the United States. He, the first black man in the, in the cabinet was in the first cabinet. And, and by the way, just go around and, and study and, and keep. Buy an uh, easy book, J.A. Rogers. You know, we don't say much about J.A. Rogers because he had no PhDs behind his name, no M's, no S, and so forth. But we sleep, J. Rogers, we slept a lot of these brothers and sisters who had no D's behind it, no Greek names and titles. But when we were paying no attention, those are the men that kept our history going. They were the great servants. Unfortunately, when black studies came on the campus, we didn't do it because we had to follow the European, we had to have the PhDs and not these at all. Yes, yeah, sir. I've never heard you speak before, but this speech is very enlightening. Thank you, sir. Um, and one question. I have a 14 year old son, right? And this is for him and all the other young brothers in the street, right? He's, a, he's very angry, right? And I would like to know, you know, what would you say to a young brother in the street, you know? Turn well, I am an angry man. You heard me tonight. I'm angry. I'm as angry as a guy out there with a pit bull. I'm angry as a guy out there with a Saturday night special or a Uzi or whatever they call it. I channel my anger to change my people and myself. Every policeman or policewoman in the Guardian is angry. The chief here has to be angry. He catch more racism than they do. The higher you go, the more the racism. But he challenges his anger. I, I, don't, I don't want him to get up, get up and testify because we are brothers. We know what's happening. Okay? Your little son, take him. Get. Take him to a member of the Guardian Society. They got meetings and they got uh, things for youngsters. Let him see. Let him, let him go and see a prostitute, how she work. Well, I got uh, eight daughters. Uh, I didn't just lecture alone. Uh, <laughs> and I got four biological sons too. And I used to carry my daughter park in the, by the Braddock Hotel. It's no longer there now. In the snow coming down, I have sit down and I said to each of them, look, that's a prostitute. Look how she, the snow is 25 degrees above zero. Look at her and how she's making a living. You want to be that? Then I will carry them to schools. I carry them churches, synagogue, mosque. I didn't take any one of them and said, no, these are the other side. Here is an engineer in the building. Here is a doctor. Your father is a, is a, is a PhD. And I showed them members of the family and others. I said, no, pick your choice. After you reach a certain age, I'm going to turn you loose, put the key in your pocket. You are on your own. Take that little boy. Give him an apprenticeship. Take him around. Carry him to the, if you, don't, you can't know everything, but put him in the hands of those who know each. But if you want to know about law, put him in the hands of a police. You want to know about crook? Put him in the hands of a crook, if that's what you want. But I think the police should know enough about crook because they catch them. <laughs> but that's it, my brother. Practice. But you've got to do it. You can't pray it. You could go into church a hundred million times, get on your knees. Nothing going to happen. You've got to do it.
Good evening, sir. <laughs> I tell you a joke about that. I went to Brazil. I had been there as a youngster at seven, and I went back as a man. And they told me that uh, at the favela, that I would see, uh, uh, I could get a nice looking woman. So I went and looked at this one, and that one passed, and she, uh, that one was better. The next one passed, it was better. By nightfall, it was time to go home, and I ain't got none. So, so pick out, pick out one. <laughs> I want to know, know what you think about the Martin Luther King's birthday being celebrated in all 50 states. I also would like to know, do you agree with that black people here in America are being dehumanized every day and they're subject to an inhumane system? Let me make this clear and you have to listen each and every one of you. I would never have gone one millimeter of an inch any place with Dr. Martin Luther King. Listen carefully. But I would celebrate his day of honor because he died for me. Now listen carefully. Keep listening. I believe if you're going to treat me with violence, I got violence for you behind. Therefore, I wouldn't have gone with King. I would have gone with Garvey or Malcolm. But Martin Luther King equally died for me. His methodology, I didn't like. Because I'm not going to say that not anybody hit me. Because I know, just like they are now, Coretta want them to build a statue to Gandhi. She didn't know Gandhi when he was in South Africa. But she forget, she, again history, Gandhi didn't start uh, 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 nonviolence. He read Akhenaten. Akhenaten is called the father of nonviolence. He got rid of his army in Egypt so much, put his cousin, Simon Kari, to rule simultaneously with him, let the cousin did the executive matters of the state while he pursued nonviolence. So I hope you got it clear what I've said, because you can always hear it the wrong way. Let me read it in capsule form. I did not believe in a nonviolent campaign of Dr. King because there's no way that Bull Connor was going to put a dog on my woman and I didn't try to shoot him or pay a junkie to shoot him. You know, get it clear. Looking for any dream. I'm not Jesse Jackson. I'm not, look, he dreamed, uh, you see, uh, Clinton tell him there's no more dream for you up here. They, they give Vernon Jordan, who got shot in his penis, they give him a dream. He could dream about being sh getting a shot of penis. It's true. You see, uh, uh, again, with due respect to Dr. King, due respect to Dr. King, I, I respect him as a brother who sincerely believed he was freeing me, but I couldn't follow his methodology. Peace, brother. Can I your hand, oh, why not? <laughs> Greetings, my brother. I'm curious about one thing. Growing up, I hear that the black race is the original race. In that sense, I wonder did the white race come about as a mutation? from the black race or was it due to geographical reason? My brother, based upon the behavior in this society, I wish I knew the answer. And I don't want to speculate because I, I don't believe in speculation. I'm, as an Egyptologist, as you know, I am like, uh, I'm a member of the Guardian. I, I'm a policeman who traced down crimes, the crime of history. And I don't want to create uh, a hearsay and alarm I don't know how men get here except from a woman. I cannot tell you there are all kinds of theories. There's the anthropological theory of man evolved fiction. If so, how come I don't have a vagina? 
I don't think I could get nothing off my penis but, but some wee wee. I don't think I could get nothing off my anus and sometimes if it get hard, I got trouble. So therefore, if, if there was a first people, it was a woman. So you see, you see, already you're all mad with me. But then I try to use my little logic. See, some brothers got problem with this because they want their ego don't stop them. Some brother said, man, when I made a baby, where you made a baby? <laughs> you passed some sperms. All the sister had to do is wash you out. <laughs> if you could make a baby with that sperm, drop it on the ground, let, let it jump up. <laughs> no. It needs that sister. If that sister don't pass them beautiful eggs coming down there to meet that beautiful sperm and have this massive bang inside that fallopian tube and go down in heaven. Huh? And, and come out ten months later. That's what did the trick. No, brother. I don't know. and Nobody knows. I know that the oldest... Now, hear this, see? The oldest known fossil human found in the world today. See how I protect myself? Yeah, because I want, when the rumor go out, I want to hit straight. Is a woman called Deknesh. The West call her Lucy. 3.2 million years old. The oldest man found to date is the skeleton of a man. Uh, Deknesh is found in Ethiopia. A man found in Olduvai Gorge in Tanganyika, now called Tanzania. He is 1.7 million years old. So, I mean, brother, and that, that's up to date. You know, they got older one yet. So if, if you would say, more than likely, it's an African, because we know that life, to be procreated, comes from, have to have heat. Like Dr. Jeffrey said, they don't, what they made, it don't come from the Iceland. <laughs> About mutation, I don't know. I, I guess you would say that the migration of men outside of the hot climate, but then the Asian will say to you, the people in India will say to you, we come from the hot climate. I mean, if you want to see black people, you know, Africa ain't got a monopoly. You could go all around the world, Panama, you go right down the equator in Panama, well, all right, they came from Barbados and Jamaica and all them kind of places. Uh, you could go to and the Congo. You could go, uh, let's go right over to Vanuatu. Uh, 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 let's go to North Solomon. The North Solomon brothers and sisters are so black that the palm of the hand black. The only thing ain't black is the na fingernail and the teeth, uh, the eyeballs. Other than that, the completely black till the blue. I took some picture, in a, not, not, you know, I've been there up and down, took some picture of some Tuvaran people and North Solomon people, and they were under a tree. And they came out blue, with a blue sheen. I tell, I, I'm not joking, with a blue sheen. They are so black against the, the green of their tree that it, it made a blue sheen. But I, 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 I was traveling, and the government, uh, first class. I, I got to see when I said first class, I got to clarify it. Uh, and the sister was serving in first class. And the sister, you know, got the sarong and she came. And she said, can I help you? I look, oh, God. <laughs> to be an Egyptologist in Egypt to function under, with government protection, you need uh, specific training as a uh, degree or in, in some field. You need your linguistics. You have to speak at least three, uh, and read and write at least three uh, foreign languages. Namely, one you must write is Greek. Uh, you should have a little Latin, but that's not important. German and French. And English, of course, because many of the European writers, and let's, let's deal with it, uh, wrote in those languages. And of course, you must uh, learn to read at least uh, two of the indigenous ancient languages, uh, well, I said two more of the men that said, you have to learn the hieratic and the dematic writing to decipher for yourself. Unfortunately, Egyptology 
doesn't pay good, even at the height of my career uh, at the university. The, the best I made, and that was 1987, was $40,000 a year. And, that, that, and I had to fly every day, every week to Cornell. I fly up on, on Monday and fly back on Wednesday, every week for 18 years. Uh, $40,000, what that? Uh, my, 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 my daughter came out of school. Uh, my daughter came out of school uh, and uh, <laughs> made about like 60, 70,000. Got a school and summer job for that. So it's got to be, it's, to be an Egyptologist, you, only institutions hire you, uh, universities, museums, etc. So it is not a lucrative field, and most, uh, and all, so far, uh, African Americans, African Caribbeans, and Africans at home uh, don't bother with this field because, as I said, the reward isn't in the sense of material things. You have to make up your mind that uh, you have sufficient. Uh, and I, th I think that a person making 40000 a year should be supporting somebody else also. Uh, for instance, in, in Dabood Village, many of you have been there. Uh, now we are producing this year the first medical doctor from the village. They have Nubian doctors from the cities, but none of them from the village. But she had to promise that when she finished, her medical school, and she's going to finish this year. She has to do her in two years internship there. Plus, she had to sign up with me for giving the money all these years that she's going to be the doctor in the village. She's going to stay there, live there, marry there, and everything like that. Uh, you, you, what I'm saying is we need Egyptologists to make the interpretation. Here we've got a city just found, the, the, down at, uh, 50 miles from a symbol. They just found... In, in out at Abydos, in the hills, in the mountain, they found ten solar boats, brand new, in in a, in a, in a, in a, in a cave like, uh, in the hills, brand new. Polar. They just found uh, a new, a new pyramid, not new. Uh, they just found a pyramid. You say how they could find a pyramid? Because in the Hamasin, the dust, the dirt, move from one place to the and cover up this pyramid for years. It's the pyramid of uh, Mut went the the, the queen of, one of the most favorite queen of uh, Pepe the second, that would be the sixth dynasty. Uh, but not one African involved with any of this. I can, I can only go to one here when they're doing something there. One person. I start to train the Nubian brothers and the government tell me, what are you going to do with them? I say, I go work with them. He said, because they can't be an Egyptologist unless they go to university through the whole rigmarole. Uh, well, well, time tells. They will get, they'll be Egyptologists. Uh, uh, I said, there are many ways to skin a cat without putting them hot, besides putting them in hot water. Now, they, but they're going to have to be in, in the Nubian territory. They could go in Sudan, uh, down by Naga, at the Lion Temple, since that is in their hand. And I trained, like in Papua New Guinea, I, tr I use high school students to start a museum there because they said you have to have a college degree to start up to be in a museum. But I asked the, the people there, are you building a museum for the Europeans or are you building a museum for yourself? So th they said the, the, the labels have to be in Latin and or Greek. I said, there are no Greeks or Latin here. It's going to be in... in um, uh, Bislam, that's the language they speak. It's a mixture of the indigenous language and English. It's called Bislam. And we put the titles in Bislam. The people kind of complain. I said, that's what you do? Put brackets right underneath and put the Greek word. But we got the museum is there. You, in your own place, you do what you want. He who pays the fiddler calls the tune. And that's until... Until we are able, until we make up our mind, we are able, based upon the amount of money we're spending. Until we do the things we got to do. If you, if my daughter want to get married now and have her wedding in an air-conditioned place, where in Harlem she's going? I got to go downtown to a white man. Is that rational? Is that rational with the amount of money we spend for booze? 
They tell me, is it that rational amount of money we spend for drugs? No, let us build, let us do in our community. There's nothing wrong with having rich people in our community. And let the rich and, and us work together and build things. What happens is that we f refuse to use the word corporate body. All of us together, not 5,000 people, but 20 with this cooperation, 10 with that cooperation, five with that cooperation. But no, we don't trust each other. We only trust the minister going with the money Monday morning to a white bank. And the money go downtown, spend around all the place and don't come back to us. No, we, 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 that's why you see they were so willing to kill Freedom National. It isn't that they have done so, so bad. I mean, Bush's son took off a whole bank. And they slapped him and said, don't do that again. <laughs> yes, sir. Which, 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 which Bible? Jewish? No, it can't be any. Jewish, Christian, or Muslim? Christian, okay. Me too. I'm dumbfounded because it doesn't make sense. If God got the intelligence to make a woman after after creating, look at the create. See in the, in the in the first in the first page, it is God made a woman and a man and sent them out to multiply. But God got a second change of heart. That's Genesis 1. Genesis 2, God is going to create the, the man still. The man going to be lonely. How the hell is he lonely? He didn't know nothing about nothing. He get lonely. And God lose the formula of creation, so he make a woman out of Adam's rib cage, taking a rib cage. Okay, that's all right. But then God made the animals and bring them for the man to name them. But in Genesis 1, he made the animal before he made the man. Okay, how are we going to happen? You remade the world again? Let's stop again. And, and Eve knew her husband. She was married. Who, who was the preacher? I mean, where should she get the license? No, no, okay. That's second thought, you know. Uh, they, they said that little children who born from a mother and father and they don't have a marriage paper are illegitimate bastards. Work with me. Does Mary have a marriage certificate? Up to now, did she get a marriage certificate? And Jesus had brothers and sisters. You know, the, don't feel bad, brother. The Bible is allegories and mythology. Allegory and mythology. Now, you could blow your mind over that if you want. Take it for what it's worth. If it don't make sense, leave it alone. If it makes sense, use it. I pray all the time, Lord, give my woman enough brain that when I'm sick, to treat me good. Lord, I know you mess up there trying to hold the sun from bumping into the moon. I ain't got no time messing with me, no goddamn thing, but a new shirt and a new car. I am not going to waste your time with all that damn nonsense when I got a good woman here and I'm a good man. I'm going out, go get it. No, Lord, go back to sleep. I don't need your help. You are battering the man or the woman or them. What going to happen when somebody die and go to heaven and find that God is a Puerto Rican woman drinking Irish whiskey. <laughs> a lot of you men going to be sad. You're going to try to leave heaven and go mess up with the devil. No, man. Look, religion is a belief of men. It's a very glorious thing. I love religion. But understand what it is. 
It is a desire of hope. Man doesn't know the answer. He's grouping. It says, I believe in God. Of, not I know. I believe. To believe is the absence of knowledge. It's indeterminate. And we, we treat it as if we know the answer. And so we kill the Muslim killing the Christian, the Christian killing the Buddhist, the Buddhist killing the Jew, and everybody killing because they got the only answer. If they have the only answer, how come they got to kill somebody else? Leave it alone, brother. Otherwise, it's going to send you crazy. You go over to, to Triborough Bridge there and look on the right-hand side going over. You see that 12-story building? All kind of people will blow the mind. Uh, sisters, a sister. I, I, I used to go over and do volunteer work. Think about half of the places, sisters, who have had one sexual in, uh, encounter, and then the minister or somebody or mother for an out, and she got to get up in front of the audience of a church and testify that she's a sinner, she's dirty, that she had sex. Why not? Damn, she old enough. <laughs> and she don't have sex and ain't get married, she should stay there. 80 years old, the damn thing. Cancer go and eat it up anyhow. Dr. Joseph Ben Yorkinen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you patronize the vendors in the back, and we'd like to thank them for coming. Our book, Enterprise Books, Fine Brown Frames, and Food on the Sister Nazija. Okay. Adopted children. Husband of Gertrude M. England, was educated in the public schools in Brazil, South America, U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Croix, and Puerto Rico. He received his B.S. in civil engineering in Puerto Rico, Ph.D. in cultural anthropology in Cuba, and a Ph.D. in Moorish history in Spain. He also received a L.L. law degree. Dr. Ben, as he is affectionately known, has practiced law as an assistant prosecutor in Puerto Rico, and he has worked as a civil engineer in both Puerto Rico and the United States. From 1945 to 1970, Dr. Ben was chief of the African desk of the United Nations Education Scientific Cultural Organization, UNESCO, dealing with cultural, anthropological, historical, and archaeological information. He also served as the civilian advisor to the permanent African missions to, to the United Nations from 1957 to 1964. Dr. Ben has taught at numerous universities in Africa, the Caribbean, North America, and South America. Dr. Ben is presently a professor at Al-Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt, where he recently retired from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, where he was professor emeritus. Dr. Ben is chairman of the Alkabulan Foundation and the Alkabulan Books and Education Materials. He is author of 28 published books, 16 unpublished books, and a six-volume encyclopedia on Africa. Dr. Ben is presently conducting educational tours to Egypt and the Nile Valley, and he is presently directing an archaeological digs in Aswan, Egypt. Dr. Ben, Dr. ben recently celebrated his jubilee Jubilee year in Egypt, March 1939 to March 89. We are most fortunate to be in the same time and space with this multi-talented genius. We now present to you Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanin, Dr. Ben. like to express my appreciation for being able to address you today and to tell my nephew that uh, it's a pity that I'm not going to be here next week to hear him when he delivers his message so I can call him 
up and tell him more. <laughs> but that, that's the privilege of the youngster. The youngster always put the old man in a position where he could pat shots them. And then the, the old man can't get back at him. But old people always have something up their sleeves. So he had better be nice. Today is a particularly good day for a number of reasons, but in particular because it symbolizes a day or a week that started in the 1930s by a man that we too often forget until the 20th or until February of each year. A man who once wrote a book called The Miseducation of the Negro. I am speaking about Dr. Carter G. Woodson. If Carter G. Woodson had said today, I am going to write a book on the miseducation of the Negro, the book would be extremely timely. Not only are we miseducated, providing that we're going to accept the term Negro, and that is a part of the miseducation, but we are miseducated in many aspects of what we read as quote unquote Negro history. Let us just start off by examining a few of the fundamentals that we hold so dear to our own self and cause us untold sacrifices. The concept of even Man and woman in the world, otherwise called Adam and Eve, we will die rather than give up that supposed miracle. African women are constantly condemned over that thing, and I can't see educators continuing to teach it, at least women educators, because I can't see a woman accepting that she could have written such a thing. Adam and Eve, a woman, a man getting a baby through his rib cage, while the woman standing up there watching her, watching him getting the baby. There's another thing that we talk of so much is the immaculate conception and the virgin birth. I know you didn't plan to hear any of this, but then when you listen to me, you could hear anything. <laughs> we teach this as if it's the only time it was ever said some 1900 years ago and do not know that the story of the virgin uh, birth, and it's not the virgin birth of Jesus, it is Mary's birth, if you're a Roman Catholic you know that, that Mary was supposed to have been born from a mother who had no sexual intercourse, and then she repeated it, her son <laughs> is born from a But that wasn't new to Africans, we'd done a lot of things. Isis. The story comes 4,000 years from Africans before ISIS. If you should go right now to the temple of Setaiwan, in a place called Abydos in Upper Egypt, in one of the many rooms there, you will see on the wall not only the written story, but in picture form, friezes showing the immaculate conception of ISIS receiving the sperm from God Osiris to produce, produce the virgin-born child Horus. 41,000 years before its repetition in Alexandria, Egypt, before it went to Greece and then Rome. I started at this point because we tend to be celebrating from 1619 in Jamestown, Virginia. We are the only people who were born and started our existence in slavery. We drop out of the clouds in slavery. And so when we are going to speak, like I'm here, I said it's best to speak from where you are. I look right in the corner beside this building when I came and I saw a celebration of quote unquote black history. I don't understand what that is, but it must mean something. And there were books of musicians, baseball players, basketball players, a tremendous celebration of 
quote unquote black books. And this is the hospital and medical school. So I knew that I would see a book on Hale B. Willers. I guess you may not have ever heard the name, but he's a fellow somehow or the other that performed the first successful heart surgery on a kitchen table in his office with a butcher knife. By the way, he was a doctor. And then I said, well, since they didn't have Hale B. Williams, maybe Charles Drew is someplace they hidden in the background. And then I didn't see Charles Drew. Uh, I guess he ran out of too much blood and they, had, they didn't have a chance to pump someone and bring him so he don't die on the wrong side of the tongue. I then looked to Dr. Mesut, the man who many doctors said the king could not be saved, who took that butcher knife from the back of Martin Luther King. And so on, I continued to look, Dr. Wright, at Harlem Hospital, and numerous other physicians. And I looked to see if they didn't have something on Mary Seacole. Because long before Clara Barton came to the, this Crimea, it was Mary Seacole, not only attending to people, but had to attend to um, uh, Clara Barton herself. And nobody speaks about Mary Seacole. <laughs> And so on, I could go on all week. And none in that uh, bookshelf and the display. Is it accidental? Not at all. It's no more accidental than we continue to teach that Hippocrates is the father of medicine. How in the world could Hippocrates be the father of medicine and in his Hippocratic oath, I think they should change it to the hypocrisy oath. There you have Hippocrates giving and swearing oath to practice medicine according to Alhil, according to Esculapius, the Greek name for Inhotep, who died as a physician, among other things, more than 2,500 years before the birth of Hippocrates. We need to really examine a lot. Basically, it is that which deals with our mind. We are now engaged in trying to recapitulate what we have done physically. Very good. But to me, the greatest problem is what's hurting us mentally and spiritually. It is what's causing crack to run amok in our community because we refuse to deal with it. We refuse to deal with even concept dealing with our existence as a people. We refuse to use the word Holocaust with an S and the N behind the T when it comes to our treatment as slaves. And we treat that as if it was just an accident of a trade agreement went bad. But everybody else has had a Holocaust but us. And of course, we got so sophisticated that we decide who we are going to reject and not reject during camp political campaigns after we get nominations, of course. So to me, we have to do quite a lot. And we must do that. that. It is not enough to put us in the textbooks. What we need to do is to go in the textbook in a qualitative manner. For instance, would I enjoy one of my great-grandchildren reading a book on a hero, Christmas Adams as a hero? Would I enjoy reading the Buffalo Soldiers as my child's hero? No, not at all. They were not African heroes. And if he reduced it to black, they weren't black heroes. They were black fools. Christmas Adams got shot in the rectum defending his masters, defending the colonists against England. Not one solitary African got free by his act except him. He died. <laughs> The Buffalo soldiers were not to be recommended. They were disgraced to us. The indigenous people, which they call Indians, 
had saved hundreds, thousands of us. And look at us. There we are with our masters running, helping him to kill the same people that gave us protection. I know you don't like much of this because I'm touching your corn. <laughs> There's no way I'd go give my child an assignment of Phyllis Whitley to read and tell her she was a great black woman. She was not. Went to France and lost her mind. Read the stuff she was saying about black people, who she held in disdain. At the, at the other hand, we have accepted Styron and others to tell us that Nat Turner, all he wanted was some, to get rid of some white woman. Ain't no big deal, he didn't need to want that. That was coming anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after that said, uh, all that said about black men, how the penis elongated and all that, and even in the early Bibles, hell, if I was a white woman, I wouldn't want a white man. What the hell he gonna do with, with the damn thing? The way he's describing, ain't got nothing. I would have looked for all the black men there is. But, you see, we, we got to deal with history not from his story, but from our story. We got to deal with our story as it is written from an African point of view. That is important. There is no such thing as objective history. No one can write objective anything and be a party to the objectivity. Europeans must write history of Africa from the European point of view, how we met each other, the interests involved in the history. When Europeans write about me, they cannot write about me in justice. If they write about me in justice, they must close shop. When Europeans speak about me, they cannot talk about me in terms of antiquity because they will have to close all the museums and all the libraries in the world that they have. And they can't do that. What we need to do, however, as Professor George James, James said in his book of like names, Stolen Legacy, that the stolen legacy must be corrected by ourselves. A man called Hudson, an Englishman, and he should know from whence he'd speak in this case. He was a governor general for Ghana, they then call it Gold Coast. And Hudson, in the last part of his paragraph in the highway, said, we shall probably have to wait until African historians write for the African reading public before we know the true history of Africa. Hudson was dead wrong. We don't have to wait. No probability. If we didn't write, Hudson wouldn't have any education at all. There would be no England for him to talk about. Long before England, a place called Pyrrhus, P-Y-R-R-A-Q-S, dealing with the first writer of Europe, a man called Homer, in his Odyssey stated, even the god Zeus and Apollo came from Ethiopia. So we don't have to write. Have some think that we have to now write because nobody knows about us. And we need to tell people about us. That is untrue. Even the concept of a god. There's no record of any other people on the face of the earth other than the people of the Nile that started the concept of a god, a deity. Akhenaten spoke, Amenhotep the fourth, I was called Akhenaten, spoke of the god Aten, A-T-E-N, before there was a Jehovah, Jesus, or Allah. Akhenaten was writing in that. Before an African, if in fact there was a Moses, <laughs> I mean there's no record in Egypt about Moses, whether you sing go down or go up, Moses. No record whatsoever for the sick, tricky, great propaganda. Now, we got to deal with things now. Let's, let's get it down front. There is not a single prime minister that's been in Egyptian history by the name of Potiphar. No record of anyone in Egyptian government by the name of Joseph. 
part of Jewish folklore. And of course, not a single Jew was alive. That will get you in trouble for inviting me. Not a single Jew was alive when the last pyramid was built, much less the first pyramid. Abraham, the first of the Jews, and by the way, I may not look Jewish, but I'm much Jewish as Scotch. You say, when your mama Jewish and your daddy Jewish, you ultra Jewish. They call me Palasha, another Palasha, and better Israel. But Moses, as I said, was supposed to have been born in the city of Goshen in Egypt. Went to school in Egypt. They said in the Bible, he was learned in the ways of the Egyptians. Of course, Egypt is in the Middle East. I want to know east of what? <laughs> I thought, and you must forgive me being an African, an African, we don't think good unless the missionaries baptize us. <laughs> and since I wasn't baptized, I'm not subject to think right in the rest of my life. <laughs> I thought that everyone who went to school in Egypt, before Moses and subsequent to Moses, if in fact he did live, were learned in the ways of the Africans of that time. The papyrus of Hunefa, of the Book of the Dead, said, We came from the beginning of the Nile, where God happy dwells, at the foothill of the mountain of the moon. They are, the Egyptians couldn't be more specific. They said, what? Beginning of the Nile, the blue Nile is in Ethiopia, the white Nile is in Uganda. At the foothills of the mountain of the moon, Kilimanjaro means mountain of the moon, and Renzori means mountain and moon. That means Kilimanjaro between Kenya and uh, Uganda, uh, Kenya and, and um, uh, uh, Tanganyika, and uh, Renzori in Uganda. So the central East Africa being the place where the Egyptians said that they came from. We have to look and examine our history from another perspective. The slave boats, and I wonder if I should call them that, the boats that brought Africans to these shores and then enslaved them. They didn't catch slaves and brought them. They caught African, free African people, brought them and placed them in slavery. Quite a different thing. I mean, they call it semantics. And for those of you who may not understand that those Africans were all at least cousins, like you are, the African cousins in Barbados being cousin to those in Mississippi, who are cousin to those in Panama, which Colin, what's the fellow there, the little joint of colored joint of state, uh, staff? Powell doesn't understand it. He needs to check with his own granddad from Jamaica to know that he is also cousin to those in Ghana. And those of us at Virginia, that Virginia blue blood blacks of the Jefferson farm, <laughs> need to know that we are cousin to all black people that the slave boat did not bring West Indians, <coughs> Georgians and Mississippians, they bring pure, pure old black folk, otherwise called African. I know many of you got problems with that when you look at the mirror, especially when you got a, a coat of clear all on your face. <laughs> then you know you got problems, but I, I, how, how can you call me black? I am not actually black. <laughs> I don't care how actual or not actual you are. They're going to call you niggas just like they call me. As a matter of fact, you calling yourself that now as if it's a badge of honor. Every time I go on the subway, here is this young brother. I see the nigger and the white man. I said, well, what was a nigger? A bug? A, a, a white man and a nigger. You, somehow you fail in your classroom. I mean, it's, it's against you. you know, teaching these teachers. <laughs> they saw the emphasis. Every time a black kid in your class says, nigga, you should slap him in his damn mouth. 
and let a nigga struggle in the deck. You see, we, it, I said again, it's not so much anymore the information as the quality of the information. We've got to get it right. We are out here condemning little black girls now and saying we have a teenage problem, pregnancy problem. Of course, none of the boys are go across the television screen because we can't see if he's pregnant or not. You see what I mean? Uh, his pregnancy don't show. You understand how it is? Of course, uh, some pregnancies, some, some flaky. But, uh, but even then it don't show because it's in the hand, it's not in the stomach. But we have never had a teenage problem with our girls being more pregnant than anybody else. When white women used to get pregnant, not married, they could go to Switzerland or some place, and therefore the statistics never show pregnancy. It's a deep cold she had. One of them swelling cold. <laughs> Our girls took care, take the child. Although mama kicked her out the house, Aunt Sophia was right down the block. And we had the extended family, Aunt Lucy, with no relative at all. We took take the girl in until the child come. Then mama ran down, oh, my grandchild. <laughs> you understand? But then there was bastard and illegitimate children. As soon as white folks couldn't go travel anymore, those children became the children of a single-headed family. Are we going to put in the nonsense that when we see a sister and she, the children got four different surnames, like Billingsley, poor Billingsley couldn't distinguish. He took talk of Parsons and stuff from, from uh, up there at ha uh, Harvard and got confused his own self. Are you going to say that the sister is promiscuous because she has four children with four different surnames? No. It showed me the sister is intelligent. She, got, she had to have bread for her children. She got one fool come and lie to her, the first fool, tell her he's in love with her, rip through her like a buzzsaw, and then she got the first child. She says, I'm not going to have no brothers anymore, anything like that, but hunger here. And she's not going to let her child starve to death. She tried the other fool, this is slick tongue, and he comes back and tell her, I'm not like the other one. That brother is in me. And the next thing you know, she's there giving birth to another baby. But society is looking at the sister as if she had intercourse with herself. Nobody's talking about the brother. Another sister who's talking about her isn't talking that she didn't tell her son not to rip the girl off. Instead of that, she is bragging that her son is such a hero. As a matter of fact, he's a ruler of Valentino. <laughs> she don't know that Valentino only did that in the, on the movies. In the house, he was a mouse. So it's the quality of the information. When we talk about ourselves in the society today, we must look at the condition of the greatness of the African woman. I have been charged with being ultra pro African women. That's a lie. I'm not ultra pro African woman. I think they're gods and goddesses. Pro doesn't describe my love for African women. Nothing exists unless it's an African woman. If I hear in the morning that all the African women died, I come and suicide immediately. <laughs> they're not nice to look for. What else is there to live for? They ain't nothing to live for other than that. Brother said, I can't find me a good black woman. We go to the whole house, that's all he goes to, who houses? <laughs> my problem is that I can't get away from enough good women. That's my problem. I don't have to carry these fellas around to find some black sisters because I don't know where they're looking. They must look in that town in the hillbilly show. Again, the quality. Why not praise the sister? Every time we get a brother that goes to school, control basketball, 
a little bit uh, up there in the air, run with a football, get a baseball contract, the day of the marriage. I'm looking to see the sister that has been laying up behind the building, all behind the closet in the taxi seat, in the bush. I know he's coming down with his sister. And I look, and it's not the sister. It's the woman that the sister worked for. <laughs> Somebody got to write about that. We've got to write about it and deal with what happened, to, what happened to his mama, what happened to his own sister. He couldn't find anybody like that. Brothers, I don't mind if you're mad. I don't care if your wife is one. I don't care. That's your illness. I mean, it's about time that we talk about it. We, we can't just come and, 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 and gloat in what some one of our ancestors did in building a pyramid. We can't gloat in the fact that our ancestors get the word writing, the medonetia, which the Europeans call hieroglyph. We can't gloat in the fact that medical science started with us and the hundreds of copyrights that were written by African doctors, both male and female. We can't gloat on the fact that the Ten Commandments came from the negative confession. It has nothing to do with any Moses and Mount, uh, and Mount Sinai. Long. Moses himself was charged with committing murder, at, according to the Torah, against the Pharaoh's soldier and was running from punishment. And he didn't reach to Mount Sinai until 40 years later. Somebody had a law against murder before he ran to Mount Sinai. But we can't deal with that either. We're going to have to deal with something different on Sundays and Saturdays and Fridays. We're going to have to deal with a theology that deals with the African uh, philosophy of life and not the distortions that took place in the Hebrew, among the Hebrew writers, the Christian writers, and the Muslim writers. You see, when we start to think about ourselves, just think and the furor they have in the Soviet Union today. And were it not for an African of the Soviets, the Soviets would not have even given recognition to their own language. Because the Soviets used French as a language they were ashamed of Russian wanted for Alexander Pushkin, who had to tell them that the language had substance. And we got to look at the facts. For those of us who call ourselves Christians must realize that it was an African that made modern Christianity what it is. It was Augustine, otherwise called today Saint Augustine, who wrote the Confessions, the Holy City of God, and a number, as a matter of fact, 45 more works that made modern Christianity what it is today, set the moral principles, particularly those rules on sexuality. We must explain it when we start to deal with sexuality as if we had some <coughs> commands falling from the sky and grabbed by some lovely direct out of the mouth of God. And no goddess, unfortunately, that it was this Augustine. It was another African by the name of Tertullian, whom the church never liked. Therefore, they never made him a bishop who wrote most of the fundamental social laws that Aquinas copy and plagiarize in his own works. And we got to deal with it. We have to deal with these things because if we do not, then we left them and they are, people will assume that they are correct in the manner which they are today. We have to look and realize that what happened in 1619 or 1620 in Jamestown, Virginia was only one advent in the totality of our experience as an African people. Though important it is, how can we ignore more important issues that brought that about and yet directly related to us here on these shores. I recall not long, not long ago when the assumption was that Haitians started AIDS. You remember that when you were scared of every Haitian you saw. <laughs> Man, you say Haitian and black folks run a mile, jump to window, commit suicide. 
They will let the AIDS then get them. Windows got them. Had a girl, Haitian girlfriend, you chase her out the house. Haitian wife, you got rid of her and your children. <laughs> Had no idea what Haitians mean to you. You forgot that the Haitians were the first Africans brought to the Western Hemisphere. It was there that, those of you Catholic, law your history, it was there that Pope Martin V ordered the Knights of Genoa and the Knights of Malta to bring Africans from Spain who had lost power. After entering Spain in 711, ruling Spain until uh, 1485, 774 years, when the order of the church in confiscating these Africans' property, stealing, forgetting thou shalt not steal, brought these Africans to Hispaniola, today called Haiti and Santo Domingo. So when you look disparagingly to the Haitian people, remember, they're your senior cousins. You came there before you got here. That was 1506 when you got there. You went to Barbados in the interim. As a matter of fact, the first 13 Africans who came to Virginia did not come from Africa. They had sojourned over 168 years in the Caribbeans already, coming from Barbados on the way to holiday in England when the ship was uh, well beaten between Cape, up Cape Hatteras. And they came in uh, with a storm that started around Cuba. Thus, when we start to refer to people as Geechee, check yourself and see if you're in a big bit of Geechee Indian. <laughs> you don't have to speak with the accent to be a Geechee. Just look at you. They get written all over you. <laughs> we have to look carefully. We have twenty we have twenty-eight days to teach the world all this history. <laughs> We got 365 days to teach the youngest history in the world, and the oldest is 24 days. But they're saying to us, you are great. You don't need 24. I think I'll go along with that. We are great, but we want our, 20, our 365 that we're entitled to after all. We made the calendar. We made the calendar with 12 months of 30 days each and one month of five days still being used in Ethiopia today. The 13 month calendar. It is our geologists, our scientists who made the world's first calendar when there was no Greece, no Rome, no Jesus, no Jehovah, no Allah, no Jew, no Gentile, no Christian. Our ancestors were on the Nile, first in the Grand Lodge of Sokara, then in the Grand Lodge of at what is today called Luxor, originally we call it Waset. The Greeks came and changed the name to Thebes. We make the first calendar in 10,000 before the Common Era, revised it in 4100. It is that same year, 4100, when we gave the world the first Holy Scriptures. Book of the Dead, the book of uh, the, the book of the Dead, what you call it, properly the book of the coming forth by day and by night, the book of the gates, the they, 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 um, admonition to God at my heart. We gave to the world a symbol of justice copied by the United States Supreme Court. No mention of it. They can't mention it because of the distortions that put it in. Instead of mass holding a scale, balance, she holds a scale upside down. It can't be just this. That is just this. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and other symbols that were stolen by Honest George. That's the fellow for the cherry tree. <laughs> when are we going to are we going to write a book that our experience with George Washington and not list him along with Adolf Hitler? Are we going to put Thomas Jefferson different to Goebbels? Huh? Are you? You better don't, you scared stiff. <laughs> but was he any different? What makes the slave master Jefferson, slave master Lincoln, slave master, and Lincoln was in charge of slave, read his papers. Slave master Jefferson and Washington, do they suddenly become good because they were Americans? Or a slave master is a slave master is a slave master? What make him any better than Hitler or Benito Mussolini? Because the victims were Africans? If the victims were Europeans, would they be just as bad? Ask yourself. Mama used to say, if you ain't gonna shit, get off the pot. <laughs> I know no your boy, your mama, but my mama used to say, and I ain't afraid to say. Because the mama said it, it must have had some great wisdom. <laughs> no, you all can't say it because you got PhD and DDD and all of these. <laughs> and, and you got your Appa Lapa, Dapa Kappa, and all that. All kind of Greek nonsense talking. You say, I am a black Greek. How the hell have you became a freak? <laughs> the Greek on nothing. What are you bragging about? Go to Egypt if you want to see. Go to Sudan. Go to Ethiopia if you want to see what you were. I won't carry you to Israel and say, I believe that Joseph had a little temple here. And I said, he said, he's a foundation there. I believe that Solomon did this here. No, when I carry you to Egypt, I said, here is the temple of Ramesses the sixth. Here is the temple of Nefertari, not Nefertari. Nefertari was not an Egyptian. She came from Netani, uh, where present-day Iraq is, and Mary Amalotet the fourth, otherwise called Akhenaten, she was not an Egyptian. <coughs> I'm sorry for all them long neck Nefertari you had, because she was not African. <coughs> and that had none to her, you know, the four heads that were taken from a tomb in the place called Akhenaten. And they assumed that that one had to be Nefertiti. And the rule in Egyptology is, unless you fight a Shirak, which is called a Katush, on the place identifying the person, you cannot say it is that person or not. There are four different heads, but the Europeans call that one because it looked more European than all the other four. <laughs> you see? <coughs> We have to, again, deal with the quality. Because today, the issue of abortion and right to life and right to no life and all this thing is up in the air. And we are asked again that not to say anything because we cannot think that sophisticatedly. We can't think that so sophisticatedly, but yet we give to the world the concept of Planned Parenthood and that Queen Pharaoh had some soot. She ruled from 1580 to 14, and 15, 15 to 1480. And Hatshepsut had gotten her scientists, her pharmacologists and so forth, to provide her with a method to stop pregnancy while she was administering the affairs of state, being the first woman to rule a nation. Not only did she rule, she became the only woman, the only person to rule as a king and a queen simultaneously, stating that if she is to rule the country as the king, then she must look like the king. So she put on a false beard, men's clothing, don't get around because she had two babies. And then got her scientist. That is called today the Ebers Papyrus. Of course, Ebers was a thief. He had nothing to do with it. You see, like the Rockefeller Papyrus, the Edwin C. Smith, these are the thieves, those names. Smith, Rockefeller, all of those, they had nothing to do with it. 
They either stole personally or by knowing it was stolen goods. The harborer is as bad as the thief. That's your jurisprudence. Not mine. I'm a victim to Western society. Now, when we thinking again of dealing with our youngsters, we have to deal with them in a way in which they are going to look at their mommies. I, 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 I said I'm stuck on black sisters or African sisters, and I don't make no apology about it. Because you see, I, I think I was born from an African woman. I think so. You see, I got doubt about my mom that I was born for her. No doubt about my daddy. That's what some of these brothers want me to think. But I don't think that way. Last time I've been in the labor room, and it don't have to be in a hospital, I could be in the back of a bus in the park someplace, right, in the bush, I didn't see one man giving birth, not even to doodle. <laughs> Cause him that he complained. And I'm not dealing with no Adam and Eve thing that my mama giving birth was a curse. And that's why she had to bear pain because she had messed up, Eve messed up with Adam. You know, you know the thing you all got going? But the reason women give, uh, have to have pain is for the sin when I committed with Adam. I mean, that, that story ain't got nothing to do with black women. Because black women ain't as stupid or other. Uh, to go talk about she's cursed because she had sex. Well, what God give her a vagina for and get Adam the penis for to play tic-tac-toe? <laughs> huh? Why provide them with all that, that equipment? <laughs> huh? If you didn't plan to use it, have them use it, keep it. <laughs> no, that's not the reason she got pain. Don't tell black kids that, that giant story. She got pain because a five inch diameter head is boring through her pelvic region. And then a 12 inch wide pair of shoulders is boring again, making it even bigger coming through there. That's why she got pain. All them brothers talking the damn nonsense. You got twins, diameter, do do, and you got pain. <laughs> don't tell the don't tell the children that nonsense. Deal with honesty to the, the the African children. If we are going to rewrite the history to tell the truth, let them tell the truth in every department. Let there be no reservation for truth. Our youngsters need to know the truth. So that sisters would not be running around here douching with Pepsi Cola, trying to avoid. The other day, I saw a case. My one, my daughter, one of my daughters is a physician, and her daughter is a physician, and she was showing me a case without name, of course, of this sister who came in, and she was completely eaten away in the inside from the amount of douches she took with Pepsi Cola, <laughs> believing that that was stuff up and getting pregnant. So every time she had sexual relations, she douched immediately with Pepsi Cola. Sure, she didn't get pregnant, but she was eaten away. All that kind of ignorance because of stupidity and fear. No, we have to teach about the Hale B. Williams and the Charles S. Jew in terms of all of this. We have to teach in, in terms of how the Africans dealt with prayer. One of the, the most difficult things is our misuse of the concept of prayer. When we write, we write the name of God, anybody else God, in lowercase, G-O-D. As it says, small case, G-O-D. But Jesus with a capital G. Jehovah with a capital J. Why? Why is Jehovah and Jesus any better a God than Unkulukulu of South Africa? Who in Gai of Kenya? You are saying that? I think Chinua Achidwe spoke to you on this issue and things fall apart. Between the issue of Mr. Brown dealing with uh, Chinua, as I said, with uh, uh, the, the, the concept of God 
in Nigeria, Mr. Brown and Mr. Okonkolo. Mr. Okonkolo is saying that he had to change Choko, the guard, because he had not delivered rain. And the people had gone to him and asked for rain repeatedly. Now it was time to change to get another guard. Oh, yes. Saying, at least what I am saying, it is not enough just to know what we did in ancient times. It is, we are compelled, we are bound. When a student come in to a teacher and say, please give me a chance to do my exam orally. Refuse. Under no case should you allow it. The people who gave to the world writing, Medunetia, saying, now, I can't write. The people who give to the world mathematics, their descendants are saying, now, I can't build. And they built the pyramids. They built all those temples, whether it be the rock temples or not. They changed the course of the Nile with Sisastra the third. They went and found instruments to measure the distance from the Earth's surface to the other planets and moons and stars. And now saying they can't write under no circumstance tolerate that kind of behavior. We are not going to be mealy mouths with our children. No, not only can they learn, but the most successful students I've seen in Harlem Prep. When I was there with Carpenter and all of us and the founding of it and worked with them, were the students who dropped out. They didn't drop out because they were dumb, they dropped out because they were bored. They were bored by the method of what the hell I want to know Shakespeare for. <laughs> I don't know where the bobo, but I'm no Shakespeare. Cometh unto me in the morning, and I shall compensate the greenest vehicle and the quadruped. That's damn nonsense. <laughs> Can you imagine me in the middle of Harlem? I run up to a brother. I say, Cometh hither thou in the morning. <laughs> hit on me in a mental institution ward 9k without the padding <laughs> maybe we, we could get in a lot of jive talk man and, and think that brothers walking around saying Shakespeare all day long in the street <laughs> forgetting that Shakespeare wrote seven plays dealing with African huh? not two plays not gentlemen of Verona that not all that and he wrote more not only Shakespeare, but his partner Bacon also. By the way, Bacon is the one. Get the thing right. When you say the T, every T, every dot, and so forth is true. Ain't no right. So Francis Bacon was commissioned by James to find other people to rewrite. The Gutenberg Bible by Martin Luther, the priest that was kicked out of the Roman Catholic Church. And he went to Eton, Eton College, University of Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland, Cambridge, and a few other, and took 47 men and himself, and wrote a Bible to suit James. We need a Bible to suit ourselves. We need a Bible with a prophet, Martin Luther King, the prophet Malcolm X. The prophet, the prophetess, the prophetess, the Jonah Truth, prophetess, uh, Harriet Tubman, and so forth and so forth. Why not? No, we can't do that. They were righteous people. With all the hell we caught, we are not righteous yet. <laughs> what more should happen to us to become righteous? Let us look at some of the characters in the Bible. Abraham is righteous. And he raped an African woman, Hagar. Or you only know what you want to know. And you blind when you want to be. 
Abram is 85 years old. He got an 18-year-old wife. Uh, <laughs> walking across 4,000 miles of desert. <laughs> no, no wonder he didn't mess with her. She gonna get pregnant because that 85 year brother. I'm 70. And Lenny don't listen enough there, but uh, uh, your uncle is still working. And I'm 70. <laughs> I'm 70. And I'm slowing down a little. I'm not, and I'm not tackling no 18 year old girl. 19, yes, but not 18. <laughs> So his wife Sarah, Hadassah said, look, I can't get nothing to you go on and deal with Hagar. So he kept his poor servant girl, African servant girl. Your Bible says Egyptian, but where is Egypt? Last two weeks ago I, I saw Egypt it was in, in Africa, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, being African, we don't think right. And so now, you're going to tell me that Hagar, servant girl, her food, her clothes, her, her house, everything she got comes from that house. Think of the day when it is. It's around 1300, uh, 1675 BC, the 13 dynasty, this scenario. She can't say no to a master. So she's raped. You call it statutory rape. She gets pregnant. Everything go good until finally Hagar shows Abraham where to find his spot. So Abraham tried and Sarah and Sarah got pregnant. Sarah is now 85 years old with her first pregnancy. No. <laughs> Those last students in your classes studying biology. And you tell the students. An 85 year old woman had been a delayed, ultra delayed <laughs> menopause. If she is 85, he is 60 plus 85. He's 150 odd years. And that's her first child when she's 85. You gonna tell a little black doctor in the classroom that story that way? Ask yourself, aren't you damaging the child? To ask that young girl to believe that she's gonna delay action till she's 85 to get pregnant. She gotta get a corporate job first. So she <laughs> so she gets some money. And then when she's 85, she'll have her first child. She really has life. <laughs> Mother's first child. Are you going to tell that child, as we are telling them now, that when uh, Lot raped his two daughters, that he was drunk? A drunken man can't rape himself, can't rape anything. He's gone to drunk, fall out. <laughs> he was not drunk. He put lick on his breath to justify raping his daughters. And that we became black because of a curse put on hand. After the flood, are we gonna tell that? It's still in the Mormons, but the Book of Mormons still got that story, how black people became black. The Roman Catholic Bible used to have it. All the Bibles had it. Until one by one they start clearing up the act. Are we going to challenge it or not? Or are we going to just put it as an accident that took place in the Bible? There's you no know, accident. People put it there knowingly what they were doing. Are we going to call some people semitic, schematic, hermetic, and all kind of ticks and tacks and heights to avoid calling them Africans? Or are we going to be able to quote unquote, be diplomatic. A very ticklish term for me to understand. You know, when you think, 
and what is happening today. Let us deal with a reality. And this is rather ironic, particularly coming from me. Do I believe the day will ever come when the United States government will ever be able to accept a true presentation of African history? No, I don't believe it. But I believe we ourselves could take it in our hands to teach irrespective of what the government thinks. Am I advocating a revolution? I'm not advocating there should be one already. <laughs> The 1960s were not playing games when black brothers and sisters stood up at Cornell University with shotgun in defiance of the state police. They were not playing a game. When brothers were shot down in the Algiers Motel and, and sisters all over the place. When Rosa Parks got up and said, damn it, I'm not moving to the back. See, it ain't Martin. I hear you all talking all this nonsense. It ain't Martin stop nothing. It's that black sister, Rosa Parks. <laughs> you all are a bunch of hypocrites. You don't even remember, no, you don't even call her name. <laughs> because the cracker ain't ready to recognize us, so you don't recognize her too. <laughs> but the cracker will say in the morning, Rosa is it? You say, yeah, Rosa! <laughs> no, I know you're mad because I have a lot to say that Mark, Martin got tightened up. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know that the ministers get tightened up. <laughs> Some of you tighten them up yourself. <laughs> and if they preach dry bones and very good one day, you get double tighten up. <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with that. Ministers should get tightened up. God gets tightened up in the garden. God said, let us make man. Do you think that God was talking about that? <laughs> when God said, let us make man, you were talking to Mrs. God. I don't let God get married because I don't want to have God tighten up. So let God get married. He spoke to and this is God called a goddess. Why is there a God and no goddess? Because of your European orientation that God can't have a woman. Mary. Christians used to worship Mary. It was not until the Nicene Conference of Bishops learned the church history that they demoted Mary and put up her son. Just remember this, Holy Mary. Mother of God, blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Every Catholic important mass starts with the rosary. The blessing to the mother of Jesus. But men being afraid, Western men, afraid of the woman, had to demote Mary at the Nicene Conference of Bishops. Let's deal with it now. We got to deal with it. And we can't be afraid. When you go to Egypt, you're going to see a God and a wall, God men. He's a God of fertility. How are you going to show the God of fertility? There he is with an erected penis. Trump and Dick look at the throat. <laughs> A penis that never falls. <laughs> when the feet of the goddess of, 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 of love and nature, goddess Nut, they show her naked with her vagina here and everything. You can't show it with here, they call it pornography. You can't talk. You can tell the black church, you don't speak about the lady's vagina. <laughs> what do you do if you don't speak about it? Make signs? <laughs> I mean, this, this, this sense of, of, of ridiculousness. Go to Egypt and see the show. I know. I don't 
pray to go to heaven. I came out of heaven. I don't pray. My mama is heaven. When you go to Egypt, I show you, got a snoot. One hand, her hands, and her head down in this corner. Her legs down in this corner. Her back is forming the heaven. They saw God shoot, the God of the air. Holding, and the caption reads, Goddess shoe, holding goddess nut, as the two columns of heaven, one hand on her breast and the other on her vagina. God gave the God of the earth laying forward, holding her hands out and her feet separate. And they call it the formation of the heavens. Yeah, it isn't so. Then I ask you, the abysmal deep which the book of Genesis is speaking about. Have you ever seen a placenta? Isn't it dark and abysmal? <coughs> or oh, you have never seen any brothers? You think babies came from stock? <laughs> then I suggest when your first child is being born that you go to see the thing. Like in my house, when a child is being born, people of all age, from the day old to a thousand of days, <coughs> come for the great event. We are there with the mother, with the midwife or the doctor, and everybody's talking to the sister. If it's my sister, my wife, or my daughter giving birth, we are all there at the event watching. What are we going to see? Nature at work. A child coming from heaven. If we have known this and could deal with it, then bro brother 16 years would not be raping sisters 90, throwing them over the roof. Because we would understand the way we understood that childbirth is the coming from heaven. That's why I have no birthday. I'm 70 years old, but I've never had a birthday. My mother had the birthday. My mother had seven birthdays. She gave birth to seven singular children. So at the day, December the 31st of each year, when my mother was alive, I had to go down two knees after I just got me a can make two hours and I will show you. And put my, put my face to my mother's womb. And she would scold me, chastise me for all the wrong things she thought I did that year. <laughs> if it be staying at two months. <laughs> Then when she tired, she would say, and these are the things I still love you for. Oh, those these are like the hair. <laughs> and then she would say, get up, I'm going to anoint you. And she would take the ginger, you call it acetabeta. <laughs> you think you got something modern, you got it from home. <laughs> Africa, not Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> And she would anoint me and wish me her blessings and say, go on, son, until next year. That's Mother's Day. My mother didn't have no day set aside by Washington, D.C. At Mother's Day, when I would buy that a white a rose or a red rose, depending on. No, that's not Mother's Day. That's that ass day to spend money. <laughs> Those days are made to sell all the old store things, the things that the stores couldn't sell, they raise the price for them in the business and make you laugh like a perfect act. <laughs> they got another one coming up, they got another one coming up called chocolate day. All the bad, we need to eat and drink that old chocolate, you want to buy. <laughs> and you mad because the man in Bring a box of stupid chocolate. The man has been nice all year round. Treat you good. Take you here. Take you there. And you mad because you didn't bring a stinking box of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna teach the young brother and the young sister that too? 
Got that sister getting mad, losing a good man with all the junk they got out there to offer. Get off that horse, that European stuff. Tell that sister to be glad that the brother's treating him. Tell that your young boy that he don't treat the sister with not. The sister's not a drum. If you want a drum, you can go anywhere and buy a drum. Sisters are drunk, you don't beat her, whether she's pregnant or not. Sister can never be so dumb that you gotta hit her. That's what we need. You can't call your daughter the first time she mess with a man, you call her bitch, horse, slut, dog. And then the first time she ever let the boy touch her. So she gets pregnant, and that's what you call her. The time when she needs you most. You are a mother who she should come to. You have hurt, you got experience. You know that you barely got away. <laughs> but now you call all those names. And your son, the, the, the black, the chief black tip. <laughs> he is down the black screen, everybody including the dog. <laughs> and every girl come to you. I'm pregnant for your son. Oh, my son can make babies. He he not old enough. He's only twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You haven't told your son about his responsibility to that sister, that other woman's daughter. Oh no, you think he's a hero? Every girl he got pregnant. And then you tell her, why didn't you protect yourself? I guess she went by herself. <laughs> and you say, well, marriage is the most important thing. It is the most important thing. It wasn't made in heaven. It was made to protect that sister and her child. So that that damn fool, when he got crazy, well, at least have to support that child. And if they don't, they scramble with that on that piece of paper. Did you sign it? Yeah, the jail of truth. I want to Yeah, we got, this is a part of what we need today. Not only what we have done, and God knows what we have done is a lot. What we have done, both the African woman and the African man, that African woman in her beauty, as she stood here in the southern part of the United States, with cloak guts in her hand. A man looking shrivel up, working morning, noon, and night before the sun come up and after the moon done gone. The man is still working and got nothing. She can't afford him some meat. But the, 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 the uh, intestine and the ears and, and, and the testicles, that's all. So she decides she got to get something for a man. The sister. She already realized that he aren't going to be educated, so she sent her daughter down to school. And tell her daughter to turn off the light in the night and talk to her brother in the dark. A little bit of what you learned down there, girl. And her husband, she said, Willie, you know all black men need Willie. <laughs> Willie, baby, I got something good for you tonight. He said, no, I know you got that, baby. She said, no, 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 not that, Willie. <laughs> I got another kind of steak. How you get that, girl? How did you steal? No, I had to steal. They get me. You can take as much as you want when they're killing up there. She said, I got to see this. And she got a long steak. And she's pushing it through the guts, pushing up the ship. I tell you what it is. When he turned away, he said, God, girl. He said, Well, take it easy, man. Take this easy. And she, then she watched it. She pushed it through the watch it. Two hours gone. Watch it. Then she seasoned it. Then she put some tenderizing bush and different things in it. She, she's a scientist. She's a chemist. She knows what this bush is going to do. She sees it. Her master don't know nothing about that. That's why one of the reasons to go around the world capturing people to get seasoning. Up to now, we still don't know what we're using. 
And then she put that thing in the cook and the pressure and the all that thing, put a stone on top the two, the two fine men and get a pressure cooker. Said here we take it. We here to take it, because you know he started doing it. <laughs> and we're The sister had found, I know that you're all talking about Coca's bag and all this, but look at the historical significance of it. Look at the role of the sister as she tried to protect the health of a man. That's what attached to that chitlin. I've never eaten it because I smelled it the first time, my first encounter. But I ain't got no compunction if I'm hungry, I'll be chitting it down. <laughs> and thank the sister for her invention. We have got to, we have got to deal with the, the, the economic skill of the black sister. Make $40 a week and spend $90 out of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Pay the rent, go to the market and, and get ready for the church service tomorrow, get some money to put in there, 10% of our wages are gross. Is that Mr. Goldman from the girl? Tell him I'm going to pay him next week. <laughs> and when car comes for the TV, tell him it break down again. <laughs> Take out two of the tools. I hear no number two. Tell them to turn it to see if it's going to work. Or at least put a cockroach inside of one of the, the, the wires so it can't turn. So she don't have to pay this month, she pay next month. And you say, she's done because you go to college and got your Akavara, Dakabatella. <laughs> and you tell them about how great and, and intelligent you are. And she isn't, but she got enough sense to get your ass in school. But she is not. No, don't talk about her. Don't talk about her. Brothers, don't talk about her trying to rule the house. Let her rule the damn house. <laughs> she ruled the house when you were in there, trying to get out. You're going to let the European tell you that woman is supposed to run the house. What's wrong with it? In Africa, the woman runs the house. Everywhere. Even in polygamy, the woman is the head of the house. But she relates to the brother. My woman ruled me, and I'm the boss of my house. I am the master of my house. My woman will tell you that. For 42 years, I've been the big cheese in the house. <laughs> if I get on the phone now and say, baby, this is your master calling. <laughs> She would say to you, yeah, master. And I said, I want this cook. Yeah? You want this? Something else with it too, baby? Yeah. <laughs> and when I come home, she would have my nice hot water running. You young people say, I ain't going to do that. You have the liberation, but that's what you're going to mind. And she said, um, uh, uh, the boss says, you're what? Uh, you're going to take a bath, man? Because I need slippers and everything ready. And you're, bro, that time she, she's already got this. was the second naked day. She's done change. I've been in the house five minutes, and this is the second naked day. This is the C2, 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 C2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and she passed by and shake it, doing one of them funny little walk and things like that. And the mask of the house. <laughs> I wonder what got you went lately. And then she come there and I eat my food that had been warm and she said, Baby, I'm going to rest in here. Is there anything else you want? No. <laughs> you had a rough day with them people who were here? Yeah. <laughs> Crawl up in the bed, the sister snoring down. <laughs> The first, the only people that snore in tunes are black sisters. <laughs> I got in the bed and the sister 
automatically by, by mistake, by chance, a foot, this beautiful foot come on down. On top of me got this chain. The next thing you know, she says, uh, Master of the house, I, I, I know you ain't got much money now, but I, I saw a little green, this nip, St. Patrick's Day. I saw that nip, don't do that, St. Patrick's Day. It can't be without me, you know. They, they stole my bagpipe. You gotta to come to Egypt and say, God got it best thing in the bagpipe for thousand years. BC, they won't know Ireland yet. Now, oh boy, I love me. And and, and then the, the sister said, uh, I said, believe me, I don't have my hand up on that. Morning comes. We're done with perspiration, you know. Try to get out of bed, try to go to the bathroom, try to fire with bathrooms. Got a new radar, cause nothing ever working. <laughs> and when I get to the bathroom, I remember. Got a snoot in my bed. And I said, hey, hey, baby. You remember the green shoes you were talking about last night? Mm hmm. <laughs> Did I have a little green hat to go with it? <laughs> I think it would look good with a little pink contrast dress. And baby, don't forget the gloves. <laughs> baby, can I go with you where you're going? <laughs> That's the master of the house. Don't take that away from the little sister and tell her, this is woman liberation, this macho nonsense gotta stop. And all you know that she's going to the movies with 15 other women who say the same damn thing. The brothers are going with 15 brothers saying the same damn thing. Brothers not helping sisters across the street, fully pregnant. Brothers sitting down on the subway, sisters fully pregnant, holding on like this, going like this on the subway, stopping, and they're saying they're individuals. We gotta turn that around. Don't let Gloria Steiner tell us to act abnormal. They know where in the world that you're going to see a sister pregnant. And you should sit down reading the newspaper, laughing and make a jackass of yourself. And the sister is pregnant. An old man or an old woman comes in and you watch him like he got leprosy. Don't get up and give him a seat. That's not African. That isn't the way that we had our culture. The queen mother decide who's going to be the king. We have always given recognition to a woman, to children, and to the elders. We have to go back to the rite of passage so that the young girl and the young boy could know when they reach at that certain age what it means to become a young woman. We don't wait till one day when she gets pregnant then talk to her about it. We go by step by step. When she's a breast start to make formation and the boys start to get here, we have a ritual for that. When they're coming out, we have another ritual. We don't have to wait for 15 years old and then we have a cotillion telling the people, my daughter's ready to be screwed. Who got the best thing? <laughs> no. It's about time that we deal. If we want to be an African people, let us go back to some of our African values and incorporate them in the text. There are many ways to do it. You can't tell me that I can't teach a certain subject because I could call the text anything you want, write it down in the syllabus. But if I'm a halfway good teacher, I would teach anything. I will teach in economics law. I will teach in a subject of law. I'll teach dog breeding. <laughs> because if I anything worthwhile, I could get it in there. Yeah. I'm going to go down with those I understood. I'm supposed to make a break for question and answer period and for a little rest. And I forgot about that. Because when I get charged up, I like to keep going. This thing, you see, I'm. I'm so charged up with being an African. 
That don't mean that somebody is in nothing. But what I'm trying to talk about is that missionaries and everybody that really say all the negative things about me. They said, well, I must have balance. I don't have no damn balance. I'm not going to say, well, these do this too and those do that too. No. When they talk about they don't have balance, I am not stopping for balance. I'm crowing and beating my chest about the African men and women and children and particularly the African woman because she's the one that's catching most of the hell. And see the one that we got to do something about. If you want to change our system, then you must change our attitude about our women. You, the black man cannot afford any longer to be dropping babies with sisters here and there. Don't look back to see if the baby's even born. As soon as the sister said, I missed my period, you got to go to the drugstore or the bakery to buy a loaf of bread. Don't come back until 24 years later, it's a big piece of bread. <laughs> Every time I go to a graduation, even it's kindergarten, I can't see the brother. The brother who's still home telling me, man, I got to go to my job. What the hell are you talking about? Is your job more important than a little kid? The kid don't see you. The kid come home with a little, little drawing. I'll do this little drawing, that's true. <laughs> But I take the I take the drawing and say, you did this? And of course, little wooden head said, yeah, daddy, I did it. I said, it's the most beautiful drawing. I better rub it in back to hide. <laughs> but no, we, we've got to do these things. We, 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 we've got to, you can't go to church and pay 10% of your uh, gross salary in a church where there's no library. In a church where they don't teach African history, the church only teaches them to go to heaven. Heaven is here! Don't give a dime to any minister, not a single dime, to a minister that cannot put the history. The A and E with Richard Allen taught African history. Brothers who went to start the Black Baptist Church, the first thing they had in there was history. When they sing the so-called Negro spiritual and when dance all over heaven, they were talking history. It was the only way they could speak history to each other. The African people have never been neglectful of our history. Now when we've been called all kinds of names, in the Hispano, Latinos, and all this kind of damn nonsense. Huh? My mother's from Puerto Rico. She qualifies as Hispano Latino. She's my mother, so I could say Hispano Latino. I speak Spanish. I speak Portuguese. But I know that those camouflage don't separate me from the African people. Because it is the African people that made Spain what it was in 711 when uh, Paris invaded Iberia, set up the first Iberian system after General Hannibal had gone there and cross the Alps all the way down to the Po Valley, being ready to attack to take Rome. It was an Af another African. When Scipio and Askisa had gone down there and sold out to Rome, every morning when Cato would get up and say, Carthage must be, must be burned. Why was he saying this? It was in anger about the people who had civilized Rome, when Rome was called Etrusca. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. We can only be ashamed if we don't know our history. But I walk higher than the person at Malcolm, Ozzy Davis at the eulogy of Malcolm said, looking down at that tall frame, the shining black prince, that every black woman would like to have had as a son, as a paramour, as a husband. I say, go one more step, Ozzy. I don't walk as a shining black prince because I'm too tall for that. I walk with my head in the clouds, up in heaven, because it has to be there. That's the only place I'm gonna see my woman. Much higher than 10,000 pipers. No kind of drug crack can't get me high as I walk around. When I look at my daughters, 
and I look at my woman, I look at my sister, I'm high, so high that no cloud gets that high. I'm too high in the air to be used in crack. When I think of that black woman and Zinha, as she stood in front of her troops for 13 young, long years and fought against the Germans, the Belgians, and others, Sarah Asante, when she took up the, uh, the armed struggle of uh, uh, ancient Ghana against the British, after they had jailed King Pepper and carried them to the Shetless Island, I got to think of that. When I think of Makeda, when she went down to, each, uh, went to, to Israel, and according to the Torah, and the behest of Solomon, who begged her, please come down here. And she went down there and sucked a little bit of Solomon, chain, chain, making crazy. Yeah. How can I feel small? And that's why they don't want to teach us our history or letters. Since again, you're going you to catch hell. And you know, you can't catch hell in your audience and you're not new. But then the question will be how you going to back her up? It's all right to say, what she should do? She should do this and that and this. And what you should do? Standing your behind her, sitting down, getting rusty, without supporting her, without she having an assurance that she do this thing. If that comes as far, she got you behind her. And I don't mean 2,000 miles away. <laughs> no, it is not a time for either of us to sit down and wait for the other to do something. Then all of us say, well, look, man, it's only me. You can start a revolution. Only you. Only you brought a, a life into this world or protect a life. Only you. So why not only you? could make another kind of social revolution. Somebody asked me, what can I do? I'm only a little person. You could do a lot. Start with yourself and your child. Start looking at yourself in the mirror. The other day, I looked in the mirror as I always do. I said, mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Come on, Jay, now. Who, not the fairest of them are, who is the blackest thing in this world? <laughs> My mind. And my mirror said, You, baby. You. <laughs> Who else? I said, All right, now we could stay there another day. <laughs> yeah. That's what we got to be. You see beauty. You, you, how do you judge standard of beauty? By the African woman. Nobody else could come in my neighborhood and win a beauty contest. But the African woman, it's an African contest. Therefore, African qualities and dimensions are going to be the one that prevail. Breast line. <laughs> Behind line. <laughs> Kissing qualities. <laughs> See, the, the, and the fellow said, I'm talking about thickness. Man, if you have never been kissed by thick lips, <laughs> God. You see, the Lord wasn't stupid when he was making Africans. He make us in proportion. Here, the other day I was uh, just going through these pearls. And, and, and I haven't put the comb in to start making that and the thing jack. <laughs> and, and the fellow said, man, you got nothing here. I said, what the hell here you think I should have? I'm an African, that's the here we got. I said, what do you think I got nothing here? So the sun don't penetrate. That's why nature give me that hair. My father took an extra two minutes to make that kind of hair. <laughs> that one just accidentally <laughs> did. No, the, 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 the gist of it is feeling good about oneself. 
That's what I'm talking about. It, it is you. You got to feel good about yourself. And don't mind if somebody say you stupid. Did that make you stupid? That's his or her appraisal of you. But it got nothing to do with you. You heard it here, and it ends here. And the thing. No, the thing that you know got to do with you, you heard it here and it stayed in here. But you make the evaluation. And only you. It can only matter when you have made the evaluation. Pro or con. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, make sure that it's pro. It's got to be pro because those that preceded you passed down their beauty. Pass down their want, their love. And how else can you avoid getting it when the kind of people that you came from was nothing but the people of God themselves. Themselves because God is both a female dimension and a male dimension. If God made a man and a woman, not created one and made the other. If God created both, or God made both. But God got to discriminate as we do, it would seem. Because we are lousy enough to think about each other the way we do, then God has to create a man and make a woman. The woman has to be less than the man. And then we, in our racism, our prejudice self, decide that that is God's work. And God ordained it to be done. Thus, thus it's going to be there. So rather than say, that is our belief system, and that we are too bigoted to consider the sister in the same context, but the Africans at home made something they call the law of opposite. For up, there is done. For male, there's female. Anything you think of, there is an opposite dimension. Name anything you could think of, and there's an opposite dimension to make equilibrium, to balance. And we, and I know I must close with question and superior. I speak of the African woman in glaring terms. Knowingly, intentionally, I speak to my sons. I told my son the day I find that you have a child and don't support it, you're not welcome at my doorstep. <laughs> the day a woman tells you that you're pregnant and you got no justifiable reason to doubt that she's pregnant for you, and you refuse it, you cannot come to my door. The day you and your woman can't get along, and you just don't leave her, you, I mean, you can leave. Of course, if you have children, you can't leave without making preparation to come back to see your children. But if you leave her, you don't hate her. No sister is worth beating like a drum. Show her that just as you mated with her, you joined with her, you caressed her to mate with her, you thought that she was the greatest at that moment. Leave her in the same. We disagree, we can't understand each other, but you're still the greatest. You leave her so that some brother can have the joy of her in a greatness that you thought was once there. Some other brother may see that greatness. It may be you have the arrow, or both of you have the arrow, but at the moment you can't see. We all go through troubles like that. I remember my wife and last said, one day we were having a debate and I was happy, I just got married, very angry. And I went to the bed and I gave her my back and she was trying to caress me and I gave her my back. And she waited and said, Mister, I want to talk with you. The way you want. <laughs> she said, suppose this minute 
I get a heart attack and die. And you just refuse to speak to me. You gonna feel there was something you could have done for me that would have saved my life. But you weren't talking to me. My woman said, look, when we go argue, give me the thing I'm looking for, then be mad after that. So you know, if I gave her the thing she was looking for, I ain't going to be mad at her that I'm going to be there. Thank you. Yes, sir. I am not particularly joyous. It is not the first overture that has been made to African people, and I'm glad of what the young South, Africa, South African brothers in the PSC and the ANC said. The brother says that it's been 20 odd years since Mandela was taken away from their mix. And Mandela isn't coming back after 26 years to run the movement though they're going to be respectful of him and respectable to him. His ideas will not run the movement. Of course, he can't run the PSC. He can run the ANC, and ANC said, no way. He's going to be the honorary chairman, and that's it. And I agree totally with this. He has been away from the movement for 20 odd years. He cannot run the movement. It needs those who have been with the movement all the time. He should be given the respectable position of uh, the, 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 the head, uh, the political head and so forth, all the tributaries that go to him, but he should not be allowed to run the movement. Plus he's sick. Uh, there are many names, ancient names were used for Africa, including Africa. The Greeks is known to have used it from ancient documents as a Frilka, A-F-R-I-L-K-A, -A, as early as the fourth century before the common era. It was called Otavia, Esperia, Amonis, Libya, Ethiopia. But the oldest name that I have found thus far is Alkebulan, A-L-K-E-B-U, uh, uh, hyphen L-A-N. Uh, it was used by the early Moors and by the ancient Ethiopians, among other names. You, we must remember that continental names are recent. Uh, the name Asia, Africa, uh, Europe, and, uh, and uh, America aren't old names. They aren't ancient names. Men, uh, men and women, I'm talking about the both species, saw their particular nation and named it. They never named the continent because very few people got an opportunity to see the entire continent. So they spoke of the individual nation rather than the nations and a particular piece of land. So continental name isn't of great antiquity. Yes? Was there an actual exodus out of Egypt? No record of it. If, if, if there was, there was no record in Egyptian history. There's no record in Ethiopian history, Sudanese history, uh, the, the Saracen. The Saracen was where Arabia is today. It was called Land of the Saracen. No record of such a thing. Let, let us look at it as an, an, from another uh, historical point. Uh, if you attribute Moses to the leader of the Anexodus, Moses is in the 18th dynasty. He is known. And they, uh, when um, Tutankhamun became the pharaoh of Egypt, it is based upon the date. Moses is supposed to be born in 1346. Akhenaten died. And the throne went from Akhenaten to Tutankhamun in, in 1350, four years before Moses is supposed to have uh, been born. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, many uh, uh, Hebrew theologians attribute the time to Ramesses II. Ramesses II, again, is the 19th dynasty. He ruled from uh, when his father died, 71, in 1298 until 1232. You know, 
uh, the data going in the reverse. Uh, there's no record. If you go there, the brother, brother, many other people here have been to the Nile with me and carried them to all the temples to look at for themselves. Uh, you would see that Ramses noted every battle he ever fought, no mention of a Hebrew any place. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there was no Israel in that time of Ramses the, the second. Uh, Israel don't come till the time of Jethro. There's no such thing as an Israel. Uh, so, so the, in every religion, there are mythological and allegorical figures, and Moses and, and Abraham and, and things that fit into this allegorical story. Yes. Okay, um, you mentioned a little bit about the about um, the Soviet Union, uh, Paul, early on in the lecture. Um, in Paul, when we hear about the Fuhrer going on, we also hear the Polish people's love for the shrine of Czechoslovakia with the Black Madonna, which they recognize as Saint of Poland. Could you give some idea as to what the true origin is of that particular icon in the Queen uh, of Poland? It is the same one that you will find in Spain. <laughs> Uh, the Black Madonna Child. The Black Madonna Child went into Greece. It was then called the Herculaneum Worship of Isis. The Hercules Worship of Isis. Isis, as you know, correct name is Aset. O -S, A -S -E -T -O -A -S -T. Isis is a Greek word for that. Uh, Asaru or Asar, A S A R or A S A R U, is called Osiris, O S I R S, a Greek word for that name. And their son, Heru, H A R U or Horus, H O R U S. Uh, by the way, the I and the American dollar is the I that Horus supposed to have lost fighting his evil uncle. Now, there is a virgin birth story and resurrection. Uh, let me just give you uh, the story of resurrection and everything. It's very important because we, we, most of us have no concept that there were resurrection stories, virgin birth stories, long before Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and all that. Uh, our, our Osiris had a bad brother, an evil god named Setaipa. Uh, Set is one of the sons of Adam and Eve, by the way. Uh, and then he tried to kill his brother out of jealousy and take over. He failed, but then he was successful one night, he hanged his brother. And they carried the brother off to what is now called Iraq, that area. But a scarab, Kepra, the god Kepra, told Isis where her husband was. She took the god of death, the god of the dead, Anubis. And she and Anubis and her sister, her twin sister, Nephthys, went over and took the body back brought it to Amin Ra, Amin Ra gave it back life, and he lived. His evil brother said, Typhon heard about it, and tried everything to kill him again. This is a story about God, so God would die and live and all kinds of things. He did one day find him, cut him up into 14 pieces, scattered his body around the world. Isis heard it a bit, and she went again to the God of death, or Anubis, they went and gathered the pieces, but could not find one piece. His penis, because it had been eaten by the Nile catfish, up to now, Nubians don't eat catfish over the story. <laughs> Come to think of it, there is a part of a, see what happens in, 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 in the epistemology. In a woman is also assigned her pelvic region as her cat, right? The cat. Now, we say, I'm going to kick you in the nut. You know what? It's not nut, it's noot. We, like Timbuktu, we heard our parents and grandparents saying words that belong to our history, but we get disjointed. That some remain with us. We don't know the background, so we use using them and find out, yeah, but they're not right or they're not some really. So when I say, I'll kick you in the nut, it's noot. You can kick me in the nut. Because I don't, women don't have scrotum that I know of. A woman's scrotum is turned to the inside, and we don't call that nuts, right? What we call it? Oh, please. Okay. Because a woman is an inverted man, a man is an extroverted woman. Pull one out, you got a man. Push it in, you got a woman. Uh, now, 
She was she went to and looked. But she took the 14 pieces and 13 pieces and put it back on fire. She went to God and went around and said, Look, what happened? My man is dead. I can't have children. We have to have a good God left. So I went around, put a penis, resurrected a penis for Osiris, the first resurrection ever did. So when you go to the temple, you see Osiris lying flat on his back with a newly resurrected penis. You see the birds come, and by the way, Aset said, for those who are men, her husband, she will put a symbol that they will always have to remember when they see it. So she starts building objects around her kingdom. When you go to Washington, D.C., the National Memorial is nothing but a concrete penis. The symbol, they didn't know what it was, the Western Memorial is an obvious, a symbol of a Zionist penis. So George was a poor one at that. But nevertheless, you, you probably you don't even think you had anything to do with that. You say, we go to the National Memorial, and you feel privileged to go there, not knowing that they copy. They laid it out. The Western Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, following the way the pyramids at Giza are laid out. Exact copy of how they're laid out. Copying from you again. Copy your period. Copy your, 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 your ever, uh, if it's called the Ujit, the eye of horror. And you call it the evil eye. It's got nothing to do with evil eye. <laughs> Everything we got is evil, something is wrong with it. And, and so forth. But you, you got to see. I'm not telling you come with me, but if you come with more than Mary. But go to Egypt. Go see for yourself where the beginning of civilization took place. Go and see that night. That's why Brown got pictures of the pictures recorded, given over. I was trip down the night. Go see what your ancestors did. Then see if you feel bad inside. Yes, yes, that's my question. And it's rest for additional information. For All right. I have, and this year, and it may be the last year, I'm doing the tours. I'm training uh, tour leaders to do it because I'm, I have taxed down with a lot more work in, in Egypt. I, I have a village that uh, running, taking care of, I have uh, consultancy with the mayor of Aswan and so forth. And next year, by the way, we're having the first Nubian festival worldwide. I uh, will tell you when you're here, you'll know a different radio thing about this Nubian festival, and that's the thing. But uh, we have two tours. Two. The first two is in July. They're 14 days each. The first two weeks and the second two weeks. August, the first two weeks and the second two weeks. So that's four tours. And then, then in December, there is a tour that starts around Christmas time and goes into the new year. Uh, that's the fifth tour. 14 days, they cover most of the temples, the pyramids, the tombs, and different things in Egypt. Uh, it's an ed educational tour. Of course, you have in the afternoon and evening, you are free to do whatever you want. We go to the Nubian village and so forth. Uh, it's a, we have a tour guide that take you and tell you, show you the different things, and in the after, uh, when you come back from the field, you have time to wash up and get your fresh pressure. We have an actual classroom setting where I give a one-hour lecture, a question-answer period, and if we have other scholars with us, they speak, we ask them to speak, we have open discussion, any member of the troop can get and come, they do a the analysis. We have a beautiful educational time. We don't carry tourists. I don't carry tourists. I carry Africans for to be educated and to educate ourselves. In our free time, you can tourist as much as you want. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you can call Alken Tours, A L K E N Tours, T O U R S, some fellow. 
tell him I like her, he will tell her cousin, the cousin will tell her. <laughs> no direct contact. And you know, the brothers or the sisters don't make direct contact. You want to get married to one of the sisters? And they don't play. Nothing else but the marriage game. <laughs> now, you see, you see a young lady. You like her. You go to the restaurant that I told you. You tell her father. They said they're going to bring you. The first day you go to the house, the father's question. You look at you. What you do? Who the parents? Okay. Ask a few friends you know him. Yes. What date you have in mind? <laughs> first day. There's no such thing as coding in the first day. There's no such thing. I want to know her better. No, you know her. <laughs> it's, it's as good as you will ever know her. <laughs> <laughs> then, they got that. Then, it said the father said, Okay, bring the gold. The gold. Every girl. You bring the gold. You bring the gold. They, don't, they never tell you. Let's say you go to a man's house and then his school teacher. And he said, bring the gold. She's professional. She's the daughter of professional. You better bring 15,000 Egyptian pounds gold. That's the minimum you could bring there. The gold is the ring that she's going to wear. That's going to be the ring. The only one ring for both the engagement and the marriage. The ring as the engagement will be on the right finger. When you marry, it goes to the left finger. That's the only difference. You got the name, the day, you put her name, and the girl put her name and your name. You bring the gold, it's a beautiful chain, the bangles. <coughs> uh, the ring, and it's something for the hair, a tea rug or something. It must be at least 15,000 Egyptian pounds. That's the quality of the girl you have in the school teacher's daughter. You're not having just any run of the middle thing. <laughs> and when school teachers come into a house, everybody gets up. You know, when a school teacher enters a room, everybody gets up and bow. And the teacher picks with them. It's not like here, you beat up the teacher. It's a <laughs> <laughs> and you come, you bring the ring. Everything is okay, you know, could coat. It means now her brother, her sister, her cousin, her grandmother is going with her wherever she goes. <laughs> you can come to visit her. She sits there, her father, her mother, her grandmother, her aunt, her brother, her sister, and you. <laughs> And you can say to her, it is nice and sunny today. It's always sunny. But if you say, you look, the father says, what? <laughs> she looks what? Are you in the medical field? <laughs> you know, she, that's it. Goodbye, it was nice speaking to you. You said one word, good day. <laughs> now, it's three months and the father said, look, uh, <clears throat> where are you going to marry? You said you're late for the marriage. What? You got to go get an apartment. You have to, this is the man. You have to stop the apartment. The furniture and everything. Nobody gets married without an apartment. Now you come and they don't have they have the wedding. The wedding is not no big for the little party. You go and sign with a check and so forth, you sign, and everything is okay. The, the celebration is what they're gonna do. Then you get a bit dance and all that kind of stuff. But the night of the wedding. <laughs> they're dancing and they're having fun, and all of a sudden you hear do 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 do. The girl mother comes in with her friend, the boy's mother. They stop everything and she go down to her little bed. And she put out something nine inches by twelve inches, a piece of sheep skin 
tightly polished on the nun here side. And they go to the girl, and both of them hold it one end each, put it in her head. And they said, the ceremony ceases until tomorrow morning. We will be all back here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock sharp. The crowd is assembled here waiting for the festivities when both mothers go back and knock on the door. Boom, boom, boom. The fruit! <laughs> she brings the fruit and hands it to the boy's mother. She does like this. God, you ought to have a good, good blood there. You can't go touch it. Then better than the human blood. <laughs> and she turns it over and she checks it. And the two mothers have it. Let us say there is no blood. <laughs> she is a dead girl. <laughs> the first to walk into the head of the first blow is her mother. His mother would draw out the scene. They have nothing to do with it, and her parents kill her. And there's no law against them killing her. Egypt is run under two laws, the civil law and the religious law. The head of the civil law is the president of Egypt, Mubarak. And the head of the religious law is the Sheikh al Arabah, our almost equivalent of Pope. The mother is entitled to kill her daughter for the shame and disgrace she brought on the family. If she so desired, or she may push her daughter out of her family life and she must leave the village. It doesn't end there. Before the daughter goes, she, they go to torture her till she tells who did it to her. And he goes down. And his family, nobody in the village will ever marry his family for seven generations. <laughs> I know you're saying, suppose she had ruptured herself on a donkey. <laughs> she had to unrupture herself on a donkey. The dog make exception to the rule. What happened to a girl like that? She winds up a prostitute in another town. They make no exception to it. Now it's the girl, it's the boy who are uh, disruptor. He knows he did it. Then he will come forward. And then they make they bite his hand, do something in raw blood, and make some kind of blood. But naturally, if he didn't do it, he's he's going to not help her. Uh, then she is in a serious struggle. Does it ever happen? Yes, because they are not perfect. But and once in a blue blue moon, it happens. Why does it happen often? And I know you're going to find that the Nubian custom. A girl, when she reaches the age of nine, is sold. It is not what you're saying. <laughs> Many of you have had air ring, air, air, old holes in your ear. They rub it and uh, and stop the pain. They are specialists. You go, the girl goes, the mother carries her to the lady that uh, sews older women, and they massage her, and they have a way to avoid pain. They saw her. The night she gets married, they, that afternoon, the women will unsaw her and she's ready. Why is the reason for this? Human makes error. A, girl, a boy talks a girl into having intercourse with him. With him. She weakens and says yes. Well, what they've done is make it so that he can't penetrate. It's impossible. He can't remove the stitches. So what happened? She saved. She then remembers that his pain is unbearable. So she he doesn't get to penetrate her. So it's her protection at the same time. Because they're saying, but well, since human beings commit error and the girl may succumb, this way, whoever tries to do it or can't uh, uh, be successful. Uh, I know that uh, from a Western point of view, you may not understand it. But then if you were born in that culture, to be as normal as the culture, your, your conduct and the things that you do. 
So you see, uh, it's not only that there are a lot of things that go, most marriages are first cousins. Uh, you can marry, and it's preferable that you marry your first cousin. So that. His art, photos, exhibiting at the Hempstead Afro American Museum, uh, what's the last day? Uh, around Christmas time. They will be getting you back. Any other announcements? <laughs> Without further ado, we would like to um, ask this giant in the African world to commune with us, to give us some kind of knowledge and information based on his enormous experience in the African world. Uh, most of us are familiar with Dr. Ben uh, because he's spoken at the African Forum over the last 10 years. And most of us have followed his career even before that. So he's a giant living in our community, always at college when we need him. We need to have him here more. Because more of the students coming through don't understand their African. You see, the more students we get black in the college, the more lack of consciousness, the lack of consciousness is, is, is real. People said African is dead, in fact, it is created by Trinity Culture Teaching. I'm patient and I'm Jamaican. So much so that the Jamaican students have taken over the Caribbean Students Association so the Haitian students and other students don't feel comfortable in the Caribbean students. But it's insanity. Yeah. We are African people and we need to have this insanity put aside. The person who has let us know that we are African people can have snapped it into our heads right. and told us about our greatness is Dr. Joseph Adams. We can welcome our brother here. say good evening and I will sit here I don't know what they're trying to say by putting me to sit but <laughs> uh, there would be times that I'll get up and do what I have to do I asked uh, Dr. Jeffries to give me a hand when it's time to stop so that we could have a question answer period I was told that I may make my presentation in, in any subject area that I desire. And so I will make it tonight a little in an area that you have never heard me on, I know. It is the Nubian origin of Egypt. Most people speak about Egypt as if Egypt was the first so civilization or society in Egypt, uh, in Africa, and that couldn't be more false than saying that a rabbit is a pigeon. Egypt is one of the last of the ancient cultures, if not the last along the Nile. What made Egypt so important is not that it led any African society in antiquity, but that it is the society where most of the artifacts have be remained because it was the first of the African society and the societies of the entire world to, thank you, to place their recordings in stone. That's the uniqueness of Egypt um, uh, uh, in difference to other African societies along the Nile. 
We cannot place Egypt before the civilian period, civilian first, second, and third, in terms of records. Whereas you can place the societies of Africa at the headwaters of the Nile, Ethiopia, Uganda, Somalia, uh, even Kenya and Tanganyika. We go back to an Egyptian himself, a very early Egyptian going back in the second and third dynasty who said, we came, we meaning the Egyptians, from the beginning of the Nile, where God happy dwells, at the foothills of the mountain of the moon. As a matter of fact, Nubia was Egypt before Egypt became Nubia. I hope that isn't confusing. It wasn't meant to be confusing, though it is. What I'm saying to you before, the term Egypt in whatever language or words you want to describe it, if you're going to use Kemet, or you're going to use uh, Tameri, or Sais, or Pearl of the Nile, either word you use, it does not come before Tanahisi. Tanahisi, as a Nubian state, predated that of Egypt. Tanahisi was pre-dynastic. Why don't we have Tanahisi then, or Nubia, highlighted in this school or any other school, or by most African, quote, Africanist, and of course, other people dealing with Africa, is because of what the Greeks did, and we still cannot get away from our Greek neighbor string. Let us go back to antiquity, to history. The point of the emphasis of Egypt is dynastic. The point of the emphasis of dating Egypt's antiquity is based upon artifacts from the time of the Greeks until the present time. Although the, the, the Greeks were not anywhere in society before 1000 BC. What our education have given us in these institutions, including the so-called black institutions, is a Greco, Romano, and other European type of African background. And it is that that I wish to deal with this evening. It is that which I am working at the present time in my field diggings, my archeological team, not to prove, because it doesn't need any kind of proof. The facts are there, if we should look at the facts. My reason for coming down the Nile, instead of going up the Nile, like most people come to Cairo, they fly into Cairo, and then they start in Cairo, going up to Aswan. I start in Aswan and go down to Cairo. One time we even went down to uh, Alexandria for what I do not know. But nevertheless, it must be now emphasized that Nubia is the mother of Egypt, just as Ethiopia is the mother of Nubia, and just as Somalia, Kenya, Uganda is the grandmother of Egypt. If we are to look, no society in human history starts at the end of a river and work up against the current of that river. Because the means by which men would travel up the river had to be locomotion. There was no sailboat for men to use when he first started to navigate the river. He started with logs solid logs of tree that he realized floated. He then started to tie logs together to give more buoyancy for those of you in engineering. And then men start to hollow out logs in order that he may take much more weight 
and that was the beginning of man transportation along the river. He traveled on the river before he traveled on the wheels. He traveled on the river before he started traveling on the backs of other animals besides himself. And we must go back to these to, in order to understand. We must go back to the paintings of the Grimaldis, the paintings of other small African people, namely the Hutu, and also the Kalahari, <clears throat> the Khoi Khoi, and other Africans, especially those that went into Egypt, namely the Sabenatos. I don't have time to talk and to spell his name because I've spoken to you a number of times and by now you should be able to spell those words. It was not until as late as the 1500 that Egypt, the same Egypt that we are talking about, became extended to what is now called Aswan, Aswan or Senuset or Senort as it was called. It was 1500 before the common era that Egypt took over Nubia from a place now still called Asuit, deep into the southern part of Egypt was the northernmost part of Sudan or Aswan, I mean, uh, or Nubia. Go back again. If you are accustomed to Egypt and you are in Luxor, you must travel north. That means going down the Nile to at least 200 miles north to come to Asuit. You draw a horizontal line parallel to the equator and run it across Egypt and that where Nubia up until 1500 which will bring us into the 18th dynasty that was still Nubia. So when you're speaking about Nubia you are speaking about the creation of dynastic Egypt and again that's what we have overlooked in our Greek uh, mythology, in our Greek training, in our European education. The 18th dynasty of 1500 and thereabout bring us at a period of time when we are speaking about the Inhoteps, that would include Akhenaten. It is that brings us before the very noted, and to my, in my case, the most noted of the Egyptian pharaohs in terms of what they contributed to society, which will be Ramesses II. And all that happened subsequent to that. However, what is overlooked is the role that Nubia played even in dynastic Egypt. We know of Nubia and we deal with Nubia in terms of one particular person, and that would be the wife of Ramesses II, Nefertari II, because we then generally don't speak of Nefertari in terms of second. She is the second. There was a previous Nefertari, which we will speak about later. Nubia not only gave to Egypt Nefertari II, uh, or Nefertari first, but Nubia passed on her culture to Egypt. We think of Nubia in terms of the Nubian dynasty, 24, 25, depending on whose chronology you're using, and that would be a point when Egypt would already start to decay. Egypt was already in her dying days, when we are talking about the point when the dynasties were controlled under Nubian tutelage. I am talking about Nubian dynastic influence from the time of Aha, A-H-A, and the time of another man who was confused with Aha, namely Nama. The Greeks were the ones who decided that Nama 
was the first of the pharaohs, call him Mena, as well as they call him later Menes. But in fact, it was Aha who really started. There were three Ahas, and only two are recorded in Egyptian history. One of the Aha is said to be the first priest of ancient Egypt. Aha, this Aha was the one that introduced the Nubian god to Egypt. But that Nubian god has been carefully suppressed. We are talking about Mendelusi. Mendelusi is said by certain Western historians to be the brother of Osiris. In other writings, he is said to be the son of Osiris and brother of Horus. But in Nubian mythology, if you want to call it that, in Nubian religiosity, Mendelusi is the equal brother of Osiris and the senior brother of Osiris. Why isn't Mendelusi uh, mentioned? When we go to the temple of uh, uh, what is called Kalapsha, that's a German terminology, Kalapsha. That temple was Kolo Boyo. Kolo Boyo Temple. K O L O, one word, B O Y O, Kolo Boyo Temple. You will notice that when you go to that temple, there are stones belonging to the previous temple that was there. There are animals of ancient Africa and the Nile in particular shown on those stones that you find nowhere else. And then you recognize that there was a temple there hundreds of years, thousands of years that predated the temple that was built much later, equally by Nubian people. Stop and consider who worked the quarries of Nubia. There is not another place in all of Egypt where one can find marble other than Aswan. No place else. And no one can show that any marble was brought from a foreign state, whether a foreign state in Africa or a foreign state in Asia. We do not need, need to speak about Europe because Europe is not in history yet. Then why is it that African scholars have failed to deal with Nubia? The, the, the answer is obvious, because we have failed to deal with our color. And we're still scared to deal with our color. I'll give you an example of this. Uh, African scholars, and I uh, use the term with quotation marks, African scholars come to Harlem and they say, Dr. Ben is this, Dr. Ben is that, he introduces us to this, he introduces us to that. Look at their writings. See if you see Dr. Ben's name even mentioned in a negative way. They come after come, and they go after go, and they tell you how great Dr. Ben is. <laughs> and Dr. Ben is still laughing inside. I won't laugh in the face because it's rude, they said. <laughs> But then you take up the latest work and see if in the latest work, I'm not talking about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, in the latest work, they quote everybody that Dr. Ben introduced, even the white ones. The present star in academia that they quote, Bornell, was a fellow that came and sneak in my classes at, Co at Cornell up to the last day when Cornell was getting rid of me. They came to find the last piece of information. Today, Bonnell is a superstar, yet he caught me all over the place. You know, I, you, you know um, I am known to be blunt. Take up the last book of, uh, what is it, Africa Revisited, or somebody revisited and see if you see any of those scholars, any one of them, quoting Joseph ben Hirkanen. You name it, and he or she or he and she found it necessary to quote James, who I introduced, and others. 
but never Ben Yekanan. Why? Because Ben Yekanan dare equally to say, among other things, that the civilization of Egypt is a black civilization and say it without a benefit of doubt and deal with the rape of Africa in terms of the Greeks of yesterday, the Greeks of today, and all other Europeans combined. And why do I say this? It is, is it, and why can't they say this? Because all of them, or I, I can't say bar none, refuse to do the most essential thing. Get out of the library, get out of the museum, and go to the field. Take off your three-piece suit and, and the tie. You can use it. I use three-piece suit. This is my camouflage uh, uh, garment, my gig, as, as, the, as the brother said. But you have to go to the field to do a deal with that original work yourself. <laughs> If you want to be a mother, you can't be a physician dealing with mothers. You've got to be a mother. Get pregnant, then you know what it is. You could be a faggot, that don't make you no mother. <laughs> you, got, you could sympathize, but you will never know what it is to be a mother. You will never know what Egypt is unless you go and do that original spade work. How could I tell that Nubia is the mother of Egypt? Before I started my latest digging a year and a half ago, they, every time, every time I, I dug a spade, and it's not me alone, there's six other brothers, six Nubian brothers with me, but every time we bring up a, a shovel, I am not looking for the major find, I am looking for the tiniest bit of relic to put me back with the ancient brothers and sisters. But it's not only that. I go back to the old, the ancient people, the ancient modern people, if you want to call them that, those Egyptians, those Nubians who cannot even speak today Arab. You'll be surprised to know that Arabic, that there are thousands of Nubians who do not speak Arabic in Egypt. And they do not speak it, not because they can't learn it, out of contempt for the conquerors. Some people ask, why don't you speak Arabic? You going to Egypt so long. I am not interested in Arabic. I'm not interested in English. I'm not interested in French. I'm not interested in any colonial language so that if I don't speak or speak it uh, out of its uh, proper grammar or whatnot, I don't give a damn. I don't speak it because I hate the damn thing and the people that it belongs to. That's why I don't identify myself as English, French, Dutch, or anything like that. Now, in going back, then, these are the basics in which to understand, to understand the material that one uses, one must have the frame of mind. One must place oneself in that of the actor, so to speak. One must become Ramesses to understand Ramesses. And one must become uh, Nefertari to understand her. Let us go and see one of the points in which I knew that Egypt was the child of Nubia. The most essential sacred drama in all of Egypt was the Opet Festival, the O-P-E-T Festival. And the Opus Festival came out of another festival, the festival of the love, the romantic prowess of the mother queen of all of Egypt. And I'm speaking about the goddess. Not the goddess that you know commonly and most shown over the heads of the pharaohs when they die, and yet she goes back way time. I am speaking about the goddess, the woman who was involved with the first trinity of the entire world community and the Nile Valley in particular. I am talking about Khonsu's 
mother. Kung Tzu is called various names, and I'm using the name that you're most familiar with. I am talking about Goddess Mut, not Goddess Nut. They're two different ones, M-U-T and N-U-T. Why is it that all the writings, there's an emphasis on Goddess Nut, but no emphasis on Goddess Mut? Because it's clearly stated that Goddess Mut is a, is a, a southern goddess. Southern means upper Nile. We must look back and say, was Goddess Nut was, was Goddess Nut worshipped south of Egypt? Not at all. The ancient Nubians and Ethiopians, on the other hand, worship Goddess Mut. Anywhere you go, to the beginning of the Nile, there are folklore about Goddess Mut in Uganda up to the, today. As a matter of fact, there is folklore about Goddess Mut in Nigeria today, coming to Nigeria by way of the Yoruba religion. There is mention of Goddess Mut in all the way in Haiti, in Dambalawedo. Dambalawedo is a transition of the religion that comes to the Yoruba ceremonies. There is mention of Goddess Mut in Manikismo, in Cuba, and even in Puerto Rico, where we are talking about Santerismo, there is a mention of Goddess Mood. So what has happened is that all over the continent there are influences about Goddess Mood. And we cannot avoid it. We see the symbol of Goddess Mood as far south as what was called Mulamutapa, before the Europeans tell us we shouldn't call our own country Munumbatapa, it is a bad word. And then we uh, turn from that and call it now uh, Namibia and uh, the other name, Azania. I still say Munumbatapa. Now, what we have to do then do in this case, and I know it may, this lecture may sound rather strange to a lot of you, but I passed a certain stage now. It's introduced, take it, go with it. Now there's other stages you've got to deal with. In other words, we're past first grade, second grade, we're now past kindergarten, we're now in junior high school, we pass college, you've got the doctorate, now let's go to the post-doctoral lessons. See, let us go to the one that you can't get in the classroom at all. You must come to the field to deal with this. Let us go to the one where we're talking about upon which the foundation of spirituality of ancient Egypt rests. We are talking now about the mystery system. And we have taken up Professor James's work, beautiful work at that, at which Richard Moore was alive and a few other people for us to deal with it. I wish Professor uh, uh, Seifert was around for us to really deal with how those thoughts were placed into order in the various uh, works of Professor James before he wrote Stolen Legacy. The eight papers which Professor James published that led up to uh, Stolen Legacy. What it is that brought about the ancient Egyptian uh, philosophy of God, the concept of God? What is it that brought the ancient Egyptian concept of theology to explain the theosophy? Was it an experience from a supernatural being coming from outer space, as most of us tend to believe it a hocus pocus? Was it, was it some god that fly over uh, some part of Egypt and said, come here, and got up and tapped some hill and passed down a tablet or something? Uh, was it any of that? Uh, no. None whatsoever. It was science. The ancient African used science as the foundation for religion. And I guess I should remove the word religion from that. As found in the documents, the ancient Africans in their writings dealt with the first concept of God. 
the, the first and the universe and all there is in it. All explanation of the totality. This is the reason we start to talk about the universe in terms of a circle. But the ancient African place at the center. This this circle, the universe, was that which contains everything. And the ancient African said that within this circle, there are four quadrants. They didn't use the word quadrant as the English word, of course. But in the center of these four quadrants, in this circle, there is a centroid axis. And the Africans, the ancient Africans projected this. And from that projection, and if you carry that to the same extent, you will come back again. This projection will be equal to that projection. But if you take this, let's take this or take this, and we have this. Let's move this up and we have that. Let's separate that is one pyramid and another pyramid. The angle doesn't change. It is out of this, <coughs> I'm uh, sorry, and the projections of this that the ancient, but did this come from Egypt? Not at all. We see this in the southern, in the southern Africa among the, the Grimaldi. Go to the museum in uh, the, the, the Metropolitan, not Metropolitan, the New York Museum of, uh, uh, of uh, Anthropology down there at 70, uh, and, and, and Central Park West. And you see, the, the Grimaldi doing this. <clears throat> but what is the difference? You still have the point of it. This intersectivity point, that intersection point, that intersection is still going to give you, the four quadrant is still going to give you the periodical uh, sign. But did we break this down? It is here that the original concept came that God is the center of the universe. And God, as the ancient called, was Ra. R-A. Why R-A? Translate R-A into English. R would be O, R is equal to the, the radius. God sees and commands all that God sees. And that's what was the Greeks is calling the mysteries. But the ancient Africans equally went farther and said what? A, B, and C. And all of that developed A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And all other types of uh, algebraic calculation. And that was the mystery. When the Greeks came to Egypt, as a matter of fact, before they even came, when they were on the island of Samoa, when they had uh, uh, learning from the ancient Africans in lodges established by the ancient Africans, they could not understand this to be logical thing. If you drop a plumb back from here, we saw, we saw they, they, God here, and we always see Tahuti, the God of measurement and the God of recording, recording every event. There was nothing uh, 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 um, superfluous to him. There was nothing extraordinary to them. The ancient Africans were so acquainted with their tradition, acquainted with what was the ordinary day of life for the common priest. Mathematics was not surprising to them. They had mastered mathematics. And because they mastered mathematics, they mastered religion. They mastered uh, the, the concept of the human feelings against it. Thus, the ancient Africans, when they did this, they equally introduced something which the Europeans cannot conceive up to now. 
they show you the feather of truth, truth, justice. Ma'at, as it's called today. Ma'at, an Ethiopian ostrich feather, again symbolically, the heart soul. The heart soul. And they put an eye here, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Dealing with the heart. The ancient Greeks couldn't deal with this. And therefore, they eventually put the symbols of existence at an arrow. They had to have violence going through the heart, just as they have violence in terms of uh, our love making. Uh, even the, the, the lullabies up to now uh, that the present European sing, uh, Rockaby Baby on the treetop. When the chief of baby, the baby gonna drop and break into two. Pump it up, get a ball, get a damn ball, and bust up. You know, every, even the little, even the little rhymes for the little children go wind up into um, murder. So they couldn't think of this kind of thing. The ancient Africans from this. It is from this the ancient Africans used to, to conceive the possibility of God. The translation out of this came another aspect that the Africans see. Now we come, we have the circular shape here, we have the circular shape here. And what are we talking? The ancient Africans started to devise methods by finding these cards. What did they mean? <coughs> Out of this, the African did more. He reversed this and did this. He finds the strength of things around him. Most of you young men are engineers. It's not for only for making a dollar so you could buy a BMG or a G or a Leo. <laughs> it is a, these are spiritual dimensions. The ancient African these, these, the moment factors here, the maximum moment in here, the moment, listen to it, the moment that you reach the point of resistance and gives the fluidity of it, you're going to have a bending, right? Those of you in engineering. If you pass the moment factor and pass the center of this, you go in to a sharing factor. The moment it was a snap. You have that in religion. Religion was a scientific calculation by the ancient Egyptians. Excuse me for those of you who don't deal with strength and material and so forth that, that you may not understand, but you're supposed to understand. What do you mean you don't understand? You're not African, you're supposed to understand. As our ancestors were teaching in the school, you, every one of you would have understood it because you would have been taught this. You would not have been taught only by its engineering characteristic to make a dollar to buy you some personal wealth. You would have been taught this to understand the spirituality that is involved with it. And this. This is the aspect that we have forgotten. We have forgotten this because the ancient Africans using the same thing. Said that that represented the law of opposites. Huh? Law of opposites. For well, this is that, for well, this is that, for well, this is that, for well, this is that. Everything you go, anytime you move from the center point, there is an opposite. You, you can carry that center point any place, there is an opposite. Anywhere you move it, it is something you said that you translated and said. In order to come, you cannot come out of this force field, right? If you move from here, from the center to there, 
in order to stay within the first field, this, although the distance from here to here is greater than the distance from here to here, the force here must be equal to the force there in order to stay in equilibrium. If you lie today, tomorrow you pay. And tomorrow is not necessary. You lie on the 6th of December and you're going to pay on the 7th. You may pay on the 19th, 10,000 years later. The Europeans trying to adopt this concept could not deal with it in its Africanicity, thus deal with it that your children will suffer unto the seventh generation for wrongdoings of yourself. <laughs> now, you see why we can't find Nubia? We can't see Nubia because where did this start? We've got, we've got this. <laughs> Excuse the projection being off a little. We got this. So we got where Africanization meets. But we also have this. Talking here about this is the Red Sea, by the way. Let's, let's deal with it. And this is the Great Sea or the Sea of Sice. And this is the Ethiopian Ocean. <laughs> it has been changed to the North Atlantic, to the South and the South Atlantic. This has been changed to the Mediterranean. We're talking about a time when there were no European known to be doing anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean that there wasn't wrong, but they were messing with ice. They had no problem. <laughs> they didn't even have the idea of making fire to keep them warm. <laughs> they, they, I talked about the time when the Europeans used to kill, out of every five girls, they killed three. Because it cost too much to keep a woman alive. So they went to not polygamy with the condemned, but they went to. No. No? No? Fratricide. Fratricide. No? The opposite of polygamy? Monogamy. Ask me the third factor polyandry. I mean, you all went to college. <laughs> <laughs> Polyandry, where one woman have five or two or more husbands. The opposite of polygamy. Now, they, could, they had to do that because they had no food. When you don't have food, you can't be rest, uh, restful. You have to be restless. You got to be always thinking and getting up, getting as little sleep as possible to get out there to catch the next fish coming up in the hole. When you dig the little hole, the Africans here had no holes to dig. They would fish all over the place. <laughs> they didn't need to dig any hole. They, they vegetation all over the place. So you have time to sit down and to watch the universe. He had time to be here and figure what it would be here. And time to figure here. Does he understand? He knew by this. He also knew. This is religion. He also knew that at point A, B, C, and C, he looked. He had time to observe. And he knew that it would take 28 days to go here. 
And he didn't know it would take 28 years, days to go here. 28, and he said, the object that he saw here, call this moon. <coughs> call this any other thing in the, and that you wanted. And he knew. That's why he knew. They were not there announcing the Africans thought about any wall being flat. The African knew the world was not flat because he had already figured the world up to the point to give us a calendar called the stellar calendar. A calendar based upon the stars that he had seen looking here, he saw there. He then conceived that here was the beginning of the world at a place called Giza centroid of the 16 pyramids that were there. Hmm? And thus, this nonsense about the African using the pyramid for a water pump. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it's what, uh, that came because nobody who wrote that went to the field. You could not have gone to the field in the pyramids and come up with such a thing. You first write it, then you come to the place, look at it and say, yes, I agree, they so. <laughs> you got to come. You got to come and see it. Because if I drop a puppet and look like here, you see? If I drop a puppet and look like here, it, it is the same light. If I drop a puppet and look like here, if I drop one from here, you see what's happening all the time? Yeah. It is going to be the same series, it's going to be the same. So the African knew that when he stood at this position, and that's why I know that Nubia was the mother. Because when I go to the temple at Sinot, and the island, the tip of the island of El Elephantine, what it's called Elephantine these days, Sinot. And I dig and find how the Nubians. When I look at Sinat, the temple of Sinat, most of the temples take a rectangular. Most of the temples have their holy of holies. Let's do this. Most of the temples have their holy of holies here. The Temple of Sinat, the Holy of Holies, face here, face south, from where the source came. Let's take the Nile. This is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west. Huh? Why then? Why did they put their temple face south? Let us go to another major temple. Let us go to the temple of at the great northern temple which is now called Kana, which was called Warit. Where Warit? Here we are. Here is the symbolic, I'm gonna put Cairo here, but it doesn't belong here. Cairo doesn't come until the 12th century of the common era. When the Arab, when Saladin, the Arab built, established a, 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 a little city called Kustat, F-U-S-T-A-T, which is today called Cairo. As a matter of fact, there's an old part still called Kustat by anybody who knows the history. But let's take Kustat over here, or Cairo. And I only use it for references, not an ancient city. Well, we put Kustat there. So therefore, we know this is at the west side. It is here, over here, that the pyramid field is, and the West Bank. Whether it is the Giza pyramid field, Asubia, Absar, any of the pyramid fields, Saqqara, any of them, they're over there. Let us take now the great temple of here in the Nile, here in the east, the, 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 the east side of the Nile, the west side of the Nile is the burial grounds. We are talking now about 
the Valley of the King, etc. Over here, and they were in from the Nile. The Luxor Temple is closer to the Nile, but the the Luxor Temple, which is the Waset Temple, later called Thebes, <coughs> presently called Luxor. This temple that we are talking about runs in the direction of the Nile? No, it runs this way. The temple of Waset, of, 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 of um, um, Kanak or Warit. And the temple has, this temple has right here, it's holy of holy and it's altar to the west, contrary to the later temples. <coughs> Why? The temple in the great temple of Ramesses II is here, looking this way. <coughs> but the temple of Ramesses II, looking this way, the, the Holy of Holies is here, looking to the north. As we enter the gate to this temple, the temple, within the temple now, we, we, we're talking of temples, for those of you who have been there, temples within a temple. The temple of Amun, the husband of Mut. We're gone again. <coughs> Amun, God Amun, the wife is Mut. The temple of Amun is here, runs this way. Where is the Holy of Holy? Here, south. And where did God Amun came from? South. Ra and Amun both came from the south. Why would the ancient of Egypt take their gods from the south? Why is it that the mythology speak of the first king that rose to the rank of Pharaoh, head of the great house, Pharaoh, was from the south. The south is Luxor. We just said it. Luxor. Using today's name. That is where Norman and Ahab, all of the ancient the, the, the earliest pharaohs came from the south. The most important pharaohs came from the south. The Amenhotep family did not move their residence until the sun, Akhenaten. Amenhotep III moved the residence to north. But why didn't Akhenaten maintain? What did Akhenaten do to change the whole concept? trying to get away from Amun. He moved the concept. Yes, he did the right thing. He introduced the concept, reintroduced the concept of Amun Ra. Before he moved, it became Amun Ra. It is Amun Ra. In the north, it was changed to what? Amen Ra. Amun Ra had become a man. And after a man rock, after Scorpion, the King Scorpion was defeated by the King Nama, also called Mena. The Greek late, came later and called him Menace. It is then it became Amen Ra. But we must understand all of this. If, how in the world are you going to deal with it if you don't understand it? How can you deal with religion? How can you deal with Jesus Christ and Allah and, 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 and Jehovah and you don't know where these people pick up from? Huh? How can you deal with Allah, with Jehovah, 
and you don't have a Jew, one Jew at all, until Abraham arrived. <laughs> Abraham, and you can't deal with him until at best 1635 before the common era. You can't deal with Jesus Christ until Pontius and Bocius in uh, Pontius. And Bocius. Until at least uh, what is called uh, 25 or so. Uh, he started it, so let's call it one. Uh, of the common era. And you can't deal with Allah until you got Muhammad. Muhammad, and I'm gonna speak to it, write it. This is the only way you're supposed to you can't write Allah Muhammad for nobody else but this way. And you can't deal with him until 622 of the Christian era or common era equivalent to uh, one one of AA after they have <coughs> If you cannot relate these factors together, then if we deal with these, just let us deal with modern Egypt. Egypt was already gone a number of dynasties, a number of years ago. We go back to at least 4100 B before the common era. And that is already when Egypt has made a major transition the book of this coming forth by day and by night is already transformed, already translated, already changed, it's already edited. New editions came out. But we stop at the book of the dead. <laughs> what we're talking about. And unless we're willing to deal with these things, unless we're willing to challenge the president of the college that we're in, the dean of the college, the dean of education, unless we're willing to challenge it, unless we're willing to challenge the Pope in Rome and the the the, 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 the grand great rabbi in 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 in, in, um, in Israel and the who else in England and so forth. Unless we're willing to challenge those suckers, we are not ready. And that's why they can't quote me. They can't quote me right in. Where it's going downtown. And they can't bring, invite me to things where white folks are going to be. They can't invite me to things where good Negroes are going to be. <laughs> now you got to be waiting because you know what? I can't finish the lecture without getting to this. <laughs> and we're dealing with the center of the universe. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> right? Show me one pregnant man that is pregnant. <laughs> I like to see that's another reason when they can't invite me to other places because they don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> But the point is, why should I come up here speaking all kind of Greek words and things like that, that, that I can help I want to go to the dictionary to understand it before I come to the to here? But you know what I'm talking about, right? See, why should I go in the bar and start saying, uh, fellows, this is an imperative. <laughs> but I like and, and, and then the bumper start talking and I'm trying to explain. But if I go to the bar and say, shut up, motherfucker, everybody's gonna listen. Because the next thing we do might cut the God come and you are telling me, would you please? Would you please be quiet? Yeah. Because you have been conditioned. I know that the control. All I got to say is shut up. Quiet. And you stop. Your master teach you that. Now, your master equally taught you about Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve don't fit in this, in this equation. Eve and Adam fit in this equation. All right. All right? Because no way. You see what I said? Goddess, moot. They wrote it down. Goddess, moot. And God a moon. Right? Because everything you see, when you go to the, again I remind you, go to the Harlem Hospital, to the labor room, see how many men lying down. <laughs> there are a lot of men lying down, they're shot in the fast house, in the, in the labor room. But the only thing you see in there, giving birth. A sister African. Right. She is giving birth. The brother in the same position, flat on the back. <laughs> but he passed out. He ain't giving a damn thing. They're gonna have to give him smelling salt. <laughs> but the African did not look at the birth. We're talking about his religiosity. We're talking about his spirituality. Thank you. Huh? The brother goes and took this. And he created a goddess to explain to another brother. He took a brother called Min. Shown with one hand alone. Always up, one hand. Took the brother and he put, this is the brother neighbor. He put the brother penis here. Huh? Put Min's penis here, a good long one. <laughs> You know why you can go out seeing men and miss and miss tip me. <laughs> let us let us cut the brother, let us cut the brother down center. Take a AA. Let's take a view of AA. AA through the brother. Let's cut a section through the brother AA. Okay? So we got projection of this section. We got the brother. Get given some, <coughs> some. Don't want to be mistaken as a, a white character. <laughs> okay, we got the, the brothers. We got the back back section here, and we we stop here with this back wall, right? And we come around here because we know this is the soft tissue and whatnot. And we got his stomach here, and then we bring his chest down to here. Okay? Now, we know we got the neighbor of the brother here. We know the normal uh, gunners are here. You call it the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody to misunderstand. Yes. <laughs> and the penis, the penis is normal here. But the African brother and his sister. Because there were the priests and priestesses. In explaining life to us from a philosophical point, move the penis from here 
and put it here that we could see the penis here. An extension of the unumbilical cord. But what is the unumbilical cord? It is an extension of life. It is here that the baby is connected in the womb. Even when the baby comes down here, here's the pelvic here, and it comes up the labia majoria and the labia major, majora. The best as a, 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 a bitch that they talk about the labia menora and the labia majora. <laughs> <laughs> come up the next of the vagina. <laughs> The way we can understand, we will not have so many brothers and crap. Mm -hmm. If the brother understood mm -hmm. how the construction of his mama, mm -hmm. the construction of himself, yes. and what it was all about, the brother was here, but well, the brother is lost. Tell he don't even you. know his brother. The sister is lost. She got a baby, and she can't tell you about how that baby got in there. She couldn't trace the course of the sperm coming out of this penis going into the vagina. She couldn't trace it. No, she don't know what getting to her father's baby. How the hell she gonna know to take care of the baby? She don't know how the baby got there because she doesn't understand that this have any relationship to her sexual intercourse. To her, sexual intercourse is making love. <laughs> Last night we made love. How the hell are you going to make love? <laughs> love is an emotional feeling that comes into your psyche, yeah. into your mind. That sister, I need the sister, we talk, I need to do nothing but talk. The sister get into my mind and make my heart, she don't get in my heart, she get in my mind, but make my heart stumble. <laughs> that do all kind of vibration. Huh? I can't think straight, I can't eat. <laughs> you understand? It's, the sister said, but now I'm gonna, but if the sister do that, it got my body rocking, but it hasn't yet. <laughs> but, it, but my, as long as I keep my nose, as long as I could keep my mind, I'm still unbalanced. See, the love, the physical love, don't change the spiritual respect. Thank you. So I can't make love. I go up to the sister, I think at the dinner one night, I want to school the next minute. So baby, I took you, I bought that big lunch mm -hmm. for $20. Now where you going to do it? <laughs> Yeah. 
There's a naked woman. Right. Black sisters even could sing. They got top singers don't need to be exploited because she in the video, naked, doing the funky dance. And, the <laughs> and, to, and she could sing, she don't need it. But she has to be exploited because she too is caught up with the European value of making love. Tell the truth. You can't make love. You can have sex, sexual intercourse. And you could have sex without physical contact. I'm not going to tell you that's the, just keep on that. But that I could have a sexual affair mentally with you. Like most Christian women go to church and get a man motivated to Jesus all the time. <laughs> Egypt and all this kind of damn nonsense. You're a faker. 
if you run from the black community, can't live with black people, mm. you're a fake. You got to deal with us. Thank you, Dr. And we have to deal with ourselves. And that's what I mean. We've got to go back up the Nile, then come down. And understand Egypt for what she is. She's a beauty. She's my child, she's my mother. She's my woman, she's my sister. But she didn't come first. Let's go back to the beginning of the night. Let's go back to those waterways, those lakes. And go back around there. Look at those small people. Look at us when they give us the hand. When they give us other symbols to make what was Egypt. So let us go back to Egypt. When we said those black brothers and black sisters, yes. and they don't come blacker. Just remember, the blacker the meat, the sweeter the drink. <laughs> and if we remember those things, that it doesn't say anything to us of the light, I got a like mother. Doesn't make a less of a nuclear world, but the standard of the African woman is the black meat. The standard of the European woman is the brown meat. Yes. Doesn't be little less those of us who are brown, black, there's shades of that. But we must remember the standard. Mm. And the standard like that is the standard here. I thank you. stress. You talked about how a lawyer stresses this point, how an engineer deals with the stress point of a bridge uh, and things of that nature. And you said that the African identified that process and chose to call the stress factor God. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, what I did it in those times that it glad for you to remind me, and it couldn't be accepted. Uh, brothers who and sisters, after the lecture came and started berating me about dealing God in terms of <laughs> engineering, without understanding that when we talk about God, we're talking about an entirety. There is nothing that doesn't come under the aegis of the term God. But you see, the brother has, as some of us have, a thing which we call uh, religion, or we want to use it, and, and, and then there's a thing, secular and religious. That that which we do on Monday, if we're Christian, all the way to Saturday is secular. And Sunday is separate, is religious. My point is that that which I do every day, Every minute, every millisecond is religious as well as secular. That you can't separate my religion or my religious activity from my uh, 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 secular activity. When I'm involved with, with, with telling a girl I'm in love with her, that is secular as religious. How can I take away my feelings? That's why we can lie easily. We can tell a woman we love her only looking for a day. Because then we have separated our religious activities from our secular activities. So that it's easy to leave her as soon as she gets pregnant, walk out and go out the door. 
Because we have said, I am going to the door because with my <coughs> secular self, since my religious self had not been involved with this girl. But if my secular and religious self kept me under stress, kept me then unable to break away the two, then I can't leave my child. I can get mad with the mother, quit with the mother, break up, don't have no more relations sexually with the mother, but I can't leave my child. So that the mother become a part of my child as myself. So I've got a forever connection with her. I got the same connection that if I had sex with her, walk out and leave her. Because all my intent was to get sex. I still have a connection with her. Because any time I see her, my mind going to tell me, you did that girl dirty. Right? You can't escape it. So the stress factor is that, no, that is going to, each time I see this young lady, my pressure go to go up. Even if it's one point, it's got to go up because the lie is going to deal with me and bring stress. And I said, well, stress is the worst thing that can happen to you, right? right. So is it any different than the concept of stress in terms of Let's, let's take two types of stress. Here, here is a beam, and here is the, the color, color. But here is a beam, here is a wall, and here is a beam coming out this wall. Okay. If we put a load here, right, tend to go through, we're going to have this in a moment, it's bend the moon. The height, the maximum point and the minimum point. But this gonna be different, isn't it? This is gonna do this. The stretch gonna reverse itself because it got nothing to hold the end. Right? Okay. But you still have the same action happening. Now, is there a little stress when I leave my child with the woman, I burn it and don't talk to it. Is, that's a tension. When I go with the woman and just take her body with no intent of doing right and then go away, I get this. It's fluctuating. Here I get the bigger damage when I leave the child because that's impelling. The load is impelling. The load here is fluctuating. I could dance around. I could justify to do other power and she didn't get pregnant. So what? <coughs> here I can't say she is pregnant. Bring me back to the, my mental responsibility of this. Huh? And bring me back to what's coming out of me. That it is not down here alone involved, but here. I am connected to a child. And just like I've made a connection to a child, like my father made the connection with my mother and bring me out, I got the connection. So the idea here continues back here, and the idea is no different than the idea here. If this is placed in stretch, it will break when it meets its ultimate limit, its elasticity. This will break equally. It tend to shear. It will tend to shear here quicker. But if it doesn't shear here and the load is here, it may it, will, it bends less, but it reverses the stress. But eventually, it's going to break or shear. So does it matter? If it shear, break here, or it's break here, it's broken. <coughs> and that's, the difference. that's what we are saying, is that the mathematics is no different than a human theosophical field. You had mentioned earlier about um, Giza being the central of the universe and you found that to be the central area. Can you elaborate more on that and how that came about? The ancient, the ancient uh, brothers in Egypt, in designing their pyramids and the pyramids field, uh, established that the, the, the center pyramid, the one in the pyramid, what happened in the pyramid field at Giza, you have a, a rugged plateau, rugged plateau, and the 
the largest of the pyramids, the one of Khufu, is here, and it's uh, 48 stories. Let's say up on the top, 48 stories. 48 stories using 10 foot of floor. Uh, if we have a building, this is floor one, floor two, floor three. 10 foot from one floor to the other. Using that, the pyramid is 48 of these, or 480 feet of, of 48 stories. This would be the one of Khufu, whom the Greeks call uh, Chips. This will be the one of his Khufu's son, which will be Kafra. Look what happened. Look at this side. Let, let's take a relationship. You see the chart? One, two, three. Three lengths of the chart. Let's take two lengths of the chart. One, two. This is higher than this, but it's not bigger than this. And that would be the one at Kafra. which the Greeks call uh, Shepherd. H-E-P-H-R-E-N. And this is the one of Shepherd's son, Menkara, whom the Greeks call Mycerinians. Menkara. Mycerinians. <clears throat> now, this is the task, but because the land is highest here, the smaller period looks taller, but in fact it's small. Okay. But these are only three of the major periods that left. There were 16 periods here. Three of the major ones and Three of the small ones, the ones of the queens, for each of these pyramids still remain. But if you notice, the ancient brothers equally put something here. They put something else. We look in the front. Let's take a let's make a projection of this. Equally here, they put something else. Now, this is the head of a human being. This is the body of a lion. Here you walk to an altar. Back of the altar, you have a stella with the words of printed on it. This is equally him. It's centered on the center pyramid. And the brother said, this point is equal to this point, so that this is here, the pyramid for this pyramid is here. And that's what it says in this pyramid. It's the theory, and nobody has ever been able to take an instrument and disprove it. All the instruments they take and put there, it turns to true north and south. So that it is still held that that's the center of the earth. But of course, it didn't end by the wishful thinking, they did it by mathematical calculations, by religion. Okay, if we don't have any other questions, let's give the brother a round of applause. And that you have a conference this weekend in New Haven, all day Friday at the Southern uh, Connecticut State University, all day Saturday at the Hill uh, House School. 
and we have a forum on Saturday, as well as a fundraising for ASCAP on, on the weekend in terms of artifacts. James, where's the fundraiser? The fundraising activity with the arts and crafts and the ball on the first floor here. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A student may have say that doesn't work because there are no letters that that connected to the craft. Yet that is what you know. You know that from England. And the two charter houses started when there were no two at all in this world. If you can figure <coughs> that they attribute to Abraham and be the first Jew or Hebrew or Harim, any of those names. You cannot then have any Hebrew before Abraham. In some language they would call him Ibrahim and also Abraham. And that would be at best the Egyptians are in the 14th dynastic period. Or I can say rather than Egyptian because that would come from the Greek Egyptus and from the English Egyptian. We would go back to Tameria and Tameria and some of those parts later to a later period in which they're speaking of the black earth in terms of Egypt. I am not speaking of none of that. I am speaking from the beginning of the Egyptian calendar. And that too will be from a chain. The Egyptian, most common Egyptian calendar which we refer to is 10,000 BC. Well, that will cost you a lot of problems because I'm thinking for what I don't need. Take your time now. Listen to what I'm saying. I am speaking before Adam and Eve. You see, who gives us Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve come from the Hebrew Bible, the book of Genesis. But the Hebrews came long after we the Egyptians were in history. They came in 1675 before another person called Jesus Christ, or Jesus the Christ. Jesus the man, or Joshua, the Christ, the anointed. That's all. That the name the man was called <coughs> in ancient time, and now in modern time, you have made Christ a name. You don't speak of the Christ anymore. So that I say, you have to get yourself properly orientated to understand the manner in which you are speaking is Western. It doesn't relate to anything Eastern, or at least when I say Eastern, I would say up to the eastern part of Africa. I don't know if you want to call it eastern map, but when you see the government, I'm going to use that. So we must understand, when I speak of Egypt, I am speaking of the northeast corner of the continent of the Kabbalah, or if you want to call it Ortega, or you want to call it Camones, or you want to call it Camones, either of them names, the 15 names on which the ancients refer to Africa, but you use only one, the Greek way, Africa, A-F-R-I-C-L-A, -A. and then you change it to Africa with a K, and then you change it to the C, but nevertheless it has nothing to do with that land, although we use the tongue, but if you say our camera, then you will be dealing with the land. We deal with everything first, just to give you an example. I will go to you one time ago and I chopped it. And if I didn't call it Hebrew, you were mad. And if I didn't call it color, you were mad. The many things that this you adopted that comes from, please respect me, I have only one person to this, that come from Master. And when the Master said something, we come to do it. We were told that the Master has given us. We set standards. We do all kinds of things. We even raise our children the way the master has said, and then Jay, boy, you know, 
rotates or slowly changes, because it does that. We can't deny that. So let me get back to the most important thing. You speak of the grand blood of Luxor. And the grand blood of Luxor was built by Pharaoh Amenhotep III. Moses was born yet. Moses, you allegedly uh, that for you. Moses was during the time of the Pharaoh to Tottenham. You can't put him for a period of time. That is way, way when the, 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 the Pharaohs of all time, when the Grand Lodge was opened long before that, when the, the first Grand Lodge at Saqqara was opened long before that. If you're speaking about the time of Jusla, you know, tap and all kinds of different people, you're talking about the most ingenious uh, of, of, of our country. Therefore, it is important that you come to Egypt. If nothing else, to see the Grand Lodge and to see the original Lodge. It's still there. Broken down, yes, but nevertheless, still there. For example, if I had said to your brethren that tonight James Brown will be playing, <clears throat> it would have been back. That's right. You would not have been able to get anyone that called in here. <laughs> but I am speaking to you about the crap. And you can see the kind of presentation. Not only for that, but then speak. See, it's hard to speak to people when they're in a different frame of mind. But we could not speak to you tonight. And for that reason, you notice that I haven't dressed appropriate. I couldn't speak with you with ladies who are of your craft because we didn't have women in our craft. We don't have an auxiliary group. Women have an order that could be said to be similar to the craft in its context. But nevertheless, they never meet with us or we with them because we can never be women and they can never be men. So you have to understand the standard by which I am going to speak to you tonight is based upon quadrants. For example, we you based upon a compass to measure a serve or to <laughs> circumscribe a serve. And within the circle we have four quadrants. One quarter. Second quarter, third quarter, the fourth quarter. You must start the first quarter at age seven. You must finish the last quarter, which is the fourth quarter, by age 70. And it has nothing to do with some not saying anything. Put about the picture, you know, it didn't exist. When the third crap was initiated, he wasn't existed. When the first pyramid was built, Abraham was born. When this 97th, which is the last pyramid, the one down at, out at Marara, when that was built, Abraham was born. When Egypt built her last pyramid, Abraham was born. She built the last pyramid of the 12th dynasty. Abraham was born to the 13th dynasty when he was born, if in fact there is an Abraham. Now, the other thing that I have to say that we argue, because we have to first understand there are many religions in the world. You said you got the only one and you do Jesus. Another one said he got the only one and it's with Allah. Another one said he got the only one, it's with Jehovah. But none of those three was in existence when the ancient Egyptian was worshipping Ra. 
and continue to worship Ra. The reason we don't worship Ra, most of us today, is because of colonialism has forced us to accept new values. But some of us still worship old values and have the cross based upon the worship of Ra. <coughs> You are going to argue, which is correct. Now, if I came here and I said I want to join track, you say, okay. Then you will put me through a, a rhythm of Jesus Christ. And I said to you, I can't do that. Because we have a Christ before the others. On the wall at Abydos, he has been to Abydos, and at least I know that. You will go to the wall and find Goddess Aset, otherwise called Isis. You see God as a root, otherwise called Osiris. And you will see God Heru, otherwise called Horus. They are 4,000 years before Jesus Christ. And the mother, the mother of the Messiah, had a baby by an immaculate conception. This is 4,000 years before Jesus Christ. In the whole world, she had it at the city of Abydos, which is the first holy land. There was no Palestine yet. There was no Jerusalem. There was no Mecca. This is thousands of years before any of those three names. So there you have a story that has been compounded, that has been followed, but it has become the standard. We have been introduced to many concepts by our slave masters who have not taken into consideration any of our civilization because they need to make us less than themselves. Let me go by one by one. If I came to you, don't I say I'm late. If I came to you, I, I will speak a little in tongue. If I came to you and I greet you, you will greet me as a man in three dimensions. You will give me the word in triple method. And we would say and give the grip. And you would say that you're a man. However, if you came to me and gave me three dimensions, I would say, okay, you've done very good, but you need four more to be a man. And you would say to me, four more than that, I would be up in a big house. And I say, no, four more than that would be showing me that you are a man. Anything less than that, you cannot speak to me at that level. You can't speak. You would say, all I need to be is three. And I said, no. You need seven. And so you couldn't speak to me. And then we are arguing, ready to fight. We're ready to have an argument. We're ready. And then I have to tell you did you read the Book of the Dead? And the Confirmation Plan? And 10 to 1, you have not read it. Because if you look at the picture, you see yourself in there. And then look at what it is. Look at where it came from, and look at how many copies are in the world. And you will see things in which you would be shocked. Because then I cannot speak to you, not through your fault, but through our colonization by the European. Many other things which you hold to. Let's take even your behavior. You're marching in the street. You said, I have, I am a member of a secret society. How secret could you be? When I saw you in the street, 
<laughs> with a cup cut, a cold style, a cutaway jacket. This is no African and no ever dress that way. Huh? But you address that way and you well dressed. Because it's dark, dark, white is dark. You know, but I can't recognize you. And I said, if you're a secret organization, how come I see him in the street? With an organization, with a name. And then you go to the extent of having a brother, you say, is a brother in fact when you imitate another religion? You say he's a shrine. Mm. And you, all you do with him is to make jokes of another man's religion. The difficulty is that since you have not studied the Book of the Dead or the Papyrus of Annie and many other books, for instance, the Book of Knowing Rock, the Book of Gates, all of these books are older than Genesis. You can't get Adam and Eve in there because there are no Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve was only for those who are Judeo, Christian, and Islamic. But what happened about the religion before that? And namely, if you are of the religion, any of the religion in Egypt, Ethiopia, and I'm not going to say, but Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia, and Uganda. But you will know Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia from the time of the British occupation of those lands. But I'm speaking before the British, before the missionaries came. And you have not come to you see. You will go to Israel. You will go to Mecca. And you will go to Rome. But you will not come home to see us. So let me speak about it. Let me speak to you on the first quadrant. When you meet the first quadrant, and they won't talk about work that you need to do, you will have to come to Ethiopia to the stone, and to Egypt to the stone, and to Sudan to the stone. But the first step is Egypt at the end of the Nile. Not the beginning of the Nile. The Nile does not flow from the north to the south. It flows from the south to the north. The, north, the blue Nile comes out of Ethiopia. The white Nile comes out of Uganda. And we are talking about when Ethiopia was called another name, Axel. And when Uganda was called Buganda, and it was part of the Buganda Kingdom. The blue Nile and white Nile meet as Khartoum and join together. They flow out of Khartoum still northwards and meet another body of water coming out of Ethiopia. When it meets that body of water, it then flows still north, but it has passed a number of cataracts. So the, the first cataract is in Sudan instead of in Egypt. And it then goes all the way until it meets the sixth cataract in Egypt, in a place called Sono, which is today called Aswan. Then it continues down all the way to where Alexandria is, the end of Egypt and north, and flows in the great, great, great sea, which you call Mediterranean. Now you see all that, but there is more because you have to come to the first quadrant. If I said to you, are you a man? You said, I am a man. I said, how do I know? You said, try me. And then I tried you. And I try you because you said you are a man. I don't have to try you from A to B or to C or Z. I may mean, try you anywhere within seventh level. That is just for you being a man, but you are walking in the first quadrant. 
So then I ask you, if you are a man, you have already been to the stone. You know what, you know what kind of stone I'm speaking about? I said, I am talking about the stone at the temple in Aswan. If you have met, but you tell me, I've been to Israel. I've been to Rome, I've been to Athens. But you still haven't yet said, I was home. Is it natural for a person to go to his home if you never know? If you never know your mother, says she had given you away if something happened, isn't the first thing when you get your alleged freedom, you want to meet your mother? Instead of going somebody to see somebody else? No, you go to see somebody else than your mother. Because you have not been told that you are a man. You need somebody to tell you that you are a man. You're supposed to know. Because you're now a father. You're a father, a daughter, a father, a son, or many. So you don't need anyone to tell you are a man. You have all the proof that is necessary. You're born with women, you're having children, so you are a man. Or at least you're somewhat like a man. <laughs> <laughs> now, at the top pyramid, what Herodotus came from Greece, Greece in 450, before the Christian era, or before the common era, and he saw a building. He described it in his book. It is the labyrinth. And the twelfth pyramid, and there is no pharaoh more African in looks than this particular pharaoh. This pharaoh is Amen M Hak, A M E N dash. E M dash A A T the third. I mean the third. He just now moved out of the museum. Uh, they put the the statue to begin because it's two hours. <coughs> and this building had three thousand rooms. One thousand of them below the earth's surface. They were the trap, and if, when you go there, you will see evidence of the trap, you see evidence of the footings that they raised up, and of course, a part of the pyramid still remains. Unfortunately, it's now a lot of water, a lot, a lot of water, you can't go inside, uh, is now inside. Because before the Great the, Pyramid, um, the dam was built. The water table was a certain level, but since the dam had built, the water table has increased about four feet. To ask people to understand the relationship of the craft between here and there is difficult because you're asking us to accept Western terminology, Western ideologies, Western behavior about something that isn't there. And you will not make the move to break away. You are making the move to coalesce. And that's the really difficult. For instance, when we speak of the Pharaoh, you have in your mind that the Pharaoh must have been bad because you have the story of a story by the Hebrews saying the Pharaohs were bad. Did you have a book by the Pharaohs written by an Egyptian saying that the Egyptians were good? Or do you have a, only a book in which the Hebrews said the Egyptians were bad? You say, in law, that there's a, one a story must have more than just the complainant. It must have the respondent. But you made the complainant, complainant, witness, judge, jury, and everything. And you listen to his side, 
but don't listen to the response. <coughs> so, it is hard. I am wearing a ring. You may proceed from there. You proceed on the American dollar bill. And in the dollar bill, you have a pyramid. As a matter of fact, it's the Great Pyramid at Giza, the largest of the pyramids of Giza. There were 16 pyramids originally there, but when the Arabs came as conquerors in Egypt 1300 years ago, one of the things they did was to use all these sculptures from the various ancient sites and took the stones within it to build houses for the wealthy, not only the Arabs, the Christians and the, and the, and the Jews, all who were there, pay no interest to the fact that those institutions were Egyptian, were African. And they destroyed them, many in different degrees, some completely. And therefore, it is hard for us to give a full attention, but yet there is more than those who are the most modern. You have to have gone to Egypt before, even the first quadrant, the stone, is about the only thing that damaged. But when you go there, you must be able to go at an early period in which you and the brother agreed to go to be there so that there will not be men past 70 years of age, women of any age at all, and now you're going to say something else. Since your wife is going to say to you, you cannot treat us different to you. We are human beings. And we will say to you, so what? <laughs> you can't understand that because you have already women in your craft. You are women yourself. The, the female cannot open a house without one of you. And you become a woman for that crap. <laughs> now how do you how do you how do you support that I do not know? But I know I don't hang the week and then you decide you have to throw a woman. Alright. To understand the recent crap. You must understand first of all what we are doing. The craft came about in the building of the first building of stone ever built by a human being. The Great Pyramid, the Step Pyramid of the Pharaoh Juza. Not Z O Z E R. That's the Greek spelling. D J O S E R. The architect was a mountain genius in Hotep. He was a builder, an architect, and equally a physician, the prime minister. He had a number of things that he did. And this was the, the third dynasty. Not a single Jew was born anywhere yet. Not Abraham was born. He has been born until the 14th dynasty. We are talking about the first dynasty to the 14th dynasty. And there was Egypt before the dynastic period. There was Egypt during the civilian period. Civilian first, second, and third. That would bring us to 10,000 when we started the religion that we have there. The belief system was started at 10,000 when we worshiped the moon or looked at the moon in a different perspective. It is 4100 that we changed and decided if the sun should be given the worship because every day the sun, if it doesn't shine here, it shines somewhere else. But it's going to shine every day. You can bet the down. You can't bet in Jesus Christ. Because something they will say about Jesus Christ, you can't prove it to me every day. But I can prove to you every day that the sun is shining. So, theory. It started when Inhotep wanted a place to bury his pharaoh. That's the third dynasty. 
Up until then, they buried the Pharaoh in the ground and a box like houses around. In Hotep tried to make a box out of the stone structure. Stone mason with all marble. He didn't like the first box, a square. He built a second box smaller than the first, a third smaller than the first two, a fourth smaller than the first three, a fifth like a wedding cake. Until there are six boxes. The Egyptians called them mastaba. Mastaba is the box like structure. And 80% in the earth and 20% out. It is in Hotel who built that first stone structure and then it was necessary to build a valley temple. To build a burial temple and to build an embalming temple with a tunnel that connect them all. Not only that, the body was set 91 feet down into the ground, 91 foot deep. So by the first period of time when he started that, the Pharaoh will lay deep into the ground because the first belief was heaven was down in the earth. But by the fourth dynasty, the bodies are up on the second floor. We are then at Giza, where they start to build their pyramids. It also at the fourth dynasty in Giza, when they would take a mountain, a piece of mountain, and build or design what they call today the Sphinx of Giza, which we who relate to it know it as another name. We know it as Hamakis. But Hamakis is a Greek name. So we go back to what? The third pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, and we call it by that name. And that's to worship the statue of the god of Khufu, Kafra, and Menkara. We call it the statue of Kafra. It is the head of a human being, the body of a lion, and everything else pertaining to the lion. Most of the veil has gone and the lips have gone because they attributed destruction to Napoleon the Bonaparte and uh, the, the various people have come in there, they attributed the destruction, but only, only the nose and part of the day. So when you come, if you came there in the first quadrant, you would have had to go to stone, and I can't tell you what, but you would have to come there and present yourself in the presence of your brothers alone. Nobody else. And you have to take an oath to somebody, nobody else. And you would then be brought in on the first quadrant. From then, after accepting somebody, and then brought in on the first quadrant, you can then work. Now, you can use jewelry. Your jewelry must be 18 karat or better. And then you can speak because no cross. Have no crosses. Because there's no Jesus here. That's going way later before you have something called Jesus. You can't talk about John the Baptist because every Pharaoh was baptized. Every Pharaoh. And every Pharaoh to the last Pharaoh was before Jesus Christ. <coughs> All the Pharaohs are before the Christian era. 
Jesus is the Christian leader. Jesus starts with cleansing. And therefore, you cannot speak about the virginity because there is a virginity of a set, Isis. And that was given to her by the God Amin Ra, who she appealed to when her husband was killed. Again, you know, when you're talking about a God <laughs> being killed. You see, you talk, you talk to God over and over. Well, Cyrus was killed twice. Well, Cyrus was brought first hanged. His killer, his brother, his brother see him for the second time and cut him up now, besides this time I'll get rid of him. Cut him up in 14 pieces. Throw away each piece around the world and the last piece is his penis. <laughs> throw, it, throw it into the Nile River mm -hmm. and the Nile catfish, that's what I mean catfish. <laughs> 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 Nubia is the only cafe. But again, you will see all in there. But looking into it, you can find that way back there, when this is the progress of Annie, giving you what will happen before you go into hellfire. Now, you speak uh, all the time about hellfire. And the hellfire, there's six. Forces that turn the hellfire on. You were taught that you will be constantly beaten for the right when after you die that God will come there with a stick as a, a monster and beat you and mistreat you and put some non-cooking water to you, don't cook too, too much and beat you and do anything to you. That's what you've been taught. With all the billions and trillions of people that have been born, how many go out your back? They go come and beat you. They go in there, there, and there. Remember, this is older than the Jewish Bible. Thousands of years older. Genesis of the Jewish Bible was not started until 700 BC. <coughs> This goes back to 4100 BC, 4100 years before Genesis. And yet, we have this day. And I'm sure that you didn't know. It's, and your Bible speaks of this book. It speaks of the book of the dead. And the papyrus of Annie but never showed you a copy. But here it is, book of the dead. Why? There's more, no more than saying that you are inferior by virtue of your being. Not that you've done anything. Just say. And to satisfy their position, you've satisfied the, the statement by being bad. Or at least pretending to be mad because. Back to us, got some body wash coming up. Hmm. But these are the things that we have to look at. Number one, how can you be independent of a person, yet that person decides how you're going to eat, how you're going to sleep, how you're going to die, and how you're going to live? To be independent, you must have independent thoughts of him and any business things that you do. Yes, you can go to the school, I went to school. All of us. It's not but when you become a man, you do other things if you haven't done it yet. There are all kinds of schools, all kinds of beliefs, all kinds of lands you can travel and visit, all kinds of religion that you can read. And all kinds of religion you can be amongst to know what's right or wrong. But no, you said, it's got to be right that. And you take it and don't listen to anybody else say anything. You won't hear no one else at all. This is the problem. In the first quadrant, again, it is dealing with the most eastern part of our Kebul and Abbasra. Therefore, it's dealing with Somalia. 
So Malia as a part of Penwet, Penwet, which was called Kuanit to Penwet. Then the Jews, the Jews came and called by another name. So you decide if the Jews call it by another name, it's got to be right. So you call it what? Pump does not exist. This is a part in Africa. They had never been to Pump. The Jews never went there. They heard about the name and thus used it to speak of an African nation. But up until the 25th dynasty, it was the Hakka, our Pharaoh, our, the head of Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. His name is the Hakka. He was the king that saved Israel from the Assyrians taking it over. He is the king that they run to, to save Israel. You don't so. You have not studied that. These, this is as much a fact that you must be acquainted with as you are acquainted with your food and your plate in the morning. Because if you have to discuss with people who you are, you must know some historical data. Just as you tell me, uh, Cleopatra was a black woman. And I will ask you, where? <laughs> you will tell me Cleopatra was a black woman in Egypt. I said, what Egypt? I got to ask you what Egypt because it's going to be a different Egypt than I know. You mean number one, Cleopatra is seven. That's another thing. You got to know his number. And if you tell me Cleopatra is seven, who was the woman of Egypt messing with Anthony, Mark Antonio, of Europe, Rome, who married a woman? This is the woman, this is the woman that you are very in tune with. The history of Mark Antonio, he married Caesar's sister. Went to bed when Caesar's sister did not sleep with her, but went through the window. <laughs> to go back to Cleopatra in Egypt. And that's why Caesar was mad. And number one, she is not black. How did you get her black? She is the daughter of Sutter, who changed his name to Ptolemy when the death of Alexander mm -hmm. and called himself Pharaoh of all Egypt. Her mother was the daughter of the Persian star who had lost the war because Persia had enslaved both Egypt and Greece. So her mother is white, she's a Persian, her father is white, a Greek, Macedonian Greek. How did you get her back? It was Cleopatra the first to Cleopatra the, the, the seventh. It was Ptolemy, all the boys were Ptolemy. Ptolemy the first to Ptolemy fifteen. Now you name them one, one, which one of them Ptolemy was black? Or let, 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 which uh, one of the Persian Arab's wife was, was black? Name me one. You don't know. But you said she was. Who told you she was? You said it because you liked it? It was a time when we wanted to know that certain blacks were like Donna Shaw. You said Diana Shaw was black. <laughs> because you wanted to be that way, not that she was black. <laughs> you got no room. But you wanted it to be so. So as long as you want it, that's so. But, but the proof isn't there to support you. Just like this. Sure, it is true that Cleopatra was Greek Persian and not a bit of African in her. Mm. That to her. Because I'm busting your balloon. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not no, no. glad because the factor is like the girl that's just coming from England. Just the most, the prince, the prince from England. The crown prostitute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you are claiming somebody of consequence, we could understand. But there's so many great African women, queen and not queen, who were great people you could admire and pay tribute to that we are suffer when you call Cleopatra mm -hmm. and where you should have left out 
where you're from now. It's good you have that particular set. But why is it that I want you? Because of the same book. When they came to Egypt, they found, among other things, the first houses built by men out of brick, of the stone. They found a medical profession in its full room with doctors. They found a society in which you entered medical school and all other different schools at age seven and you did not complete your education until age 47. This nonsense of a mystery school, we had no mystery school. We had an educational system which produced some people that the Greeks called mysterious. It was mysterious because what we were teaching, they didn't know. And it was a mystery to them. Mathematics, engineering, science, medicine, all that. And they had come to learn. And we had been in existence for thousands of years before Crete, the island between Greece and Egypt. And then we went to Crete, taught the Cretans, and the Cretans went and became the first European. That is why you see so many Africans like us in Greece. We feel proud. You know, you could be in bondage and still feel proud because they can put in bondage anybody. Uh, we feel proud because of our history and we have no doubt that we will come back. You can mistreat me, it's like some brothers, you mistreat the wife or beat her up in the morning or you will try to go to sleep with her in the night. <laughs> right? She indicate to you that you less than her. Because if you beat her in the morning, but gotta go to bed in the night, she's, a, she's better than you. You have to <laughs> give up that false pride where you declare she's nothing you could beat her up and go to her to get her body. By the time you're ready to beat her, ready to go. If you were hit her, you gotta be ready to go. Because you're hitting her by showing your contempt for her. You can't love her and beat her at the same time. Mm -hmm. It is the big argument. In the first quadrant, again, when you are in the first quadrant, you go to, remember, God is a belief. You don't know God. Not you, none of you. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you the Pope. You don't know God. You believe in a God. And one belief is just as good as that. But taking that to what it's worth is your relationship with man and woman, of course, that make you important or unimportant. What you've done with men or women, your relationship with that is what is going to make you the great person you're supposed to be. Maybe you are. In looking at the book again, when you come to the second quadrant, I will not go into any of the quadrants at any length because you understand. I don't know even the men. If you are man or woman, I don't know if you have taken the oath. So I use God. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> In the second quadrant, you will have to go to Sudan for this. You go to Sudan because you have to go to the necessary place. You see, the Jews said that the build the pyramids of Egypt. We, we know we need to go to that of stone, a uh, 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 brick made of straw. mud and straw. You go, I take you, I will take you to all the pyramids and you don't see a brick made of straw. <laughs> In not one of the 97 pyramids. 
But did they build those in Sudan too? There are 44 pilgrims in Sudan. And you got to walk. And they had something. And it's not a blanket plugged into the wall. I am talking about walking and the something. And the pyramids, that that thing around, I mean, that thing is blown around the pyramid, and then at night you sleep in Tokonde, one of the cities in Sudan. And then when you go there, in your condition, you will not be feeling good, I'm sure. You got to drive five and a half hours from Sudan going northeast to you meet Baga. And in Baga, you will meet the first collective of buildings <laughs> run by Queen Shaba Tata Shaba. And you will see her killing her enemies, etc. And the complex of buildings there. And you ask, when I thought it was only in, in Egypt that they had these buildings, you thought. But you don't know. And then you travel five more hours going to Meroe. You're going to Meroe because you're going to stand in the current circle <coughs> in Meroe. That five hours plus two hours. You are already seven hours in the desert going, and now you reach Meroe. But when you reach Meroe and look around you, what you have seen, 10 people live here, 20 people live there, 30 people live there, you're fast on the way, and that's all they live. And there's no store, you can't buy a bit of water there. And those people live there all year around. And all they ever see is sand, and more sand. And you have to go to see that. And as I said, nothing is punched in the wall, and a fiddle when you can walk on. <coughs> That's in your second quadrant. I just give you some something. You must now sleep in the Conde one night. And as you sleep in the Conde that night, you will get up and get ready to drive back seven hours, non-stop, to Chikondi. You have to Sudan now. You have gone to Ethiopia to the third quadrant. In Ethiopia, you are now coming to what they call the Christian era. <coughs> And you have a set of buildings at Lanibab, a set of churches that cut in the mountain. They're not built, they're cut out with tools that men cut it out with their hands, hatching in hammers. There are ten on top and ten below. Of the ten below, one is down to the ground. These are things, there is no step for you to walk up. I can't tell you what. It's on, you're walking, but it's on the side of the mountain. You can't turn back because there are others coming behind you. You must go far. You will notice that there are blind men. Blind men who are walking behind you in all this treacherous place. And no railings. And you wonder. In the buildings you will see everything. And then you build these ten stone buildings lined up. And then it takes you down to the lower place where there are ten other buildings. And in the ten other buildings, now the Egyptian, the, 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 the Ethiopians have taken the ancient town and turned over to Christianity by saying that some stone from Solomon given to, uh, uh, to Hakim is 
the only stone of the stone of Moses. There is not a thing in Egypt. There is a stone of the confined one at Edfu, where Horace the Elder is. And this is an exact copy, but they can't show you. They tell you they keep it because of a miracle. What miracle? Show them. Show the people what you got. But they can't show. What is happening is that we as Africans, whatever we have, we are ashamed of it, though it is higher than others. And those of us who run the various governments have been to the schools of the masters. We've been to school in, in, in Belgium, school in France, school in America, school in Russia, school in Italy, you name it, we've been there as a student. And leave our own school and come back and feel that the foreign education is there. Just to be, and you ask why have Africans behaved so badly in fighting each other because we are not Africans. We look like it. Like you. Ask yourself, look at yourself good. And ask yourself, am I an African? When last did I call myself an African? <laughs> and you know better I would do myself. I just call myself an African than that of you. <laughs> It is because we have been trained to look thoroughly against our craft. If the Europeans decided in the morning they're going to end masonry, there'll be no masonry, you're going to end it. You're three months later and you will end yours. At one time you had a white girl who was Miss uh, Prince Hall. You excuse that. She was black in mind, even not in heart. What nonsense that is. <laughs> <laughs> she black, she black, she white, she white. And when a black girl went in the white Miss America, you know something wrong with you. It's got to be wrong. It's got to be wrong. You see, nobody likes to be con condemned, but I don't condemn. Just the same. Because it is time you had God here, you had Malcolm here. I don't hear the name. I only hear King. I only hear King. There must be something wrong. That you don't need accept those that the white men accept. If you produce leaders going back to the past, the great reverence who fought. <laughs> For freedom, you don't accept them if they have not been accepted by whites. The Masonic craft speak, I must speak of three individuals. <coughs> and you say that you go to look for them. These are men. One was found in Ethiopia. And you tell me that you have a a name with three syllables, and that one, and one of them was okay, about. And you tell me you say that because that man was one of them, and the third was the beginner. And you say you went to look to, for them down in Ethiopia. And you only found the decay for me. That will be in the second degree. And when you come back to the second degree, you can now go to the third degree. You are going now from Ethiopia, but you are going to some place that you would consider the people uncivilized because they don't look like you. But they live their life, an African life. I'm coming to Uganda. I am in Uganda. And there's quite a big wall there. And you said it's the Queen Victoria Lake. Now, how Queen Victoria get a lake <laughs> in Africa? 
You don't have a lake in England. <laughs> and you give them a lake in Africa. Do you see how so funny it sounds? We have a name for the lake. And we always speak of it as Mwanda Nyanda. So we all going back to Mwanda Nyanda. Love that people may go around our horses are dead. When you're in the lion mouth, you have to speak like the lion. You've got no choice. But when you're outside of the lion mouth, you speak as a man. We will do our third degree there. And we'll do it exactly at the lake. Because there are certain African words to be said about the crack. And the crack has nothing to do. And that's why I said, when you brag that Prince Hall was given the degree, he's the son of an Englishman and an African woman, who was given a degree and he happy. There's nothing to be happy about. He was given partially what the craft had had in Egypt, England and France had stolen, and now given to the colonies of African people who they have conquered. And we don't feel proud of it. It's unfortunate, but we don't feel proud of it. Of course, the fourth degree is the big degree. You have to be in Ethiopia and Lenguala. In Lalibala, you will see all kinds of structures. No wells in the world are going to see them. And you will see what we have done with our two hands. And people come and now say it must have been done by men from outer space. The pyramid must have been done by men from outer space. The, 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 the churches in Ethiopia from men from outer space, at Lalibala, outer space, and all this. And then they go to see the most ancient relics we have in an ancient city. Because they can't figure the writing there, because they can't figure how could we have made those sheets of stone, and they want to know what kind of tools we use. I'm so glad that they'll never find it. And then all of us trying to explain to them how it was done. And I'm saying, why explain? Haven't we explained enough? But we continue. You must understand again that you must come familiar with this book. If you come home, fight your battle. Because in the craft, you cannot drink out the hub and know that for what luck. You cannot drink out the hub and mistreat a brother, a brother's wife, a brother's sister, a brother's mother, any relative of a brother. It is enough to remove you from the But then you must stand for those principles. We point to the ever seeing eye, the ever seeing eye of Horus, when he had to fight his uncle, Sir Titan. That is the most ancient of religious philosophical thought that there is. And we were told to not look at this. Don't believe in it. Why? It was before they, thousands of years before they had theirs. If it was good for us to build all those temples, to build all that we built, the pyramids and so forth, it still is good today. So although we do not, at the most, worship in those temples. Although we do not do many things in the home, although we do not march in the street, we still maintain our integrity in these values. The values that go back thousands and thousands upon years. The concept, let me give you a version 
birth. I was born before the birth. Maybe you are. I don't know. Can't check you out. <laughs> <laughs> my mother had me, my father does not stay with me. And when she pointed to me, she told me that's my father. And she had no intercourse with another man until I was born. Now, if that is true, I am the virgin of the birth. No man touched me but my father. You got the virgin birth meaning a complete different thing. You are saying that the woman has never been touched by a human being. It did not say that. It said the Greek word virgo is a clean woman. And a woman who goes with no one else but her husband is a clean woman. And she has a virgin child. It has nothing to do with the condition of a hymen. Mm. It could be big, small, like a house. <laughs> but we have made the mistake. And the virgin birth has nothing to do with Jesus. It has to do with Mary. Mary was born to her mother without the benefit of childbirth that of our intercourse that was trying to fool us with. The beast of the Immaculate Conception is not of Jesus, Jesus is of Mary's birth to her mother. I said he's going to the priest. Then he's going to ask you who I what you, where you come to with that. He said, because I read it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Is the trickery in which we are placed at. I know it's hurt a lot of you because you don't want to hear the truth. The truth hurts. I know it. I don't like to hear the truth either when it's against me. But I gotta even live with it. I gotta deal with it. And let me take another point here. If tomorrow I came to you, and I came to you dressed as I am, or I came to you dressed the way any one of you are, and I give you the necessary sign, and you are in the process of a meeting, you will not answer me. You will not return my challenge to you because you will say that I do not have on the right clothes. Any clothes I have on, if I'm naked and I give you a sign, you must recognize my sign. I don't need papers or anything. My sign, if I know the sign, you must give it recognition. If I know the grip, you must give it recognition. And heaven knows. I know the word. Mm. You must give it better recognition. <laughs> <laughs> but you will not do it. Because in the West, you are told by the clothes you wear. It shows that you are a brother. No. Your clothes you wear shows you nothing. It shows you got a clothes, that's all. <laughs> it is by the sign, the word, <coughs> and the grip. That's right. But we have lost that. And now I'm saying to you, go to Egypt once. One more. Go and see the Grand Lodge of Luxor. You speak of it, it's in your book. I am not telling you to do something you have you're not bound to do. I am saying to you to go to a set. The Greek story is themes. The real story and the, and, the, and the Arab story is Luxor. But I'm using the original name. It's Waset. And you will go there and see the same thing that your house is built upon. You will go there and there. You can't find it in Israel. You can't find it. You can't find the Salomon house. The Mabak can't find it. Thousands of years before Sarah. I am asking 
we knew at what point do we start? I mean, you, you're comfortable. I'm not straight to disturb the comfort. But at what point do you start being a man? At what point? Don't tell me my woman and I are the same. No, hello, she got a virgin and you got a penis. It's impossible to be the same. She got two breasts that are quite different than yours and at the same tear down. <laughs> <laughs> For some more. I mean, this, this is reality. You, you're afraid to be men. I see going around there, jump around. <laughs> Doing all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you can try to design the clothes of men. Just look at them. Ladies can't pick up a dime if she drops it. She gotta ask somebody who hired to get it. Because the whole family will be out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> These are realities. And the quicker we deal with reality, the better it's going to be for us. My brothers and my brothers. I meant to tell you what I just did tell you with all honesty. And at times I feel that the little laughter may have come within. I came to the United States a few years ago with the, with the United Nations. And I ended teaching at Cornell for 18 years at Cornell University. But don't think I was happy. At the United Nations is a white man's organization, whether you like it or not. They run it for the benefit of white men, not for the benefit of the Africans. You could tell by their decisions. A man don't get stuck being prejudiced because he goes to the United Nations. He don't stop president because, get being prejudiced because he's not a president. They are all prejudiced. I don't care if it's Carter or uh, they don't live up over there. Uh, it is. One has to be a realistic. Two, we are an oppressed people. We're the best dressed up slaves, there are. <laughs> but we are in that condition because you, you can't tell me that we even have the same rights of privilege as Hebrew people, the white ones, because they're black ones, uh, that you, the Hebrew people, you see the way we are treated in Israel. The nine plus four thousand in Israel, that's thirteen uh, thousand, and then those that existed there before the Europeans were brought into to the country. Regardless of where we are around the world, we are mistreated by African people, but we are stupid because we have not yet decided to recognize each other. I'm an Ethiopian, you are Jamaican, he is a Trinidad. The slave boat did not bring Ethiopian, Jamaicans, Trinidadians. It brought Africans. It didn't bring Negroes, colored people, and Zambos. It brought Africans. And therefore, when the first African woman got a child in this part of the world, she got an African child. And we are still African. If we could recognize them, if we could recognize that the God we believe in is just as good or just as bad as the other gods and look at ourselves that need the help of each other. Then we would have overcome most of the problem in our way to find a solution. And that we will go on. And fortunately, none of you with my voice can go to the four quadrant. You can't go because you didn't enter into the crowd at A7. Unfortunately, you got to be 70 years at oldest, seven years at the youngest, to be a member of the crowd. Seven years, your father or your some elder brother has to take you in and stay with you to the legal age of the society, and then you continue and you will make the 70 and last quadrant. You got to, this conversion, you got to treat your wife. You stop and hear what I said, wife. Your wife, not the woman. 
If you got a woman, get rid of her. I said, your wife. You must treat your wife as a part of yourself. Because we do not have any wife walking behind us. Our wives walk beside us. And our wife work with us in harmony. Because it's impossible to have a girlfriend and your wife, wife unless you are living a polygamous life. Now understand me. There's nothing wrong in having 10 women, 20 women, as long as there's 20 wives. <laughs> <laughs> because in my place where I was born, my grandfather had 61 children and 11 wives. There was nothing wrong with it, providing the country in which he lived, each wife is the same and is treated the same. Now we will say, they can't be treated the same. You never had them. <laughs> but if you had, born in, in a society where multiple marriage is common and accepted, you will find no problem because each wife, if one has a car, the other one has to have a car. You can't give one more than the other. And you can't hit your wife because she is a woman like you are a man. There are these values. There are all kinds of values. You can't see a bird child in need of, of food and not give it. You cannot because you will be brought up and charged and, and you will be put out. There is no other way than to treat a brother who has refused food to a brother or a member of his family but to expel him. And the worst thing is for nobody to speak to you. You see, in the crowd, one is expected to be clean. Am I saying I'm clean? Yes. Am I saying that I make mistakes? Yes. But when I make a mistake and it's brought to my attention, I correct it. I immediately do everything to ask the person who I hurt by that error to correct it, even though the bird is not on the grass. Because it's my duty, once a year, I ask all brothers, I make a statement when, once a year, and ask any brother who I felt that I am offended to come and tell me and let me correct it. You don't do this. You don't ask the brothers and sisters if they want to explain to you what wrong you have done to them that you could have corrected. And these are things, and I think that is the very most important point that we need to do. Lastly, the book speaks of any meeting for service. And so, as a group, and his two sisters behind him, his two sisters are a step. And anybody know the other one? Nephrite. 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 And they're standing behind him. In front of him, in a certain plan. And the seven, the, the four sons of his grand, of his son. And the four sons are there for anyone coming to him. Remember, Asaru, Osiris, was reborn before Jesus. Thousands of years before Jesus was born and come back and remove three stones, he had to move a wall. You know, know about it. But we have to read things that we do not accept. 
Because in the world there are all kinds of things, and one can't say one is learned unless one is willing to accept, to read. Read anything. <laughs> read a book by Adolf Hitler. <clears throat> it is a book. Let no one tell you you can't read this, that, and other thing. It is the only way I can to know something else. To read. It will help you to learn. Reading doesn't make you accept it, but it makes you knowledgeable of it. Do not live with your head like an ostrich from Ethiopia. Deep down in the sun, a big body. Here's the head in the sun, and a big body is coming. Take your aim and blow it away. That's what we call the cuckoo ball. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> you, my brother, especially with the black studies going on today, it is necessary that you know as much as you can about yourself. Let no one know more than you. Don't mind if you are reading the same thing in the process at times. <coughs> At least you're thinking that you're reading something different. Read and read and read until it hurts. You watch the TV. The time that you're putting in the TV, you're flopping your face out. You can put in serious writing. You can go back to see yourself and that you like the King of England from the time of George III. Just to notice who is the mother, Queen Charlotte Sophia. Look at her sister over there, and that's his brother. You would read about the three musketeers, Alexander Dumas, the Dumas from France, that's you. You are, are all that you are talking about. You are talking about the first king of Sweden, that's you again. But that, from, from Haiti. It is you. You're talking about uh, various people in Italy, and it's still you. Read of you when you were making the world what it's turned out to be. Read of you when men look up to you and call you the God of this and God of that. Read the poems of Shakespeare, and you find that seven of Shakespeare plays are writing about you. And that not, you have nothing to be ashamed of, but indeed to be proud. You have you don't have to go to people and ask them, may I join you? Why? They should ask you, may I join you? Mm. You have nothing to fear. But we are times. We gotta stop and help each other. I have to come to you, you have to come to me. Where I have to listen to you, you have to listen to me. We need to talk to each other. And I go let it go to question and the period. And sometimes I may not be able to answer your question for logical reasons that I will tell you. And other times I will answer your question. But one other night, <coughs> when Things are correct. And I got to say this, and with respect to the sisters who are listening to me, because I never be a sister, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Not along with being a sister, I like them uh, most pleasantly. <laughs> what they are in the corner. When the brothers are together, and when we can cross hands in the correct manner and meet in privacy, I will be able to share with you certain things that I can share now. And there are information <coughs> that both of us can use, but in the interim, until time meets, I want you to go to the grandmother of Luxembourg, at least. 
the Grand Knights of the Club. With anyone, I said, somebody else, doesn't matter. And just as you enter, you will enter, and one side, Ramesses is there, Ramesses is there, and as you walk in, right hand side above the near mosque, and the right hand side, and you turn backwards, you will see the temple just the exact way it will go. You will walk a few foot forward, and you look and you see the bird dressed in the regalia with the apron and everything. On the right hand side, some of the birds without the head off, they fell in the, in the earthquake. And then the regalia. You will stand up and see two major statues of Ramesses II. And behind them it is Tutankhana uh, and Amen. Tutankhana and Amen Ra. And then you see the, the Hippostel Hall that goes up to the Holy of Holies in the back. And you will understand what it means. You will understand what it is to be proud. And then you will understand why it is nobody has been able to duplicate the temple at was what were in that's gone. Temple within temple. You think that you have seen a temple when you saw the Vatican. When you saw St. John the Brian, St. Patrick, you think you have seen. Put all of those in one place. All that I have mentioned, plus more, and still drive the Indy 500 <laughs> around it. And there's a wall that wore these things in. You can stay from one end and you can look as far as you want, you can't see that end. You did it. Your ancestors did it. You don't have nothing to be ashamed of. Look at the war and see the mathematics. And there was no Greece yet. It wasn't yet in history. It didn't exist before 1000 BC. And you were right in mathematics. When other men were not yet around, you were doing chemistry, medicine, building great buildings. Others were not around. There was no Jew yet. No Muslim, no Christian. But you were there. But you got read books. All kinds of books. Like standing in fool's book. You gotta go with post standing in fool, you gotta read all the other books. Including Book of Death, Book of Knowing Rock, Book of Gates, all those other books. Those are the ancient books of yourself, your parents, your parents' parents. And you don't have to be in a shape because you were enslaved. Every man in the face of this earth, his ancestors were enslaved one time or the other by somebody. Genghis Khan and his group were down in Europe, all the way to Austria. And you don't hear them talking about their inferior. You answer to all the corrupt names. Names of servitude and forget your past. <clears throat> yes, we all call to a man. We don't have to walk to a tomb. We have a tomb already where our children suffered and we were not meant to save them. So I open myself to your questions and answers.
copy of the book? I mean, does the book exist where I can buy copies? It's not in the book. Uh, you will find that the French Revolution has a number. And uh, I, you can get book of the dead. Uh, you can get copies. They, they commend your copies of book of the dead by bunch. Uh, and that will give you an exact copy of everything in there. But they don't, excuse me. <coughs> they don't make uh, the copies uh, of uh, and they make it in different kinds of ways. But not like that. for for which is the way I will get the world over. So that was uh, 1895 was the last time that they mentioned it. Where I can find it the books, the liberation bookstore. Yeah. You can find it at the liberation bookstore, Barnes and Noble, uh, uh, any of the major outlets of, of books. You may find some of the books that are made, but mostly at holidays. You will find, for instance, at Princeton University, you should find the pyramids and the coffee decks. The pyramids is those writings inside the pyramid, that's not where the burial uh, is, has taken place. In the area where the, where the, the um, burial was, you get the, the, the coffee text. And that's the two types of text in the pyramids. And then, of course, you have uh, writing in the various pyramids. But the best place, take it every go. Right? Of course, you have. Uh, 2400 hours. Take a two week trip. It will take a boat because you're going to have a fun. Take the bus and uh, trips. Go, Egypt, take the trips. Carry a camera, take the trips. Or somebody with you, take the trips. For which is spoken to us tonight for, about the, the water. You got a book written on, on this subject that we can or I can buy first. I got many, many books, <laughs> but I don't think of them unless somebody asks me. Black Man and Nile uh, and his family, that's the 800 page one, that's the 1981 version. Uh, Africa, Mother Western Civilization, I think that's also 1981. Uh, African Origin of the Major Religion. That's another one, and uh, it goes to first the travel. Black Man of the Nile and his family, 1981 edition. Africa, the model of Western civilization. Uh, the first one was a blue book, the second book was a brown book. And, uh, African religions, religion, uh, Christianity, and Islam. You wrote that? Yeah. <laughs> that's in 1971. That's African religion. Uh, some of the other titles, that, that book has been a number of titles here. Yeah. It, it said the second page will give you a lot of titles. Dr. Ben, um, I'm certainly appreciative that I've met you for the first time in person. I've seen you uh, for the first time on television, a uh, 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 television show called Like It Is, and you had, you had a great discussion with a particular rabbi from the oh, well, uh, yes. yeah, and in that. regards to the Torah. And it's, or I believe it's origin and some other things about it. You know, that was my first time really knowing who you were. And uh, I was certainly glad to have uh, uh, gotten a chance to listen to you. Um, I've attended NYU and uh, naturally, you know, uh, you have to take various courses. And one of my favorite courses was uh, philosophy. And in reading about Socrates and his relationship in Egypt and all that he had learned and tried, I, 
to my assessment, I believe that he tried to uh, bring it back to uh, uh, grief, back to uh, Athens, and share what he had learned in Egypt. Do you assess, can you, do you assess that is the true reason why they wanted him to, to kill himself? based on, 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 on what he has learned and tried to bring it back to uh, Greek? Remember the charge against Socrates was Socrates is an evil doer. He speaks of the things of God and the things below. Uh, and he speaks of them in a strange tongue. Therefore he must be burned. The strange town in which he speaks and what he's supposed to remember. Socrates was not a real person without, without uh, his, his student, without Plato, the original Socrates. Plato has met, speaks of Socrates, but there was nobody who knew Socrates, only Plato. And he had no mother, he had no father. Plato is the creator of Socrates. But that was Plato's way of speaking what he had learned for 11 years in Egypt. By the way, that's why maybe Killers Day, maybe, uh, uh, what's her name? That was like that. <laughs> Another question is this. You, you uh, may mention that uh, Cleopatra was not black, you know. Was, was, was not uh, from Egypt. Uh, uh, she was not. Uh, like any of us in here. Excuse me? She was not like any one of us in here. Okay. <laughs> and it was, all, it was always my belief, quite contrary. You know, uh, because you believe it by TSA, but you didn't believe by some supporting document. Who was her mother and who was her father? Her father was Tully the Twelfth, right? I, I don't know. I, I mean, that the one stayed in her father. Now, which black man had him? Which black woman had, had him? Who was his mother and father? They were Greeks and Persians. Of Greek and Persian heritage. You know, in, in Egypt, you have Pharaoh. Who were your friends? When from the first to the thirteenth dynasty you had only Africans from the first dynasty to the thirteenth dynasty. The first non-African people who came in came in the thirteenth dynasty and they were the Hexa. They ruled to average. And in the seventeenth dynasty they started to be kicked out by uh, by Amos. Amos died and his son took over to Pater's father. Then she became queen. When she died, her son took over and they chased out the Hyksos in the 17th dynasty. In the 18th dynasty was a great dynasty most people consider have aided. There is where you got Akhenaten, Al West Al Amrutak the Fourth, and many others. In the 19th dynasty came Ramesses the Second and his group, his father said I won, and others. It was not until the 30th dynasty, the, I'm sorry, 25th, 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 29th dynasty, that you're going to see the Persians come. That's 525. And they're going to come there and take over Egypt. The 30th dynasty will be the Greeks. The 31st dynasty will be the Romans. And then I said, Egypt vanished. They will start a new period. 
So these Europeans in Egypt came when Egypt was dying. Egypt had been involved for 5,000 years before the European Congress. <coughs> the Greek came in 332, the Romans in, in 30. So, so who placed her there as, as the queen of Egypt at that, at that point in time, when she became queen? She became queen under the Greek transition. And she became queen in 47 BC. That's just yesterday. That's at 1999 years of the Christian period, year one to now, and 47 years more, 2009 years ago. No big deal. <coughs> I read that her um, Persian mother was mixed with African. The Persian oh, the mixed with the African. Denzia, Denzia was never mixed. Denzia's mother and father were Persians. Pure Persian. And she was born in Persia and brought to Egypt. And they got to tell her not mixed. Tell you who she was. Okay. Then we could see if she was mixed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have another question. How do you suppose that the Europeans uh, adopted the concept of Freemasonry and, uh, and how did they make the extraction of the ancient uh, Egyptian mysteries or Egyptian they mysteries? They came into Rosetta, the place in Northern Africa, and found one of a stone. And the stone dealt with 22, that's why they can only do you 22 uh, proven works and make the degrees. 11 degrees, the Aquabu Rites, are imitation to give 33 degrees that Jesus had. It's the whole Christian thing. And if they don't have those 11 degrees, they don't work for. It's political degrees. You pay some money, you get one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's talk about what, what goes on. If you don't work for it, you gotta work for every degree in the craft. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, to be wrong, I'm just saying well, we are brothers and sisters here. What we are doing, let us treat you with each other. You pay for it. Uh, yes. uh, you read somewhere the Muslim and the Hindu and Shindu and the Christian can become uh, a brother of the Masonic order. Does all that is true? I mean, can, can any brother will become it, but when he becomes an order of the craft, uh, he has to give up whatever else he has. Now, any brother willing to put down what he has as against what he don't have, well, is okay. The religion, you see, religion isn't birth. Your mother is the one that gets credit with birth. For instance, I was born December the 31st, 1918. I don't have a birthday. My mother had a birthday. She bought me. And every December 31st, 19, Every December 31st is my mother's birthday day. She birthed me. I will never have a birthday. Only women can have a birthday. <laughs> you see, but we take the British thing about birthday day, and then eventually it turns to birthday when men and women can have birthday. One time, only men have, uh, only women have birthday. And a woman who gave birth to a child had a birthday. She never gave a child, she never had a birthday either. You see what happened? We have taken from the woman the child. We hold Adam and Eve nonsense. But, but, but Adam make the baby. What are you talking about? Have you ever seen a, a man give birth to a child? Even a father can give birth to a child. <laughs> it's a woman. 
And we'll take on the time from her. <laughs> So Dr. Ben, this concept of uh, basically the Christian faith becomes amazing. It's, it's not written, it's not really heard of in America, where uh, Muslim or even Chinese become, even Hispanics become, uh, becoming in, into the uh, order. Yes, this is what happened. In these particular three religions, they forgot that our religion was before them. And all they're saying is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam they have a common union in some sense. And that is against all the other religions who are thousands of years before them. And who they copy from. And we say this is the only order. If you're Christian, you say Jesus Christ is the only way. If you're Jewish, you say that's the only way. If you're Muslim, you're that way. And they fight each other. It is not doing us any good. What we need to say, there must be a common love. The, the common expression is God is love. I wish it was. Then we will love other people. But we talk about God in a hatred manner. That this religion is right, that religion is wrong, this religion is hell, they are all right. And they're all wrong. The whole, the whole thing is money. This is hard way to hear it, but that's what you're going to hear. Yes. Stop for a minute. I was confused where the heights us, whether they are European, as such, or Persians. I'm not very really clear. Well, the, the Persians are different people. They came in 525. The Hyksos came in 1675. The Hyksos they have in at the museum in Cairo. You have some heads in the museum and some heads in the guard. And they show uh, pictures, figures that are African as the Hyksos. Herodotus in his book, indeed with them in book two, speaks of the uh, uh, African people. He called speak of them as being African people. But then the others who speak of them as being another group of people, but they never change the image. So, it's up to you. Sometimes you see, we read in, in order where the brothers grew up two sides of the, the company. And everybody, you know, can, can you explain the definition of that? Well, you got, and the, well, up the, the you go up the twenty-two side, the twenty-two advances, and the one side you got a status right on the other side. The status right is a development of the West, complete development of the West, and the other is taking twenty-two degrees with the corruption <coughs> from the, the tablets that are found in Egypt and built the first set of degrees in it. But then, it was only 22. They added 11 degrees, which aren't worked for. They're given out if you satisfy the big bang in charge. <coughs> then the professor sit down and give you a degree for so much money. You know the big dinner you had. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a discussion with a particular brother in regards to um, some of the works in the higher degrees from the 14th degree. And his biggest fear is that according to some, uh, according to what's written inside the uh, uh, this discussed right ritual, that masonry is a practice of devil worshiping. I says one one thing to that, either that he has a lack of faith in his own religion, in his own belief in God, or that he is not uh, he's not reading it with an open mind. And you know, I try to explain to him that you know you have to be careful what you read and how you read it and how you consume what you read. You know, sometimes you have to either you accept it God. Excuse me. And you have to be careful with God. 
most definitely. God is a belief. As a matter of fact, a belief. And that's what we get a problem with. When we say, why aren't they a goddess? Women get children. Men don't get children. Since women get children, why aren't women goddesses? <laughs> man's concept, man's concept. Nothing stops her from being a goddess. She got more logical rights to be a goddess. But we, in our bigotry, can't give the woman. From the time we find ourselves ruling her, we have to give her recognition. And she's crying out for recognition. As a matter of all these crazy things she's doing, putting her dress over her head, and all this thing around. Uh, all her guts up and everything walking around the street is to get recognition from you I me. Mean. But it, it doesn't answer my question. Well, I guess what I was going to ask you is, can you explain why, at least in Scottish Rite, uh, I don't know if you read the two, Scottish Rite 1 and 2, uh, the Blue Ritual. Yeah. All right. Um, why it was written in such a manner that it, it gives a conception that it is a double worship in degrees. You know, I myself am a very, very, I, I am a religious man. I have a Baptist faith. You know, my, my parents uh, raised me to be a son. You are what you are with your parents. Right. Most of us. But most of us, but then recognize that we were raised to be something that in our own logic, our own reason, our own justice, our own humanity, it is something else. When we look at a woman, we must ask ourselves, this woman gives birth to children. Men, men don't give birth to children. And we must recognize her. For instance, I told my mother, when my mother was alive, I had to go in front of her every December the 31st and kneel in front of her with my face up against the wall. And then she blessed me, tell me all the bad things that I did, <laughs> and give me a few cough now and again. <laughs> and then she ended up by telling me all the good things that I did, and she felt good and she kissed me, I think that was good. And she kissed me and tell me, go on, son, make me proud of you. And I, she, she sent me out to go. She, my father, I don't know. She said, that's your father. I don't know. She may be right. If she wasn't fooled around with two men, she right. <laughs> That's it. And I'm going along with her. But only she knows. But I know she's my mom. Why? Other people were born the same way. You know your father, your mother, and you believe in your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Assessing, as you said, uh, a process when you can get more in detail into the request. I didn't hear you come. I said, who do we make this arrangement with that we can have a meeting here where we can get into more details about the craft and the hey, process? Man, man, I said, you right here, I didn't hear Dr. Rose. Brother? Yeah. At the door? That's right. Oh, that's brother, brother yeah. right here? Brother with the glasses, right here. Okay, there. thank you. And I just wanted to tell some of the brothers, one of the books you wrote from Matthews and Bell to Giza, he lists a chronolog chronological area of the dynastic periods in relationship to the biblical time periods. He also shows pictures in that book of the Grand Lodge of Wasset, which I took to deliver a lecture in the second degree on the so-called columns. Good book. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ben, this, this is the problem that I have. I got a brother that uh, we, we work together. He came into the order, we, we got the, the knowledge and stuff from life, and we started reading the Bible. He decided that when he read the Bible, he can leave his brother behind. We left him out. But his theory is that he don't need the Lodge anymore because his Bible, what he reads in his Bible is good enough for him. My theory is that if you're so knowledgeable, why go back, why not go back to your lodge and 
and help them other brothers out that you so knowledgeable are. So this is the question, this is not the only thing. I ran across a few other brothers that way have came in, got knowledge, left left the lodge, uh, got into the uh, the the Christian belief. But they will not go back to the lodge because we do something that they say they don't do anymore. Uh, but you know, I wanted to pray. A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not leave a lot because of that alone. It has to be many other things. As you said, work with a brother, it may be hard, work with a brother, tell them what you think you learned, and exchange and see if it makes sense. You may get more brothers to join you. But if you go and left and don't share with them, you are not to with you in that sense. It, it, you see, the sense of belief we're talking about, we got to share with each other and see what makes common sense. Because <coughs> none of us, we, we, we're prejudiced when we're dealing with belief against belief. So you got to talk. It got to be somewhere when all of us as brothers, most of the Christians, uh, Jews, and all other names that we have, can speak to each other. If we don't, we're going to die together. I am saying there's got to be, man, you, you can't even get Christians to speak with Christians. The Holy Ringer is out against the, 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 the uh, the Baptist, the Baptist against the goose mouth, the goose mouth against the, the, the tree climbers and the tree climbers. I mean, gee, and you, you could find in every one black 50 different churches with 50 different names. Don't speak to each other. And then we have at the, the, the Jews, and the, the Reformed Jews, the Orthodox Jews, the Conservative Jews, Jesus Christ. And then you have, you got the Sunni Muslim and the Guru Muslim and the Judo Muslim, Muslim and the One Finger Muslim. Yes. I have a question about the Egyptian relationship. What is the relationship between Osiris and Ra? Osiris and the Sun. Osiris and the Sun. Uh, as a rule, is the son of Ram. Okay, so oh, one. everybody is a son or daughter of Ram. Okay. Because the Egyptian god Ra was the god of all gods. Okay. Long before Jehovah was called the god of all gods. So it's, it's kind of parallel to, the, to uh, Ra to son to, to Osiris as it is to God to Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yes. So the, the Christian god. Is the son of the Hebrew God. Right. Uh, and you mentioned briefly about the meeting. There was one particular meeting between Osiris and Ra. Oh, yes. Uh, there were many meetings. This one particular is when, when Ra gave Osiris back his penis okay. after his penis had been cut off by his brother Seth. Right. And his wife. Went and appealed to God to so say, Please give him back his penis so he can make a child. Because the only good God, his brother was bad, is gone. And so the God couldn't give him back his penis, but <coughs> make it stand up straight so she could fly over it as a bird and become pregnant. <laughs> and that's how she got her child. That's your bliss. <laughs> Covering over the penis. In, in, in the uh, in Abilus, in the building of Abilus, you see that the whole scene that <coughs> in the rock, and you will see it. Yeah, one last question for me. Uh, thank you for being here, Dr. Ben. Uh, the Jews that came, or uh, that the Israelis took from Ethiopia, they bring you know, Israel. <coughs> why? why? Why did they bring those? Well, that's my people. Uh, for years and years and years, Ethiopian Hebrews have been clamoring to go back to Israel. 
there were always some there that I had for a pen and for it. But now they wanted to vote in a big area. And they demanded of the government from 1947 to the day when they went to return. The, the European Jews, American Jews, were not going to have them back there. But they had to, because they needed members, they were needed numbers to fight against the uh, Arabs. The Jews were leaving, going to America, South America, <coughs> hundreds per year. So they had to replace the numbers. So the 12,000 pounds from Ethiopia was well received for the moment, but now they are being paid. Yeah, that's right. All right, sisters and brothers, one more final question, please. And uh, we'll adjourn this lecture. One more question, please, for Dr. Glenn. If there is one. Okay. Um, from my readings, I read that the original Hebrews were in fact black. There is nothing in any reading that says that the people are black or white or gold or brown or yellow or blue. That's your imagination. Nowhere. The Bible states in ancient that the Bible's wife was Ethiopian. Where the Bible said they were white? <clears throat> no, she said that. She was Ethiopian. Well, Ethiopian is so white. No. No. Ethiopian would be jet black, red, white, brown, yellow. And you know that you will see them there in all those colors. And they don't have to be Christians. Uh, in the south, you have uh, the people they used to call God, the Roman. You have uh, that's the biggest population in Ethiopia. And they're not Christian or Jews or Muslims. They got their own religion.